Welcome to Atari Age Day 2022. Thank you for joining us. Um, we loved it so much last year that we decided to do it again. <laughs> um, so um, thank you for joining us. Obviously, this is brought to you by Atari Age and also Zero Page Homebrew, yes. which we uh, normally do a show every Tuesday and Friday. We've been off for a little bit, a couple weeks, um, but now we're back. Yeah, we went to we went to LA and played some video games down there. Mm -hmm. Just can't get away from it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so today we are going to be playing even more video games. Yay! With, with Atari the Yay. cat. Yay! He's going to be helping us out. Atari lost his cam today, but that's okay because we have a lot of unboxing to do. Yeah, Atari's cam has turned into um, the unboxing cam, of which we will be unboxing. Ooh, a whole ooh, bunch of games yes. here. Yay! Take a look at all of those games. Oh my god, we've got 17 games today. Audio is off of Airbed. Well, yeah, that would happen if I don't set that up properly. Yeah, lots of setting up this morning. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you miss things and uh, now it's on. No, excellent. Good, good. <laughs> um, so, um, oh. Don't yes, Atari so does get the big box of the little boxes came in. <laughs> Although yes. he's not really a box cat. He's more of a sitting on it on, on yeah, the amp he doesn't amplifier usually cat. <laughs> jump into a box. He likes warm spots. He likes warm things. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, the intro music was from uh, Gravitic Minds. Mm -hmm. And actually that was my first project I've ever done in After Effects. Yes! That you saw the it, intro from. I was impressed, especially all the Atari games floating onto the <laughs> ship and taking off and land. I was like, oh my god, this is way more than I was expecting. Yeah, because I want yeah, to do something a little, really bit, uh, a little bit fancy and uh, expand fancy. my knowledge yeah. of doing things. <laughs> um, so we have a ton of developers coming on the show live today. They're going to be videoing in and talking okay. about their new releases and how all that went and um so we have uh live today we're going to be having john champo from champ mm -hmm. games lewis hill from muddy vision vladimir zuniga from vhzc games lauren Stavely from reboot uh ryan uh, whitmer from phaser cat games octavio pino boco audrey Pauli, marco johannes michael christopherson leonardo C santiago edward v villarino and by empire some of those will be uh, Q&A via text. Text, okay. Yes. Very nice. And uh, we're also going to be talking with Al okay. from Atari Age Yay. very, very shortly. Nice. Um, so what we're going to be doing today, quick rundown. We're going to be unboxing games. Tanya's going to be playing these games. So if she's <laughs> quiet, it's okay. She does <laughs> like playing the games. I'm not holding it. her hostage. No. <laughs> Um, she does enjoy six it. hours of game playing. No, it's 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 uh, yeah, it's it's a hardship, really. Uh, oh, it's terrible. Yeah, it's isn't just it? awful. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, and so and we'll be talking with developers and the ones we don't have on uh, video. We'll yeah. have a Q and A yep. here. I ask them some questions. Hello. Thank you for following Trav MCC. Yes, glad you're enjoying it. Uh, it's scheduled to be around six hours, just over six hours, giving uh, everybody about 20 minutes each. Mm -hmm. um, we started a little bit late, but that's okay. Yeah. I didn't have much to say in the beginning anyway. We're yeah. going to go to Al, Al very <laughs> yes. shortly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a, a, about six and a half hours. I can't it remember really, how long okay. it was last year. I think it was nine. I think it was, it was around nine. Was it? Yeah. It was a whole afternoon. That's what I remember. It was a I long remember. time. It was 12 hours. <laughs> it was 12 hours. That was our marathon. That would be long. Yes. That, that would be That was our long. Stella marathon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think it was between six and uh, nine, but I'm pretty sure it was I nine. I don't remember it being nine. It I remember it being really a whole late. afternoon. Yeah. And I, I remember being very hungry by the end, but that's that's fine. We have snacks upstairs if we need to. <laughs> Little breaks. Yes. Uh, we've turned off the, um, the, the cat bell. Uh, for the time being, but if we need a couple of little breaks, then uh, he we we will give Atari the opportunity to take advantage of uh, well 
we'll we'll feed him some treats. Um, but uh, <laughs> he's 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 looking at me right now. Um, yes. There's no way he's gonna get through this whole stream without losing going apoplectic. He's gonna lose his mind. Yeah, because whenever we stream, he gets treats. So if he doesn't get treats at some point during the stream, he'll start chewing on cords. So we'll have to we'll have to give him treats at some at some point. No and cat I can, no treats. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a halftime food run, exactly. We would have to lock him out of the room because oh, he starts chewing on our feet and yeah, our, yeah. Our, our knees and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to work. It's not going to work, Carl G. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. No. Oh. No. Okay. So we'll dedicate the first treat time. We'll put a good G. spot to Carl G. Yeah. The, the he's bell used will ring. His treats. <laughs> yeah. Give me my treats or else. Ah, no, 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 no. HDMI is surprisingly tasty she for a cat. He already chewed on it last night, so I'm <laughs> surprised it's still working. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be talking with developers. We're also going to be giving away prizes, which we're going to talk to Al about in a couple seconds. Okay, good. Okay. So if you can get Al okay, on the line, oh, just call him at the top there with the video. Just call top just right. video, right? Yeah. Okay. And then go double click to full screen. Double click. There you I don't go. Hear it. And then, no, you won't hear it till he comes on. And then when we, when he connects, oh, just I drag see. us down to the bottom right. Canadian tender wants prizes. Well, you'll have to answer skill testing questions. Um, Is he connected? It looks like it. You say drag us to the right. Uh, when he puts his video on. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's then confusing it'll, me. Yeah, sorry. Okay, good. It's all good. It's all technical stuff. Yeah, we have we'll to figure it out see? by the end. No, we can... Oh, just leave it there. It's okay, fine. perfect. Okay, hey, good. Al, you're not on yet. <laughs> you, you will be in a second. Okay. Yeah, we might as well start. I yeah. think we've explained enough <laughs> how this works. Yeah. Uh, oh, Nostalgic says he's doomed. He has no skills to be tested. Oh, oh. we have some a lot of exclusive stuff as well. Yeah. About games coming up today okay. so that's exciting so stay tuned um oh my god so many weird things happening okay <laughs> so let's do it let's bring on al Russo from atari age who's been working tirelessly to get these games out to us and out to you guys some of you guys have already received this these games and have started playing them mm -hmm. so here is al welcome al how are you Hello. doing awesome great to see both of you Oh, great to see you as well. Um, so you have been working tirelessly, and you can see some games in the background there and yeah. stacked up. Uh, most of them are out the door now, right? Correct, yeah. I've got, shipped uh, almost 1,200 games so far in the last two weeks, and I probably have about 15 more orders that I'm going to get out today. I, I was soldering games just a half an hour before this show uh, to get those done, and I just have to build them. And that's what the boxes are in the background there. Uh, right table. there's just games as we were going through orders last night to ship them like oh man didn't build this game didn't build this game these are the very last order so uh, <laughs> so many games your counts are off a little bit and i also have extras of some other games as well so uh but i'll be so extremely relieved to have all these out <laughs> so how do you keep track of all this like you, all these tons in order spreadsheets <laughs> yeah. your sp spreadsheet master by now well i had pre-order games obviously a lot of pre-order games uh, extra games that were with those pre-orders, uh, and then regular orders as well. And I got, I'm behind, I was about four weeks behind on regular orders. So last night was shipping uh, roughly 100 of those, plus uh, all the Gravitic Mines uh, Deluxe Editions went out uh, as well last night. Uh, except for the UPS yep. ones, which I can drop off Monday morning. They're closed on the weekend. And most of those packages are pretty big. Uh, so most of them did go out via UPS. Uh, but yeah, everything's got to be shipped uh, by the end of this weekend because we're going on a, a trip on Tuesday. Uh, so really well-deserved break. It's, it's, it's kind of like getting ready for Portland Retro Gaming Expo or another show where you have a hard deadline <laughs> and you're screwed if you don't get everything done in time. So there's a lot of pressure yeah. uh, to do that. Uh, so I'll, yeah, it will be a big relief, <laughs> and yes, a much needed vacation. A hard deadline, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> and, and and you put a notice up on the Atari Age store saying that any orders now they'll have to wait till you after after you come back on your vacation, but any previous orders that they placed that before that sign went up they're going to go out the door and and get them into their hands yeah basically any from anything through uh may 15th uh i'll be shipping or have already shipped and then anything after that yeah it's not going to ship until mid-july uh 
uh, and then okay. I'm going to have a ton of work to do in that, you know, when I get back, obviously <laughs> yes. catching up in orders. Plus, we're working on new games. Yeah. There's a couple of new games coming out in the summer. And then, of course, a whole slate of games coming out for Portland Retro Gaming Expo, which, you know, this is the first time now in three years. Uh, Yay! Yeah. So, <laughs> for those who don't know, the show is like October 14th through 16th at the uh, mm-hmm. Oregon Convention Center again. And we'll have a big booth, as we have in previous years. There'll be a lot of homebrew authors at the show. Uh, and again, you know, new games, so the 20, 250, 200, 700 Atari Pit computers and Jaguar. Uh, so I'll have, a, you know, have my work cut out for me. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's been... PRG's been away for a couple of years, so I think it's going to be a big, big, big oh, convention. Yeah. yeah. Yes. There's definitely a lot of pent-up demand, absolutely. And, and uh, usually they announce the show much earlier in the year, or even the previous year, uh, but because, you know, just COVID, of course, and everything, and, and negotiating with the Oregon Convention Center, it just took a lot longer before they were able to make an announcement. Uh, but I am glad to see that the show is back, and it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, um, you show me some shots of your game copying devices. Um, <laughs> so, step us through, like, the procedure to make... A cartridge and the boxes and put them all together like what are the what are the steps that you have to do to make it all work well the first thing uh actually making the physical game is uh you know, programming EEPROM. it depends on the board some boards like the melody boards i can flash program i can just put in a fixture and then with the computer just program them so i don't have to solder anything but that's just that's right. not most of the games except for obviously like the new games for instance john's games you know robot war uh, Ladybug Arcade, uh, our melee games, and you know that was several hundred games there just for those. So I didn't have to program those, which is nice. Uh, but the other games, yeah. you know, I had to program the chips first, uh, which you saw the pictures of those programmers. Uh, yeah. And yep. that's for the batch programmers. I don't normally use those big devices unless I'm building a large batch of games, and they're much faster for that. Uh, then I have to solder the games, uh, test them, yep. put them in cartridge shells. Test them again uh, in the boards before I, in the cartridge right. shells before I label them. Label the cartridges. Uh, the manuals, you know, most of the manuals, especially for all the new games, they're already professionally printed. Same thing with the labels, and then the force of boxes. So after the yeah. games are assembled and tested uh, and labeled, then they're all put into boxes, and then you know you saw the stacks of boxes as well, and then they just wait to be shipped. Uh, so overall, yeah. when you're doing over a thousand games, it is a very time-consuming process when you're basically doing everything by hand. Uh, and I preferably just get everything done and then ship it all at once because it's a lot easier to do that than trying to change gears where you're building some game shipping, building more game shipping, etc. Yeah, and actually you sent over some uh, photos of the production line, I guess, the production <laughs> line. Um, so let's take a look at some of these photos. Uh, let's see. There we go. So here's... Uh, so these are kind of ready to go. It's got the stickers that you include and some some paper flyers and it's got IntelliDiscs and Night Gag, Castle Day and Ladybug, Robot War. So this is kind of just the last step, I guess, Correct. before it goes into the shipping box. Uh, and there's, there's your scale with a box on it. <laughs> <laughs> stacks and stacks and stacks of games there. Yeah, and that's only a percent. You know, small percentage of everything that ended up going out. Yeah, that's a it's a wow. full table. Nothing else is fitting on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you, um, I guess, have I think you showed me some drawers that you have that you oh, yeah. put excess cartridges in, ready to um, because you have the these boxes flat, right? Yep. Um, stored somewhere, and then you have the cartridges pre-made, and then you put them together as needed. But obviously, and situations like this you would be constantly putting together boxes and then they wouldn't go in drawers too much but yeah for too long i mean (laughs) yeah Uh, and you've got shelves you've got boxes you've got tables (laughs) oh there's the posters Posters, as well yeah ready to go out and it looks like you ship those separately yeah those ship separately those are actually rather large posters they're 18 inches by 24 inches for grid the grid of gridic mines deluxe edition so those all went out separately yeah yeah uh, stacks of IntelliDiscs. Another shot of the table. Oh, yeah. here's the boxes. Those are di- that's a different pad from what you saw before. Yeah, Taking over your boxes. house. Most of those, those large boxes are all the Gravitic Mines that were uh, dropped off at the... Actually, the ones on the right are the ones that went to the post office. 
the ones on the left, and there's another stack you can't see behind a printer back there that's also large boxes. Those are all going to UPS on Monday. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there they are, ready to be uh, sent out. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> on the pallet of boxes. Do you have to, do you have to oh. phone, them be, phone them beforehand and warn them that you're coming? No. Uh, <laughs> I, do go to, I do go to the loading docks in the back. And okay. then dump, you know, I, there's a bell you can ring, and they'll bring out a big one of those big rolling metal bins. And that just, again, that's one of the batches. The first batch of games that we sent out uh, were uh, two of those big bins full of games. One was all first class, and one was all priority mail. Oh, my God. And here it is loaded into one of the cars, <laughs> uh, filled in the back. Yeah. Uh, even more. There you go. Animation. <laughs> that, was, that was one of the first batch, and that took two trips, actually, to get wow. everything there. Yeah. Oh wow. my god. Wow. Yep. Uh, there's some more. Nice. Oh, taking over your house yeah. again. There's some shots yeah, of bins yep, and bins. Another, that was one of the first batches that went out. Yep. Oh, yeah. action shot. Someone yeah. leaving the room. <laughs> and and how many packing peanuts do you have? Like, oh, it, I'm, in my box, there was a lot of packing peanuts. <laughs> yeah, so, so you bags. must have lots of those. Yeah, I order those. They're really large bags, basically as big as me as tall as me, and I've got a ton of them nice. in the attic. I order them from a local shipping company, <laughs> and they act, they deliver them in a truck. Same thing with the uh, bubble wrap. Uh, those have mm. to go, uh, you know, I use the bubble wrap for all the box games. Now, I didn't do that years ago, but yeah. I started using slightly larger boxes and the bubble wrap just to, to make the games extra protected during shipping. And it does take longer to, yeah. to ship them, especially when 95% of what you're shipping when releasing new games or boxes, it, it is hot. That's just another time-consuming step, but it's worth doing. <laughs> So you don't have insulation in your house. You use packing peanuts, right, in your <laughs> attic? Yeah. <laughs> Some of those peanuts do get away, and they're mixed in with the insulation in the house. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they escape. Oh, do, our, Atari loves playing yeah. with the packing peanuts when we get... Do, what's the name of your cat? Uh, she is called uh, Napper. Napper, Very yeah. fluffy cat. And she comes up... Yeah. If I spend too much time up here, upstairs... And I'm in that same room right now. Then uh, she'll come in yeah. and just look like she looks angry. Uh, <laughs> I've been in that room all day, uh, and she just has <laughs> some attention or treats or something. And and there's and all the cats will ultimately come in one at a time. You know to say, hey, what's <laughs> we're kind of hungry. We could use treats. So. <laughs> yeah, I I understand yes. that yeah, that yeah. Uh, <laughs> demand from the cats. Yeah. Yeah. I did, yeah. I did close yeah. the door behind me. So oh no, I didn't. It's actually open. So I better. Uh oh, there may be a cat. Yeah. Cat intrusion. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some more uh, various games, some old ones mixed mm -hmm. in there as well. I, I guess, yeah, I think you were talking with me earlier about some people ordered old games with the new games, and so you have to keep track of those kind of and, and mix them together. And you were waiting for the new games to be done to ship old games. So there's a lot of coordination happening. It is. It's a lot of work. And this. This batch was from uh, uh, yesterday, uh, from uh, the the regular orders in the store, not the pre-orders. Although there are some pre-order games mixed in there, uh, but a lot yep. of those you can see are yeah, like you said, older games. And then there, yep. there's yep. also a lot of loose games, uh, like all the new stuff's obviously boxed. But we're, there's also bins that they're not pictured. And I didn't send you any pictures of the loose games yep. that just come with manuals and those are separate from. Oh games. right. Yeah. So it's, that's, that's right. Not yeah. just box games. Because after after a while, you offer the the game with um, without the box right. as an option. I've been doing yeah. that basically a year after. So when the next, because I'm kind of stuck in this rut of you know releasing large batches of games every year. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> typically at that time when the year comes around, then I'll make all the uh, older or the last year's games available without a box for those who don't need the box and want to you know save a little bit of money. Right. And I know people are going to ask, and I know, I think I saw it in the, in the chat about, uh, binaries, um, yeah. and <laughs> the yeah. ongoing question over and over well, again, right? It's a fair question. Obviously there's a lot of flashcards yeah. out there. A lot of people don't, you know, as with other media, you know, movies, uh, uh songs, stuff like that. Uh, you know, people yeah. aren't really interested in owning physical media necessarily. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. you know, it's a little different with the nostalgia factor of, of old retro games and a lot of people do enjoy playing consoles, of course. but there's definitely a lot of people who you know, want to use their Harmony card or whatever well, means they have to play them or even an emulator. Or gaming on the go on their yeah. phone or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So yes, absolutely that that's in the, in the works and I wanted by now to have a new store online but just this year it's just been crazy uh, and obviously getting all these new releases out and shipped uh, just takes so much time. Uh, so I'm, I, you know, I 
it's driving me nuts that I don't have the new store online because in addition to having, uh, you know, it'll be a much nicer store and I can offer digital downloads, I can also offer for international customers uh, considerably reduced shipping. Uh, and shipping right. for international just it's skyrocketed in the last decade. Especially last oh, year. oh my God. Uh, oh, so yeah. I absolutely have people who, you know, want to buy games. They just, it's a, almost as a, like for a single game, it can cost more to ship a game than, uh, you know, than it costs in the store. And then, you know, mm-hmm. I know. with VAT taxes and stuff like that. And UK, UK yes. is a pain because I can't ship the UK. I tried to do the VAT application for that and that fell apart. So I'm going to have to. When we get back from our trip, I'm going to have to do that again and restart that whole process. It's extremely aggravating. And, you know, of course, people in the UK do want to buy these games. And uh, I will put all those games, yeah. the new games in the store, in July on eBay and Etsy, which will allow people in the UK to buy them more easily or buy them, period. Oh, that's great. Because Etsy and eBay handle the, the VAT internally. Is that why? Well, eBay and, and Etsy are known as marketplace sellers. So anyone who sells in those, services ebay those services are required to collect the vat and then remit it like in the case of uk to hmrc mm-hmm. uh so it makes it easier oh, okay. for people to sell uh internationally in a particular you know, where VAT is, needs to be collected in advance uh so that is helpful but also i really do want to be able to collect the vat in the atari age store at one you know up front uh so people don't have to yep. deal with that plus it saves administrative fees uh that some countries charge upon co- you know to collect the uh the, the customs charges uh, so I'd eliminate those. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And here's a shot. I think this is what you sent me, yeah. right? Yeah, those are the games that I sent uh, you. And if people look very carefully, <laughs> they see something in in the corner there. It is ZPH, the game, mm-hmm. which is very exciting because we're going to be playing this in next Friday. Yeah. And so that will be a lot of fun and giving away a bunch of copies of this Look how excited while we play this oh atari's he's excited, so excited because he's in the game that's why he's excited <laughs> um so speaking of giving away stuff we have some giveaways today from atari age from al and um one of them is let me just change it over so we're big here there we go one of them is the Atari Age pint glass. Mm-hmm. I don't know which, if that's yeah. coming across too too well, but Probably that's not. all right. Let's get <laughs> it's Al to hold it up. It's impossible. Probably oh, impossible to see. It is. It's not bad. Oh. It's yeah. not bad. We can yeah, you can kind of see it. So yeah, yeah it's hard. I'm gonna move down. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a lag. Yeah, you can't really see it very well with this yep. drink. Uh, but I have yeah. two brand yeah. new ones here. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Ready to go. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Um, so we're giving away those, uh, along with some other stuff. Uh, so you just have to answer some skill testing questions. I have posed it to the developers. It actually works out very well. Yeah. Oh, and some metal signs. Oh, I oh, want I one of those. those signs, Unfortunately, yeah. I'm disqualified from winning. <laughs> Sadly, <laughs> maybe I will have some at PRG. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, you're giving away some games. I don't know which games. Might be new games. Might be dealer's choice. It might be <laughs> yeah. uh, the person who wins his choice. We'll find out mm-hmm. eventually. And some uh, two gift certificates as well to the Atari Age nice. Store, nice. where you can choose anything you want. Um, <laughs> do we have do we have amounts for those? Yeah, I'll do fifty dollars each for those. There you go, fifty dollars. That'll definitely buy you a great game mm. in the Atari Age store. Um, let's see what else. I th- think we have some sneak previews of some stuff that okay. uh, Al sent oh. over. So maybe you want to. These are sneak previews of some boxes mm. of a developer. Maybe you can talk a bit about this, Al. Sure. I don't. I, let me wait for you to see what you're going to show. Show here. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so actually... these are uh, these are three new games from uh, Pac-Man Plus, who's on the forum. His name is you know Robert uh, DiCrescenzo, and uh, Nathan Strum has put together these fantastic designs uh, for the games. It's Glaxian, which you're seeing now, and then uh, L- love you know, the cover art there. Yeah, oh that, my god. That's really fantastic. It really is great. There it is all together. Nice. Nice. There's the manual opened up. I was impressed. I've never seen you do a render of a manual before. Well, Have I you done do, that before? I didn't do that. Nathan did that. Okay. Yeah, Nathan <laughs> Good on Nathan. Together. That is beyond my skills. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, then there is the Pac-Man Collection, 40th Anniversary Edition. And I love this artwork. This, this just came out fantastic. Oh my god. Yeah, the 3D flying through the Pac-Man yes. mazes. That is excellent. There's the back of it. I love the colors. Yeah, and there's the, the cartridge. The, the Pac-Man blue and yellow and the contrast mm -hmm. with the Pac-Man character oh. in the background. It, it's really nice. And like you said, the different Works mazes. really well. Yeah. There it is all together. And the manual. Get a sneak preview of mm. how to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> you get all the instructions with it. Yeah. Yep. Now, is this Uniwar S? Cause I, I, or is it Uniwars? I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I should know that. Because in the arcade, it has the S. S is a capital uh, yeah. a letter. So I think it's Uniwar S, but I don't know. So there's the front of it. Very, uh, nice. very fun, cartoony looking. That's great. And there's the back of it. <laughs> the Galaxy Empire Strikes Back. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the cartridge. Oh, very the nice. colors are so vibrant and look yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah, I look forward to seeing them in you know physical carts. Oh, yeah. So these games there it is. made available for the first time at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Oh, excellent. So the in uh, that's October again? Yeah, yeah it's mid-October. October. Yeah. Which is typically yeah. around so, they have the show. Yeah. And it, it's cooler then, so it's 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 a nice time to go to Portland. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be there. Yeah. Al will be there. And I know a lot of uh, the community is going to yeah. be there as well. Because there's a... There's yeah. a forum thread um, asking who's going to be there. And just look through there, and it's uh, it's going to be a whole bunch of great people and developers as mm -hmm. well. So I think it's going to be a really fun show. And we'll be doing interviews there and live streaming and stuff. So that'll be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, so, oh, there's the chat. Thank you for showing those. There we go. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, those coming up. Um and also, there is some game announcements that yeah. you have. Some some exclusive game announcements that you hear you hear her fair, her first. That so, um, <laughs> for the first game. Uh, now, this is a game that's been sold in the past and was sold in limited quantities, uh, and it hasn't been available for years now. And there's no binary available for the game either, so the only people who can really play it. Are people who managed to purchase, you know, the original 250 copies or 300, whatever we sold. Uh, but, right. So I'm talking about Boulder Dash for the 2600 by Tom yeah. Yen and Andrew Davy. Mm -hmm. And again, yep. it has been available for years. Uh, yeah. And we worked out uh, a new license agreement with the new owner of, uh, of the Boulder Dash IP, uh, and we're going to be selling, you know, start selling that sometime this summer. We're working on, uh, you know, the printed. We're creating completely new. Uh, printed document, uh, printed materials for the box manual label, and uh, William Thorup uh, is creating these, and he's uh, created a lot of artwork for Jaguar games for us. The latest being Gravitic Minds, uh, which you know he did a fantastic job with that, and I think I have one here. So he he created this artwork. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, it looks great. Yeah. So it came out really nice. He did a great job with that, as as he does with everything. Uh, and you know what he's done so far with Polo Dash is really great, and uh, it's yeah. still a little early to show it right now, uh, but yeah. we'll be able to, I'm sure, show something soon. So that's coming coming and again. I'm looking forward to that. And then the other is that going to be unlimited or a limited run or an unlimited? No, this one will be unlimited run. It will be available with and without the box from the start as well. Uh, you know, so, oh you know, great! So yeah, the, and the intent will be to, to offer it uh, indefinitely. As long as you know, you know, we still have the agreement with the pub with the uh, the IP owner, uh, which is BBG right. Games now. So the other game, uh, and this will be new uh, news for people, is uh, we've worked out an agreement with the owners of the uh, uh, Load Runner property to produce a game for the Twice mm -hmm. uh, Dion That's um, exciting. Yes, and Dion Olstorn, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, his last name wrong. Uh, <laughs> you know, he did Amoeba Jump, for instance. Uh, has created you know already you know created the port of it and it looks absolutely fantastic for the 2600 and this is a game that i played initially on the apple II eons ago but i never owned an apple II, so i couldn't play very much and i couldn't really get into it until i had an atari 800 xl 
Uh, so it's great to bring another classic uh, 8-bit computing game to the 2600. Uh, and, oh, yeah. And to do so officially. Uh, and David Exton is, is creating the artwork for this game. And he's created, you know, for 20 years now, he's been creating fantastic and amazing artwork for uh, 2600 games. Uh, so, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, he's an amazing, amazing artist. artist. Yeah, and, we've, and we already have sketches, you know, initial sketches uh, of artwork for that. And that's coming along really nicely. Uh, and this is another yeah. game that will be made available for the first time at uh, Portland, at the Portland Retro Game Expo. So, it's going to be a nice lineup for Portland yeah, <laughs> of, games. of games. So, you know, some of the other games, I'm just going to read a few things off the top of my head. Ruby Q, okay. which is a Cubert clone, Blocks. Uh, Excellent. You know, maybe Grizzards would be nice. The AWA Anthology, nice. which is 14 games, the Atari 5200 and eight Atari Big Computers. Robin Banks oh, wow. for the 5200 yep. by Ryan. Yeah, we're going nice. to be talking to Ryan later. Uh, Attack of the Pesky yep. Robots. Uh, nice. It's absolutely phenomenal. We, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, the art, the if that's going to include the uh, hokey chip on those boards, and the audio for that is fantastic. Uh, the music oh, yeah. is really amazing. Uh, EXO for seven hundred. Nice. We already talked about Galaxian mm-hmm. Wars and or you know War S and uh, yeah, <laughs> Keystone Coppers. Uh, is another yeah. one. Uh, Million Miles. Yeah. So Millie and Molly and Attack of the Petsky Robots will both use an SNES to Atari adapter. Uh, the, plan uh-huh. is to inc- the plan is to include that uh, adapter with Attack of the Petsky Robots because the game really excellent is better played with more than two buttons. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, definitely. The ports on the computers obviously have a keyboard, so you, you know you you can do a lot more with those. Uh, yeah, and then you know so far for the Jaguar, we're looking at doing uh, Chaos Engine and Gods, uh, which are two nice. PC, uh games. Uh, you know, that were ported by Lawrence Stavley, who we'll be talking later. Uh, yep. And there's more games, too, but, you know, I do want to list everything here. And, of course, <laughs> so that just, yeah. our, it's going to be another large batch of games, but it's worth it since there hasn't been a PRG in, in three years. So I really yeah. appreciate that. And plus, you know, so save up it, your money, people. <laughs> and since we haven't been there now, you know, the last two seasons, I have to make all these other games, too, that have been released online only. <laughs> Uh, so it's going to be, you know, another huge pile of games we're going to make <laughs> leading up to the show. As it usually is. <laughs> so you're going to be very, very busy. Oh, I, didn't <laughs> men- I didn't mention John's games, but I, I figured John uh, Champo's games. Yeah. I figured I'd let him talk about those. Yeah, we'll, we'll save that for John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, anything else you want to mention? Uh, I w- actually, after you, we talk with you, we're going to go to a uh, sneak, pre- sneak peek of Load Runner yeah. 2600 that Dion has sent over. So, everybody gets a first look at Load Runner 2600. So, that's going to be a lot of fun. But a- anything else you want to mention before we let you go? No, nope, except for, you know, I just want to thank, uh, thank both of you for hosting this again. It was a blast last year. Uh, and yeah. it's great that we're doing it again, and I look forward to, to being able to do it again in the future as well. So, you and, bet. You know, yeah, leg- it's a lot of fun. Yeah, all the legwork you have to do, obviously talking, you know, get, lining up all the authors, coming up with the schedule, you yeah. know, getting everything ready camera-wise, uh, getting the cast yeah. ready, uh, you name it. Yep. <laughs> That's right. He, he, he needs a lot of prep. Yeah. <laughs> well, he needs a lot of treats, let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, I think I've said everything pretty much that i need to do now so excellent uh, okay well thank you for uh joining us and uh helping helping with this and and it's so much fun uh talking with all the developers yeah and you and doing all the unboxing and playing these games it's, well it's she's gonna be playing so much 17 fun. games today <laughs> it's awesome that's gonna be a lot of fun i do want to i do have to also give a shout out to all the developers because i mean at, what they do is yeah just, yeah it, it continues to amaze me uh you know the games that people create you know from from simple games to, you know, complex mm-hmm. game, uh, you know, and everything yeah. for all these different platforms. And of course it extends well beyond stuff that I, you know, that, uh, you know, systems that I publish for, you know, just every, all these old consoles get tons of great releases, you know, a clique of oh, television yeah. Vectrex, you know, not just Atari stuff. Uh, and then tons. All the artists, yeah. artists and the designers, you know, people are doing pixel art and audio and, and music and just everything. You know, there's so many people involved. It, it's really amazing. It is. It's it's a huge community effort, and we all benefit from it. It's it's so wonderful. Yeah, and you know, you you guys are doing a fantastic job uh, playing pretty much everything. Uh, and <laughs> we try. You're giving, you're giving attention to all these games that might not otherwise, uh, you know, get a lot of attention. And you know, 
you know, not just yeah. the I publish, but you know, all these other, all these great games coming from from uh, South America, for instance, Brazil. Uh, oh you know, yeah. Oh my god. Everywhere. Yeah. It's just it's really great to see all this everywhere in the world. Yeah. Yeah, we love playing all the games from like the simplest 4K to yep. the you know crazy complex, complex 128K pushing limit games of the 2600 and all the rest of the systems too. Yep. Yeah, it's Absolutely. it's it's amazing to see people's creativity with yes. what they have, how they're limited, and what they manage to actually like deliver at the end of the day is yeah. is, is, is just amazing. To continue to innovate. And it's so much fun to play too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at this cat. Oh my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Atari's. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Say bye to Al. Yeah, yeah. Bye bye. Say bye bye. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you soon, Al. Talk to you, Al. Bye bye. Bye bye. So that was great having Al. We're going to have um, John Champeau coming up next. So if you could um, get him all set up. And we're going to be talking with John about his two new games Robot War and okay. Ladybug Arcade. Yeah, he looks like he's on. So, um, yeah, I think, what shall we do? Let's let's unbox it while he's on. Okay, with should I us. connect with him first? Yeah, let's okay. connect with him. So, um, yeah, go for <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, now you can relax. <laughs> yeah, you can start start working on the boxing. Yeah, boxing up the rest of it. <laughs> no relaxing, not until everything's shipped. Yeah, it was great having Al on here and uh, him uh, sending us all these games to unbox and play. Oh, there he is. Go full screen, please. Um, so, John Champo, which I'm sure everybody knows of by now from Champ Games. Uh, his games over the years have garnered seven Atari Homebrew Awards. Uh, and the one we're going to be playing next, uh, an unboxing Robot War 2684, one for... Atari 2600, best home report, best graphics, best music and sound, and he is one of the most prolific game developers on the Atari 2600. Please welcome John Champeau. Welcome, John. Wow, that's quite an intro. Thank you, James. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to uh, give you the credits you deserve. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's good to be on the, on the show, so thanks. Well, it's great to have you here. And, and we have two games from you today. Uh, first one being Robot War 2684. And we're going to be uh, unboxing that right now and showing off it in all its glory. I'm going to move all these games off the table here and just concentrate on the one at hand. Did you show that? Oh, <laughs> I didn't show Low Runner 2600. I don't really want to see. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Forget, forget John. Um, we yeah. gotta, we gotta get. To I was the, like, I feel like something we gotta get to got the good stuff. missed. <laughs> no. Um, so we're gonna put John on hold here for a second. <laughs> this is why I'm here. <laughs> That's right to remind me of my schedule. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna just just hang in there, John. We'll get back to you in a second. Yeah. We're gonna show Load Runner and then get back to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that, uh, Dion. <laughs> So much going on. He, he's just lurking in the background right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's okay. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, do, do, do. There it is. You Good do. stuff. Okay, so here it is. Your first look at Load Runner 2600 Yay. Sneak Peek, as it says up there. Uh, let's make sure the volume's all the way up. And we're good.
Nice. Oh, there we, there we go. Very nice. <laughs> Somebody knows how to play Load Runner. <laughs> I bet that's Dion. Um, yeah, it looks absolutely stunning. Yeah. It, it's like absolutely perfect. It's really, really good. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a nice action puzzler. Yes. Because you really do have to think about what's going on on the screen for Load Runner. And you're being chased. And, as you're, and you're being as you're chased. Running so around trying to no solve time the to think yeah. about it, but uh, yeah. It's a very cool game. So it'll be really great to uh, get that yeah. at PRGE. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. The lineup for PRGE looks, sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah Atari yeah. Age releases. So there you go. The sneak peek of Load Runner. I could hear the clicking of keys. Yeah. I think he recorded his... Um, webcam or something in the background oh, I yeah, can hear yeah. key clicking that's, funny. <laughs> that's really yeah, funny yeah, yeah. but that's uh that is awesome uh so let's go back to uh let's go back john, to john there, there he we is go. hey john hey. <laughs> good <laughs> sorry, <about laughs> sorry for that. putting on your hold we definitely needed to show that well, yeah uh oh dion's dion's in the chat too yeah, you had a great yeah. team of beta testers, of which I was on. So it was yeah. a lot of fun yeah. beta testing that game and yeah. making it better. Okay. So let's get to Robot War yeah. 2684 in the box. Very exciting. Now, this... Are uh, we, uh, yeah, so we can on... open this camera up now. Do, 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 do. Very nice. So I'll have Tanya control the camera. Um, so this was actually first put out at uh, what uh, convention was it? Yeah, music, a little while back. Music City Multicon in uh, Tennessee. Music City Multicon in Tennessee. So how how uh, how well did it do there? How did people? Did you have it on? Uh, people could play it there as well. Yes. Yeah. I had all my games set up actually. So um, yeah, the Music City Multicon is not really. Uh, um, retro gaming inspired but i was asked to go there to try to get it to that so a lot of yep. people coming by and a lot of the questions were wow they're still making games for the atari so it was you know <laughs> to see R robotron running on the atari was i think it was too much for people to handle it was more like wow i want to play combat or oh wait i love this game you know so it was uh <laughs> but yeah, it, it did pretty well. Steve Romero uh, flew down and uh, helped me out as well. So we put together the, well, he actually, I, I made him put all the boxes together. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so did, nice. I think we sold like probably a dozen copies, which was pretty good considering. I think we had, had just a few people stop by. So um, um, yeah, I seemed pretty excited about it. So then we released it in the Atari uh -huh. store. Uh, well, oh, that's so, great. Uh, yeah, yep. So. Were, were some of the questions like, how do I even get an Atari 2600 to play this on? Yeah, a lot of, yeah, <laughs> a lot of it started like, well, there's a lot of father-son combos. It was on uh, um, Halloween, so there was a lot of cosplay going on. Father-son coming in dressed up as like, you know, Baby Yoda, and people like that. Um, but anyway, that's, you know, he was like, oh, son, this is what I used to play when I was a kid. So, you know, all the kids were playing Atari for the first time, really. So it was... Uh, it was kind of neat to, to witness that happening. So, um, but uh, um, I'm planning on going back this year. So um, we'll see if uh, there's a, a bigger crowd there. So I, I know it's uh, leaning towards that. So we're hoping that uh, it gets to that point. So, but uh, so I just have to adjust some things here for the audio. <laughs> Some comments in the chat that your voice keeps getting reduced when James check, speaks. Check, so. check. Yeah, that was happening. Yeah. Should be good too. now. Um, yeah, every time. Oh, sorry yeah, about that, James everyone. Spoke, but, you know. <laughs> well, you know, there's an order of uh, yeah. importance here. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so what I think first, and then whatever else you have in here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, yeah, the, so it should. Yeah, it, the artwork on this is amazing. First, I just want to. Um, uh, David X. Oh yeah, it's incredible like job. On, gorgeous, love, gorgeous artwork. Love the uh, artwork on, uh, on this. So, so there you go. So, beautiful artwork. It really represents the game really well. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Um, the look of it. Um. Wow, oh, look at that. Let's get a little closer to the. So you're you're an old hand at putting together <laughs> these packages no. uh, some of the, some of the people i'm, I'm t talking to did it today it's their first game but this is your umpteenth game that you've put together uh for the 2600 so you probably didn't have many too many challenges getting it together 
uh, knowing how to put it together now. Yeah, yeah, as far as, you mean like uh, packaging it up and stuff like that, all the artwork? Yeah, like the logistics of putting it together. And, and I mean, you have you have a regular team. Uh, has David Exton done uh, artwork for you before? Um, yes, he has. He did Avalanche for me. Um, oh, that's right, yeah, yes. He did a great job on it as well. So, um, and, yeah. Yeah, of course, Nathan has uh, done a bunch of... Uh, artwork for me probably the most um and then david drys uh did um wizard of war and and galagon so uh yeah it's been uh i hope i'm not forgetting anyone but um i'm sure i am but, um so yeah so i think that's i think that's everyone that's that's done uh boxes for um or artwork for the, the champion so but yeah it's usually what we do is we all have a thread on uh, atari age where um everyone's invited uh, and done um artwork so David Drives, uh, Dave Exxon, and Nathan, they all collaborate, which is usually one person that has a lead on it. Um, you know, they'll, they'll take the lead and the other artists will contribute. And then I'll say something that, you know, trying to contribute, but it usually doesn't go through well. Um, <laughs> and then I just leave it to the artist. So, but, you know, of course, you know, I'll have some suggestions as to, uh, mostly about content. Um, but as far as uh, the way the, uh, actual final product comes in that's that's usually the, the artists that do that so it's uh and of course if i step out of the way it usually becomes uh it, the it, the final product is usually pretty amazing so uh um yeah, yeah this one is uh I, he really outdid himself with this one so i i, I love the manual on this so so did david exton do the actual layout for the manual as well as the artwork yeah um I, what i do is i'll uh put together like a word document um that has all the content of how to play um at this point you know we kind of have uh, like specific sections you know controllers um how to play you know high scores uh credits things like that right so then um but he came up with a lot of the layout um robot war is uh unique in that it has a lot of controller options so he he came up with a very good way to display um i think one of those pages like page two or three you'll see inside of it it's uh um how all the controller options fit together and how to configure them because you know you can have one joystick two joysticks um genesis uh um button stuff and so um anyway right. so yeah so Let's he see. he usually comes up oh, with there the, it is. Uh, yeah like it'd be probably the the next page is like a yeah right there so you see it so he has yeah. like a, the genesis gamepad explaining two button two joysticks one joystick you know auto fire you know there's yeah. a million ways to play this thing but uh Quatari, yeah. no Quatari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ways. And actually, you sent over some photos of the different types of joystick yeah, um, yeah, a couple options of ways there are. So Yeah, if you want to. I don't know if there's a good time to show it or... Uh, oh, show it right now. Why not? So. Um, there we go. So this one is the uh, Ed Ladin. Yep. So I'm um, sure people are familiar with uh, the Ed Ladin um, series of uh, arcade quality controllers, and uh, certainly this one yeah, is. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, so this one is recommended for uh, um, Robot War. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, obviously um, it does great work, and uh, you know certainly we have yeah. been working with Ed and I have been going back and forth. Of course, we have a ton of things on our plate. We wanted to come out with some a Robot War themed or a Champions themed controller, limited edition, but we never. Uh, we never got around to it, but we're still talking about it. So maybe for PRGE, we can uh, whip, whip something together. So uh, for right now, we have nice. the uh, champ yep. colors there anyway, red, white, and blue. So it's, uh, he's, he's halfway there. So. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is what we use when we play the game as yeah. well, yeah. Is, yeah. is the Ed Ladin. It's, it's, it's a really, really wonderful. Super control. solid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Okay, so um, and this is, this is a new one um that just came out like um, a couple weeks ago a month ago yes this is um, um, oh. retro game boys uh, he has a great uh site he does a lot of controllers like 5200 controllers as well vectrex mm -hmm. um you know standard atari uh and of course he does um 2600 stuff as well so this one um we work together well he, he just asked someone had actually asked him if they could have a robot war themed uh Dual controllers. Ah. This is a dual thumbstick, kind of like we would have with like an Xbox controller or something like that, or PlayStation. So, um, yeah, so he has these in his store too. Um, I know I sent the link somewhere, but if anyone's interested, I'll drop it in the chat. So, yeah, I actually have one that actually has, says Robotron on it because I had bought it from him prior to Robot War even coming out. Um, but right. I plan on picking one of these up, hopefully, uh, 
Oh, I get what I'm saying, so, but yeah, so it's kind of cool. So, robot war, so yeah. <laughs> and uh, here's another one. Uh, this is by uh, an Atari Age member, Amiman99. Yes, yes, this is for the classic CX40 controllers. Yes, this is a 3D nice. printed coupler. I mean, I know there's a coupler included in the, I think the 7800 for the 7800 controllers and i think there's yes. a coupler that was included with the uh, atari 8-bit version of Robo robotron um but for those who can't find those um this is a great cheap option i forgot how much it's was it's like 20 25 dollars um don't don't quote me on right. that but uh yeah he's uh <laughs> yeah he was so great. does he sell these or does he provide the the file to print your own um, or he, both yeah he actually printed it and sold it to me so um i know uh steve okay knows, remembers, picked one up someone did recommend it on the robot war thread so i picked up one of these and uh joey when we play he uses this one so um this, yeah. nice. this setup nice you'll see my setup next but uh um. well he, he's very he's very good at the game i know you guys kick ass at, oh, yeah. at robot war and get super high scores so this yeah. this setup must be working really well for yes, him absolutely so. and so <laughs> I love this setup. Yeah, this, this is this is the budget option. This is what I play with, and this is like, this is like <laughs> super high scores. I love these have always been my favorite joysticks from way back in the day. These Wicos, um, I think they're amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're um, um, they are. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, This is what I played with too. Yeah, they, uh, in in the '80s for my Commodore 64. This yes. is the exact joystick I had as well. Exactly, yeah. and these are leaf switch, so they're very very quiet. So it's basically just a, a board yes. and two bungee cords, and that's it. So. Yeah, cost, you know, exactly, exactly. So, uh, um, exactly. Uh, That's like awesome. 50 cents for the piece of board, you know, a dollar each for the bungee cord, you know, playing Robotron on your 2600, priceless, right? That's kind of the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, how is, how is, uh, John's audio now? I've, I've altered a bunch of stuff and it's, it, it looks good. It's, he's peaking at the right level. So hopefully it's good now. Yeah. I've disabled the ducking and uh, put the compression back on. So Excellent. just let me know if it's good. It looks good to me, but I can't tell. Yeah. Um, so let's um, let's get uh, Tanny playing the game. Uh, unfortunately, with one joystick. <laughs> so you're gonna have to just yeah. use one. I'll joystick. make do. I'll make do. So, yeah, because we have other <laughs> other games with one, most all one joystick. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I didn't yeah. want to switch too much yeah. stuff. Yeah. After all that promotion, we're gonna uh, show it with one joystick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Which is good because you know people. So keep people, that in mind yeah. when you're watching me play. Yeah. People. And keep... on top of a cat. Exactly. I have a pillow and a cat and a joystick on top of a cat. Oh, so. this is excuses. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Already making excuses. So. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so that, that means you can play as good or as bad as you want. Yeah. There it's we all go. good. There we go. Artari, are you going to help me in this? Look at this cat. Goodness. Okay, <laughs> there we go. That's Restart better. Restart it? Yeah. It there should be go. noted. Yeah, I mean, people that just have one joystick and want to play it. It's very, very playable with just one joystick with auto it is. fire. It is. And Joey, my son, and I were able to play before we had this old dual setup thing going. We were able to get three million each with just one joystick. So. Um, it, it, oh, thanks. It, 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 it's, it's no pressure. Yeah, so um, we do do much better with two joys, but um, um, with, yeah. with just uh, it, which is uh, but but definitely if you have the opportunity to use two joysticks, it is oh, it is yeah. a really fun experience, you know, to do the dual joystick. Uh, so I'm going to turn. And let's I, see, still a bit low. Okay, I'll turn them up a, even more. Even more. I should mention, I forgot to send you a picture of it, James, that, um, you know, for those who are interested in uh, playing with dual joysticks with uh, the save key or dual joysticks for both players for co-op, um, that's where the quad tower comes into play. Oh, yes, that's um, right. And, and, and that's all in the manual as well. Yes, exactly. Right? So I meant to send a picture and uh, give, uh, um, you know, um, just that a shout out. Uh, Nathan so, so it can get pretty so. crazy. You can get the the Ed Ladin twin joystick plus the save key, and so you've got three connectors going into the Quadtari, and yes, it's uh, <laughs> it's it gets complicated, it's but, insane, uh, but yeah. it's the best way to play. Absolutely. Oh, and and two players co both using co-op using two joysticks, exactly. two joysticks yep. or twin joysticks yeah yep, yep. So there's lots of options yeah you plug four joysticks into the quadtari and then you can have uh co-op play together um, both with uh, two joysticks so that's 
that's the ultimate robot war experience, in my opinion. So. <laughs> <laughs> if I can set this up so I can just constantly look at the... Oh, yeah. Anyway. Um, so... Let's see. So... Do, 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 do. How... How has the reception been of Robot War 2684? Because it is, you you release demos and work in progresses, so you get updates on what people think of it. So what what kind of feedback have you been getting from the community on this? Yeah, I, th I think it's been pretty good, to be honest with you. It's been, um, you know, it's been out for, you know, um, whatever, five months now, and actually six, six or seven months since uh, MCMC, so... Um, there is one review in the store, and just for everyone that knows, you know, the people that, uh, for, speaking from a developer's perspective, you know, if you have time to put a um, review in the uh, store, it's, uh, it's always great to hear, and um, as a developer, how people enjoy the game, you know, if they, you know, have any suggestions for making it better or, or for games moving forward, um, that's always a, a yeah. great thing to hear. So, so yeah, so, um, the, obviously, the initial response was, was great, um, but... As with anything, you know, uh, as new games get intro introduced, you know, announced, you know, uh, the old games kind of get, you know, moved to the bottom of the pile. But I, I think people really appreciate this. And I, I think uh, Al um, gave me a sneak peek into how it's selling. I guess he's, he's been able to sell a pretty good amount of copies. So people are enjoying Yeah, I can imagine this, this selling very well. Yes. Yeah. It's just... The innovation that went into using the play field <laughs> to fill up the screen with enemies. Um, I mean, the game couldn't be done without that. There's there's only two sprites. Remember, people, there's only two player characters for the Atari 2600. Yep. So, yeah, between that and uh, I was able to use the ball for a lot of the sprites as well, like the missiles and uh, a few of the enemies as well. Yeah. So that helps. Um, certainly, uh, you know, having the arm processor but this would be impossible without that so i want to say that right oh, away yeah. but certainly uh without that you know uh, all the prep work that's being done so i must say i spent most like months just trying to uh get this thing to run with all the enemies without having the screen roll because regardless of right. you know having an arm ship you know at some point you still hit the uh, max of that as well as far as uh moving you know 100 things on the screen trying to do it every frame keep things fluid so right so that that was certainly a challenge, but uh, um, did you have to use multiple frames for processing, or is everything done every frame? Um, everything's done every frame except for collision detections. There are some where I'll only do, especially the Hulk collisions, because those were because Hulks can collide with um, um, what can they uh, collide with the, the humanoids. So when there's a lot of Hulks and humans, right. it, it would have to do like. You know, 300, you know, it's number of Hulks times number of humans on the screen that I have to do. So I, I split that up every couple of frames, but since they're so big and lumbering that you really can't tell anyway. Um, so, right. But the critical. Nobody's going to miss a frame. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> critical collisions like your missiles and uh, um, things that you're shooting as it's moving, those, those are generally done every single frame. So, uh, right. So. I, yeah. I do cheat. Um, yeah, the problem with, with um, two-player co-op, it does actually alternate every frame to check collisions for your missiles. I th okay. think. Um, maybe not. But it does do something along those lines where it, uh, um, just uh, handle uh, twice as many detections for that. I had to do a load. Right. So, it was, so but, it's always a give and take. So, but it's... Uh, of course, but but it's not noticeable at all during gameplay. There's no, no bugs that arise from that. No missed collisions. No, no. So yeah, yeah. yeah you always start with uh, the best. They like say, "Oh, do collisions in every frame." But then you know you try to run it, and you say, "Okay, wait a minute." You know, it's just overrunning um, things <laughs> by like right. uh, you know. So then I have to scale things back. So so this, this game, out of all my games, I probably spent the most just um, optimizing code and. Uh, it quickly, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Steve, the guy that does um, makes Gopher. I don't know if anyone's heard of that emulator, um, but oh, it, it's, yes, yeah, it's yes. kind of a new emulator on the rise. I've actually, uh, me and Andrew Davey have been uh, working with him on some suggestions. Uh, uh, he's been great. Uh, 
doing some stuff, and I didn't really give it much of a thought because I've always, put, you know, I've had my head down working with Stella, which I obviously yeah. still use Stella all the time as well. But he has um, he introduced some performance uh, checking in that. Um, um, Just like recently, a, yeah, like, exactly. like today or yesterday. Yeah, that, that was actually an enhancement. Uh, like a month ago, he had uh, um, introduced a, a profile, and maybe it was even earlier than that. But I finally downloaded it and started using it. Um, unfortunately, I did yeah. not get to use it for Robot War. Um, that would have been very helpful because it's more like just shooting in the dark before. It's like, I think this is going to make things work faster, <laughs> than, you know. But yeah, the tool is very, very helpful So um, for any developers out there. So um, I said... Uh, yeah, very developer-focused, it seems, yeah, I think, um, yeah, Gopher. Yeah, it's, I think Stella still would probably be the gold standard for actually running the game. And certainly I use Stella all the time for debugging as well and yep. running. But... Um, if I had to get down to the nitty gritty right now, I'd use a uh, gopher for, um, actually I've been using gopher for kicks, um, because that's another one where there's a, a, a lot of, uh, detection going on that's, um, over any of the screen. So with that, I've been able to uh, fix a lot of, uh, um, speed issues that it's having before, so. So we're gonna move on to your second game that got released. Great. Uh, Ladybug Arcade. So let's just switch back over. This is going to be nice because this is actually going to be the first time I've seen Ladybug Arcade. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got a lot of comments like that in, uh, of, of people going, oh, you got it before I did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, like... I, I know what Al's been doing with his time, but you know, I keep bugging him. Can you send me a lady? <laughs> He's like, ah, I'm taking another nap. I went, okay, fine, whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, funny. I'm I'm joking, Al of course, you know, Al, <laughs> actually, Al looked a lot better than I thought he would today, you know, like, considering all <laughs> how much sleep That's he's right. probably not getting, and I know he's prepping for his, uh, his big trip, so uh, just a uh, thanks, yeah, uh, obviously, for exactly. all the hard work he does, but uh, oh, yeah, I am excited to see works. Ladybug Arcade, so uh, you know, I've seen the renders, and but uh, I've never actually held it in my hand, so ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there it is. <laughs> I'm touching it, I'm touching it, John. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's take a look. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's getting me too excited, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, Ladybug Arcade. Nice. Looks very, good. very colorful, beautiful um, yes. artwork by uh, Nathan Strum, yep. I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Nathan did this one, and uh, he did the original Ladybug uh, artwork as well. So he seemed he seemed excited to be redoing it all over again <laughs> nice. uh, to revisit. Um, yeah. Just like me, you know, 15 years be able to uh you know do things uh, differently um, <laughs> give, uh, um with, with the game uh, i think he felt the same way with the uh, the artwork even though certainly the artwork in the original was amazing as well so that was um you know so um i, I think this came out wonderful i, I love the, the color palette they chose in this so and and uh ladybug arcade was nominated for uh best homebrew port best graphics port and best music and sound port, only to be beaten by your own game. Yep. Um, Good old so. lady. Bug. Always, a, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> That's Aww. right. Oh, poor Ladybug. Playing well, second we fiddle love to the robot. Ladybug Arcade here, so <laughs> yeah, we've had a yeah. lot of fun, and we played it. Yes. When, when we're, we're in the vacation. arcade, yes. when we're down in LA, oh, and really? your Amazing. game prepared us a lot very, well. very yes. well for the arcade experience yeah. so thank you so much oh, it was great. a lot of fun in the arcade and and i find that with a lot of your games actually that they feel so true to the arcade and have that same i i don't know they play so so well against the arcade version mm -hmm. um that you can smoothly transition over from one to the other and bring your skills that you've acquired um in one over to the other and, and i experienced that with galaga i actually got better at galaga wow. by playing galagon um, that's great so so here is the manual wow it looks nice oh excellent poor guy oh no <laughs> and here's the manual oh, great color. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I love I love the the colors that are uh, mirroring the colors in the game. Yeah. Yes, the of red. of the different blue bonuses. And yeah, yeah. Nice. the red nice and yellow touch. and blue. Yeah. And how you collect letters. Yeah, that was. I think I came up with that. Actually, um, no, I'll, I'll give Nate. Yeah, uh, maybe it could have been Nate. <laughs> We're always found Just some great case. ideas. Off. There's so many great ideas flowing back and forth. You know, we don't know who's who. So. <laughs> oh. Uh, Atari, um, Al says this is the first time Nathan is seeing the printed materials for Ladybug <laughs> Arcade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's why we do this. Yep, yeah. So exactly. everyone can so. see it all at once. Um, so everyone out there can see it. A very thorough manual. Yeah. Um, and I... This also supports the uh, save key as well for high scores. Yes, yep. Yeah, and it'll save. Um, and yeah, the quad so Atari as well for two players plus uh, save key. Yes, yep, because it also has a co-op mode as well. I think, oh, it's actually a versus mode. I think you and uh, Tanya played it a while ago, where one one of you controls one of the bugs. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So <laughs> lots of fun. That was fun. Yeah, so yeah. you can do that with the save key. So, uh, and of course, you Ooh, know this has yeah. uh, you know this is based off of the original Ladybug that I developed back in two thousand six. So. Uh, I, I'll have to admit, right. I, did, I did steal, quote-unquote, a lot of the code from that. Um, um, but uh, certainly uh, with the uh, ARM and um, the technical advances the last 15 years, I, you know, I was able to make it more arcade-like uh, with the uh, asymmetrical mazes and, uh, you know, uh, high scores and um, co-op modes and things like that. So it's uh, it was it was fun to revisit. And, uh, um, nice. Wow, that's great. Here's the... Uh fold-out poster that comes with it Wonderful. ready for framing that looks great looks incredible mm -hmm. yeah yep really really nice yeah definitely deserving of a of a poster to hang on your wall yeah mm -hmm. absolutely it looks so great. let's pop this in while we talk more about it yeah i think um nathan's big um change here is that he made the ladybug look more mean in this one um <laughs> ladybug, <laughs> I, I remember the other one looked more cutesy, kind of, uh, which also fit the game as well. Um, the 2006 version. Um, but uh, yeah, this was more Ladybug on the attack kind of uh, option. Yeah. Which looked really great. The Ladybug looks pretty angry. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's Ladybug's revenge. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so maybe you can just quickly go over the enhancements. Um, yep. that you're able to do um, with Ladybug Arcade versus the original Ladybug. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, so from a um, playability standpoint, um, the uh, maze is now arcade accurate. The uh, one, uh, the 2006 was 11 by 9, and so this was actually 11 by 11, so we were able to put in all the uh, the doors. Uh, the doors are also asymmetrical in the uh, 2006 version. If you opened up a left door on the left, the door on the right would open. That was all done because right. the, the original was just um, 16K, but it only used 120 bytes of RAM. So with that limited RAM, um, you know, I didn't have enough space to store, you know, not 11 rows of dots or, you know, extra doors, um, configurations, things like that. But um, with the arm, we were able to do that. So that's probably the biggest change from that. Um, the top um, status area looks more arcade-like. Um, it's yep. uh, it's uh, horizontally spaced out like the arcade as opposed to uh, the 2006 version where it's horizontal, uh, vertically stacked on top of each other. Um, this allowed yep. me to have more space to uh, add those two extra rows to make the uh, the maze more arcade-like. Um, another big feature is uh, it supports two players, uh, two-player uh, versus mode as well. Um, the uh, blending of the uh, maze it doesn't flicker as much before uh, i think in 2006 version i was actually combining purple and green um which mm. kind of made like a brown um <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah yeah and it flickered so this one um supports a no flicker version which is what you're looking at now i know that's best for your stream because it doesn't change the uh, screen every every frame um so yeah. so those that are sensitive to flicker there's no flicker in this at all now so that's a huge upgrade um, does use a blending technique, which you showed briefly before, where it'll uh, it'll yes. look solid. And as it turns out, green and pink, um, as it um, which are the arcade colors, makes a white color when they mix it with red, blue, and green. That's amazing. Red, blue, and green <laughs> make, make white, right? So uh, 
So yeah, by doing that, the dots and the uh, turnstiles all are white as well. So, uh, but even with it not mixing, um, it still looks pretty good. So. I think there was uh, someone oh, yeah. speaking on Facebook about that, wh what their preferences were. Some people prefer it like this. I personally prefer it mixed, but um, you can just flip a typically switch and change that. So, um, yeah. So it's 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 their option to to have it flicker or not flicker. And yes, exactly. So depending on your system. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So another thing is there was a maximum of three skulls in the uh, 2006 version. This one is arcade uh -huh. like, where you can have up to six now. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of a change. Um, and in the arcade, were there any things on the same line, or were they always staggered in the arcade? Because um, here I, I noticed some, some skulls, or they're all the skulls and all the letters are on different uh, horizontal lines. Um, well, the, it will put things on the same line also in this one, okay. when more skulls come in, because there's only 11 rows and you can have up to, um, uh, th there'll be more than that. Um, but it, oh, okay. I do. Uh, I did write the code so that first it puts everything on its own line, and then we'll only double up after that. So the flicker is minimum at the beginning. So oh, okay. Um, so so that's it. That's so, good. So yeah. So there's also high score support, um, safe key support. Uh, the original didn't have high score at all because I didn't even have two bytes to even save high score. Free. <laughs> so uh, um, so so that's a big deal with the the safe key as well. Uh, we also have that arcade like um, um, high score uh, screen where you um, add in your name. Um, you'd have to actually finish the game to see it, but basically it has a maze where you go around collecting letters you want to put in your name. So it's, it's, it's like the arcade, so it's kind of cool. Right. So, yeah, so there's a ton of enhancements. I know it, um, you know, a lot of people have questions like what's the big difference between these two? Um, Gameplay wise, I think they play about the same, to be honest with you. Um, I, I yeah, thought, they both play very well. Yeah, I thought Ladybug, the original, played pretty amazing. Um, I know I spent a lot of time working on that uh, that logic, so yeah. I ported that over here. So, it does play different because of the uh, asymmetrical doors. Um, there is an option yeah. in here with the left difficulty to put that on A. That'll do symmetrical doors like the original 2006 version for the people that you know that want to play it like that as well. So we have that option. Oh wow! Yeah, and then there's you know, a bunch of uh, eye candy that we added in, like that animated instruction screen you saw when you started um, the game. Yeah. We have Atari splash screen we didn't have in the original. We have the credit screen. So Bob who did all the sounds, and uh, Nathan uh, who did all the graphics, and um, you can get you know, and the, credit. And the special and the extra screens, the interstitial screens, were those in, those in the twenty yeah. uh, the 2006 version? Yes, it was. Um, there are some enhancements okay. here where it's a little bit more... Um, arcade like um i also have uh it'll keep the bounty score so as you're collecting um um vegetables in the uh the uh, special screen it'll show how much you collected for that um right intermission which is kind of cool addition uh, yeah yeah so yes yeah, so overall it's uh it's a lot went into the uh, remake i had a uh, 16 more k and i basically this one is at literally zero bytes free, and now it's after <laughs> months of optimizing and trying to find more code. Because every time I add something, I don't want to take it out. So then I've got to figure out a way to, you know, put something else in. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> right. fill it, fill it right up. Yeah. It, it, uh, every time I hear a developer talk about how much they have free, it's always like two or four bytes left. Yep. Yeah. And it's like, oh my god, how do you get? it down to that as well it's because you fill it up every time you yeah. have anything extra it's like oh now i can add this in yeah oh now i'm full again yeah exactly <laughs> well yeah usually what happens i'll add something i want and then i'll have i won't have enough to actually do it so then i say well i got a free up 16 bytes somehow and uh, bring a bite <laughs> in um arm code is very it's really potluck because you can like i'll rewrite right. this whole thing saying okay great i'm using like a two less four loops, blah, blah, blah. You know, this should definitely <laughs> use less code and end up using more. And then you do something, oh, right. you know, um, where you think it's completely inefficient and it uses less code because it's, you know, it's un unlike the assembly part where, you know, you know exactly how many bytes. A bite is a bite. Exactly. Yeah. With the uh, ARM, you know, the compiler, you know, it's a bunch of optimizations that it does behind the scenes where even just like moving a uh -huh. function from one section to another may free up 100. Oh. So it's, uh, 
it's it's really kind of a crapshoot. There are some things that I found oh, yeah. a little pattern with, but um, and speaking of the sound, um, yeah, it certainly we use uh, Bob's original sounds. Uh, we added a few more for um, co-op mode and some other additional sounds that we needed. I should also mention that it has uh, three um, three additional mazes, which was is a big deal, which I forgot to mention. So you have the arcade maze. You also have three uh, right. new mazes that you can use. So they all have their pluses and minuses. Here's the uh, the new enhanced um, uh, Looks great. Game entry screen. You can actually enter up to six letters here instead of just three. So oh. It's kind of cool. So. Oh, nice. You can put some hearts at the end if you yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. Of your so. of your normal three letters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And last thing for the sound, I did um, enhance the sound driver, so it actually does a mixing of sounds. Um, the 2006 version would play one sound on one channel, once on the other. And, um, this one will actually, when it's playing music, especially on the uh, special screen, or if you click the veggie and it's playing music, it'll still play the uh, um, other sound effects on, on the, the bass channel. So that was kind of cool to be able to develop a little merging thing in there. So, so here's, nice. yeah, here's the additional screen. So. So, uh, we have some previews of some stuff coming up from you yes. that we should move on to. Yep, yep. So I let's talk about stuff all day, so. take a look <laughs> at that one second. Yeah, so we have some sneak previews from John here. Sorry to interrupt That's you, right. game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody wants to see that flicker. Um, one second, let me get it up here. <laughs> So what are we showing first here? Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll just wait till you show it on the screen and then I'll say the first thing that comes to my that mind. That sounds good. Yeah. Oh, your sound cut out. Oh, I think you're back. Interesting. Oh. Okay. That's too bad. That was funny too. Yeah, it's getting choppy. Let me just do something here really quick so it isn't as choppy. And hopefully we'll clear it up. Okay, so let's go and take a look at some stuff you sent over. Here it is. Okay, so tell us what this is as soon as you see it. Gore for gate. Oh. <laughs> oh, I hear you. What is happening? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, the sound's cutting in and out. Okay, you are on now. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Hopefully it stays. There we oh. go. So this is Gorf Arcade as oh, I, all I saw your Gorf lips Arcade, move. So, yeah, I don't think anyone heard this much. So yeah, this is uh, Nathan Strum um, doing an amazing job with Gorf Arcade. Gorf is actually, um, Arcade is expected to be released or will be released come hell or high water <laughs> um, and uh, PRGE yep. so uh, we still have a few months to get this thing uh, together but uh, um, he's been working tirelessly uh, the last few days to get this uh, render together and I think it's an amazing job so um, um, oh nice basically, oh and the cartridge is different than the box yes and the reason is because um, since Gorf has five screens that's the motif Nathan's going with which I think is great so this uh, so the um, the first picture what was the first picture in the box I think that's yep. the um, um, flagship. Well, this is, yeah, I, I see the cartridge right now. So yeah, so yeah, so the box oh, is okay. the um, the flagship um, scene. So you see uh, the big flagship and the uh, two right. dwarf uh, escorts there. So so that's yeah. one box, one one scene, and then the uh, cartridge itself has cartridge. the uh, space warp, the spinning, yeah, space warp exactly. one, the spinning one, four, yeah. Yep. And then it's and then the manual is, is the laser one. Oh yeah, where they move around, laser move around, laser down at you. Yeah, and then yeah. he plans on um, including the uh, Galaxians and the uh, Astro Battles um, level on the back of the box and back of the manual, I believe. So. Um, oh, nice. Subject to so change. You'll get all so, of them. All five screens. Yeah. So. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yep. Uh oh, what was that? <laughs> and the next one, the next reveal is beautiful. Is this done by... This is David Exus. Yeah, it looks like you can really tell his style of work. Yeah. Almost, his his work always looks like... It's painted. Ominous. Yeah. Like, some, like 
threatening, like just so beautiful <laughs> uh, and yeah. and realistic and and like a dark dystopian future. I, I always <laughs> think of when I see his artwork. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I think his his um, his uh, inspiration behind this was you can see that um, the red pointer coming off of the Kicks logo. Uh, logo. Yeah. Um, his thought was going out into the great unknown. Uh, you know, kind of leaving yeah. the, uh, which is kind of how you feel in kicks. <laughs> like when you're running along the, uh, the, uh, the grid, you kind of feel safe as long as the sparks aren't next to you. But as soon as you venture out a little bit, you know, the, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the kicks can whack you at any time. So it, it kind of, uh, oh, yeah. captures that feeling. So, um, it does. And the, the pixelated, uh, logo and, and a bit of the filled in screen at the top, mm -hmm. it's just gorgeous. And you can see the, uh, end label as well. Mm -hmm. with the lines going off down and to the right it it captures the game perfectly yeah absolutely it's really really nice yeah so this mm -hmm. one we're looking at um well alan and i are still talking about this one um i know he announced boulder dash being um released sometime in the summer potentially um i think we're trying to get kicks out because kicks is that release candidate now um so yeah we're just so uh, we want to get that one out prior to um maybe in august if if that works out um, and then Gorf Arcade would be released at PRG. So, um, yeah. And, and is there, there's demo binaries for both of them? I'm not sure about Gorf. Yes. Yeah. Gorf has one. I have not worked on Gorf okay. in a year. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But, uh, and so many other things going <laughs> on. But, uh, now that, like I said, now that we have kicks at release candidate, I know you and I, Tanya, did some secret after hours testing of, uh, the co op mode, <laughs> That's right. which I appreciate. That's um, right. So, um, yeah. So that one's nearing completion. So I'm going to turn my focus on to, uh, onto uh on Gorf arcade soon because uh we're gonna get that one up and running so uh, um um d train asks if david exton works in oil or what medium he works in i don't know if you know this answer um nathan might be able to answer if he's on the chat but i know um he does like painting like he paints the things i guess um does that make it sense? looks like that. yeah so it's mm -hmm. well, yeah yeah so whether it's digital or or physical i'm I'm guessing physical. It just looks so detailed. Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm pretty sure he paints it. Um, again, Nathan would know because they've they've talked. They they've had their their okay. uh, art conversations about this stuff. And <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Yeah. So. Pretty sure he does everything digitally. Yeah. Oh, I mean, digitally. That could be done. Uh, that's what Al too, says. But yeah. yeah, that's cool. Digital painting tools are amazing. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you can have a tablet and physically like draw on it and, and you can not mimic anything, you can yeah. mimic you know paint strokes and you can mimic those things oh, yeah, i bet there's amazing tools out oh, yeah, <laughs> for yeah. that yeah, yeah that's very cool um uh i think we'll save the rest for later yeah it's running good a bit yeah behind. yeah i think we're running late here so uh i don't want to take up everyone else's yeah. time so uh <laughs> i could talk about atari stuff all day so but uh um, i, appreciate, oh, I definitely. appreciate the time we usually do thanks to you and tanya for having this and now putting this whole thing together so um, mm -hmm. yeah. Certainly well, thank you so. for continuing to make your amazing games. Yes. Um, every one you make is like, I didn't think that could be done. Or <laughs> what? Like you, you always add in a little innovation that you that I haven't seen before, or hasn't been used in a certain way to make a game possible that was before not possible to be done yeah. in in conventional methods. So it's always astounding when a new game that you make comes out. Oh. And it's a pleasure to play. Well, yeah. well thanks. Yeah, that's what keeps it um, um, creative. You know, it keeps keeps it exciting for me too. So you know, it's, it, certainly we don't want to just be churning out games for the sake of churning out games. It's always, you know, a technical challenge first that uh, kind of inspires me. Um, and you know, whether the game itself is something that you know I enjoy. And if those two come together, you know, it's pretty pretty good uh, possibility that we'll we'll give it a try. So um, yeah, yeah. Great. So thanks for uh, being on, and uh, we're looking forward to everybody getting your games and and playing them. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thanks, James. Thanks, Tanya. Appreciate all all the time and yeah. uh, good luck. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. You bet. Okay. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye. See you soon. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Um, so that was John. Very very cool. Always talking with him. Uh, the next person. How far are we behind? Oh God. Thirteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too bad. We can do it. Uh, so the next game and person we're going to be talking to uh, is Lewis Hill, better known as Muddy Funster uh, from Muddy Vision and his game Danger Zone. Uh, Danger Zone was the winner of the best of best uh, 7800 homebrew original and best 
work in progress homebrew port 7800 as well uh for the atari homebrew awards um have you yeah Do go you ahead yeah. yeah 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 so let's find that in the stack here there it is Okay, kitties, you gotta you gotta shove over. Oh, oh poor sadness. cat! Oh, I better turn on the seventy eight hundred, or we're gonna get crazy colors. <laughs> crazy colors. Warm it, warm it warm up. Warm it up. Warm up that chip. Um, so this is Danger Zone, mm -hmm. um, kind of an homage to Combat on the 2600, mm. Mm. Um, where you're flying planes and it's got great music, great graphics. And now we have the box. So let's um, take a look at the box. We can put that on the ground. All right. As we wait, I don't, let's see. Can we do that? Oh, we can. Okay, let's do this while we wait. I think it's connected. Is it? Um, it might. He needs to turn on his camera if it is connected. But we can, oh, there we go. Yay. We can bring him in. Let's go back. To, <laughs> let's go to him one second. Okay. Hello, Lewis. Hi, James. Hi, Tanya. How are you? Can we make it full Hello. screen. Good. How are you doing? Got your great T-shirt. Uh, is that a new shirt or did you have that before? This is a Make new one, I screen. think. Um, my daughter made it for me a little while ago. Oh, nice. it's wonderful. Are you going to be selling those? Um, <laughs> if anybody wants them, then sure. <laughs> <laughs> Big stack of them at PRGE uh, in, in uh, October. I, I need alongside to, I need to be able to make some nice Bernie t-shirts next. <laughs> nice. Yes, definitely. Uh, along with the little stuffies, right? Yep, yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. So you've got a new 7800 game in the box right here. Yep. It's my first 7800 game, actually. I thought so. I was going to ask you about that yeah. because uh, you've had two 2600 games, yep. uh, tire tracks and... Um, oh, Kitten is playing with the cables. Yeah. And, and Daredevil was the, uh, the other one. Daredevil. That's right. So let's take a look at your new game this is excellent so um the label box and manual artwork were done by john Cal calciano atari 20 atari boy 2600 and the label manual box layout by tony morse do you want oh. to flip it around oh. to oh, the unboxing can that's why yeah i mean you could see it but it's just a little tiny screen. little tiny there yeah. we go very nice so, Muddy Vision Danger Zone for the Atari 7800 Super System. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I don't think I've been Fuzzy. showing the sides. Oh, there oh, we no, go. Oh no, it's fine. Yeah, it just, just wasn't to... adjusting there for a second. It was. It was in. Uh, it was a little muddy in its vision. Now we're better. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mach um... two with your hair on fire. <laughs> Welcome to the Aerial Combat Fighter Weapons School. Forget everything you knew about dogfighting with combat jets. Very excellent. So, um, very explosive front cover there. Yeah, John really knocked it out of the park with that. Um, he also did the um, mm -hmm. the artwork for uh, Daredevil and Tire Tracks. So, so when he oh. expressed an interest, it was a it was a real no brainer for me because his artwork is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is really really good, and you've got uh, a very timely uh, style of, <laughs> of uh, uh, font there. Yeah. I I don't know what it's reminiscent of, but I, it reminds me of something. It, it looks but, a little uh, similar, yeah, to a certain movie that the timing couldn't have been uh, any better. Really. <laughs> <laughs> not it's it's not a movie tie-in, but no, it's, not it's, at all. it'll no. work. It'll work. Any similarities so are purely look. coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There we go. There you go. There's the cartridge and manual. Atari Age welcomes your comments. Please email your correspondence to sales at atariage.com. So bombard Al with all your questions. Uh, revision A. Eh? So here's the table of contents. Very nice. Yeah. 
Danger Zone. Talks about the title screen. Start, setup, music credits. Warming up the 7800 as I speak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a bunch of options for the game. Lots and lots and lots of options here. Um, for fuel, ammo, gun range, guide to chods, bullet wrap, time of day, game time, target score. Um, so were, were there anything different that you had to do for the 7800 game? Uh, physical release as opposed to the 2600? Um, for that one, yes. I think the key thing was because we had the pokey music um, on the title, um, that adds a layer of complexity that you don't really have with the, the 2600. So um, uh, Fred Quimby did a lot of hard work getting the hokey chips ready so that we could use those uh, in the box, in the in the actual cart. So that was the key thing. Um, Ooh, so there's a hokey chip in this cartridge right here? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, should I tear it apart? Do a tear down right now? <laughs> no, no. 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 <laughs> So that was there the key thing was to get the um the you know the get the get hokey ready um and get that into the cart. But the rest of it oh, was the Al same. Oh, Al confirms. Al confirms. Al confirms. Brilliant. This okay. is the first first hokey game right here. Excellent. The guinea pig. Da danger zone. Yeah, the guinea pig. We'll see how it uh, performs <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> when we pop it in. Um uh, so, oh, and very nice. So the schematics for the uh, the fighter planes. Oh, wow. I think that's my sole contribution to the artwork for the manual, because everything else is purely John, mm. and it's really good. <laughs> did you did you mock up the schema like those those schematics? No, absolutely not. <laughs> they're, they're, oh. pub they're, yeah, public, I... they're public domain um, images, which we just gotcha. re repurposed. Yeah, nice. I, b I believe all U.S. documents are public yeah. domain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. For for military or, or government documents. Nice. Yeah. So, very very nice and uh, beautiful, colorful artwork on the front there, and this little rising sun at the bottom, mm -hmm. just peeking out. Really great. Yeah. Very very nice. It, it yeah. really is good artwork. John's did a, a an absolutely fantastic job, and also Tony with the with the layout. Um, similar to what John what John Champo said, I I would send out um, a word document with all of the um the, the the content with a rough idea of of a layout and then tony right. tony works his magic and makes that into the doc you know the the actual published manual uh, and he does an absolutely amazing job in fact the whole team behind right. getting these releases out is so much i mean people have seen the pictures that owls published and on the stream earlier but the, the amount of work that goes into each release is is truly phenomenal yeah um do you know if there's a template that uh, people work from, for the artists work from for the boxes and the cartridge and the manuals, I, I'm pretty sure the box and the cartridge have templates, but the manuals might be a bit more freeform. Yeah. It's just like the size. Uh, I think the, the manuals tend to be, cause, because the content is so different inside, I think that, that's a bit more freeform, as you said. But I think the boxes, I think there is yeah. actually a, a template that people, folks can download if they want to make a box themselves. I'm sure it's on the forum somewhere. Yeah, because these are all very standard sizes. Like all the boxes are exactly the same yeah. size for 2600 and 7800 and 5200 at least. Um, I know the Jaguar boxes are a little bit different. Um, so I'm guessing um, there's ready to go templates that Al sends out to the artists or, or downloadable, as you said. So let's pop it in Yay. and give it a go. All right. I think it's warmed up enough. Should be by now, Hopefully. I hope. <laughs> we should put that in the manual. Yeah, mm. Yes, yeah. Please allow mm -hmm. X minutes to warm up. Okay. So, this will be the first hokey chip live demonstration. Ho hopefully, it doesn't dead. explode. <laughs> Okay, load profile to, we'll switch over to that. Here's your oh, the other 7800 one? joystick. Mm -hmm, very We're nice. Plugged into the 7800. Oh, no, I have to switch some more things. Like that. Oh, it's the NTSC version. Good. Excellent. <laughs> it's 
very quiet. For us. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's go to the music, actually. <laughs> okay, go to the next one. Uh, press the button. I'm just going to turn it up for people. One at a time. Oh, no, no that one. No, just, just, just two. Okay. And the next one? That's it. Oh, I thought there was another one that I saw. Oh, okay. Have you oh, played there. Atari today? Sure. <laughs> I love that that's an option. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Might as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's go back. Okay. And go to the setup. Setup. Do I want to play Is it up down to select it? There um, we go. Typhoon. So maybe uh, step us briefly through the process of after you're done the game. How how far into when you're getting close to being done the game do you start the process of the physical things? Or do you, do you start them before you're done? Or you're like, oh, now I'm done, now I can move on? I suppose it varies. Um, with Certainly with my games, it tends to be when, when they're done. And <clears throat> then I'll have a, I'll have a chat with Al and, and we'll figure out what the strategy is for you know bringing that to making it available physically. Um, I think with Danger Zone, we started that uh, a little while after the uh, the final release candidates were, were, were done. Um, and uh, with some of the other titles we've got coming out, I think Al mentioned um, EXO and, and Keystone for for Portland. Um, and we, yeah, we're it's just very getting, exciting. We're just getting those spun up now. Um, so it's right. um, it, it's usually just in, in my time, it's a, a little time after the final binaries are ready. Okay. Yeah, and I mean that makes sense because you don't want to divide your time and slow down the binary. Yeah. Um, it's like okay, the binary is done. Now we can move on. Um, and like you, you probably provided, like John said, provide the content for the manual. Um, and I think Al proofreads a lot of them. <laughs> uh, did you get <laughs> he, Al to he proofread it? Does. He, he, Al's contribution when he's proofing them is he, he, fantastic. He picks out all those little. Um, he, he turns into the grammar police proper, um, and, he, and he's fully appreciated. <laughs> You're missing a full stop here. Yeah, yeah, yes, Albert, I'll fix that right now. <laughs> um, but he, but it's, it's absolute. It's that attention to detail that sets the Atari Age releases aside from, you know, something that's been thrown together. Um, elsewise, but it's uh, it, it, it adds to the quality. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean, it's good that there's a lot of eyes yeah. on the manual and the artwork and, and all the text because the last thing you want is hundreds of boxes printed with a spelling a, a, mistake. An error, yeah, absolutely. And I think there's yeah. a, there's as much care and attention that goes into the physical release, the box, the art. You know the the content yeah. of the manual, the the label, the positioning, and all that stuff, as goes into testing the binaries. I mean, and, and that's that's an absolute necessity to make sure what ends up through the letterbox that someone can plug into their console is 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 the right quality that we want to put out. Yeah. Um, Step says, "Nice, warm-looking sky. Oh. Yeah, the colors are just gorgeous. The pink." I think that's sunset or sunrise. Yeah, that's, yeah I think that's the dawn, the dawn setting, the dawn patrol setting. Dawn, yeah. Oh, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous yeah, colors. You've, you've got uh -oh. also daytime and, and nighttime as well. Yeah, you'll have to show those off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I, I, I am guessing that I, we probably discussed this before. Combat was. Um, an inspiration for this game, or yeah. was that just tangential? Uh, absolutely, it was um, really just combat. I mean, I used to play that game on the two six hundred with my my two younger brothers when we were kids, and it was it was one of our first probably probably PVP games, if you like, uh, player versus player. <laughs> and yes, I always figured when I started getting into the seventy eight hundred as a platform, and as I started to kind of lean away from the twenty six hundred, I thought I figured, well, I'd like a project that would be fairly straightforward not too complicated but would also be a lot of fun for people to play um right and, and the jets element of combat was just um it, just a no-brainer for me just a, a, a fun piece of uh of, of software 
and and I guess extending it with all the options of the planes and the uh, weapons and the sky was well, you, was you, a you, natural extension you know for combat. You know what my games right? are like, James. I love a good option. <laughs> there's always, <laughs> there's right. always options in there. But yeah, the extra And planes, why not? Yeah, the, the extra planes, it was a case of, well, let's, rather than having a couple of triangles, let's let's put some proper sprites in there. The 7th Edge can do that. And then it got to the, yeah. the, the, like the 2600 version, the planes looked like they were just rotating on the spot and it looked a bit weird. So then I figured, well, we're going to have to have more frames. I need more ROM. So we ended up um, having like the rotation that you get now with the uh, the 360 view. Yeah, it's 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 almost like a, a a 3D view of the plane because you see the underneath of the plane and the top of the plane. Hey, you're Top Gun! Yay! Because I'm not playing against anyone. You are the <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> Again, all similarities are purely coincidental. <laughs> That's right. So yes, tons and tons of options, and I mean. Once you've got the game going, the options are, are a little bit easier to add yeah. on top of that. Like the different graphics for the planes, the different number of bullets and the reloading and the delays and, and clouds moving. And it's, well, it's just some really, of those really end up adds. just being one or two lines of code that just gets tweaked with, a, with the option. You can set the option and it just carries it through. So it's they were, they were easy to add. And I thought, you know what, it, it adds that little bit of, you know, you want to have guided bullets? Sure, let's have guided bullets. You, you want to have limited bullets? <laughs> yeah. Sure, let's do that too. With the two six hundred version of combat, you had all these hundreds of different, you know, game permutations with difficulty switches, and and I figured yeah. I wanted to bring some of that through, but without having the complexity with the difficult. I think on the seventy eight hundred, yeah. people often forget there are actual difficulty switches underneath the console, and I figured let's do it from a menu. Yes. It's just easier. It is, and it's it's actually very hard to see those switches yeah, and I, to tell yeah, big. even what position they're in. And I, I still haven't memorized whether B is left or right. <laughs> I, I still don't know. So it's it's nice to have the options in the menu. And a lot of um, homebrew is going more towards menu yeah. um, options, which which is really really nice. Like you said, you don't want uh, a cr a grid in your manual, and you have to figure out some. Yeah mathematical formula to t tell you which which whether you have fast or slow bullets it's like well that's option 34 adding it but i have to add two to that yeah. to get that one and yeah move down the grid and, and the thing is if you've not played the game in a while and you and you throw it in your in your console to play for a bit um you might have settings inadvertently set and your, your your experience might not be fun you might want to go back to something easier and having it on screen just you know mm -hmm. just makes it it's pick up and play and you can just set it how you want yeah, and it's good if one player is better than the other as well. You can easily set that yeah. um, so that you can play with an inexperienced player or a pro player and match them up directly, and both people can have fun. Yeah, more easily. Yeah, it's so I I always love options in games because it gives a lot of replayability. Yeah, absolutely. As well to the game. Yeah. Um. Anything. Else, you, you want to say about the the process of of putting together the the manual, or you want to thank some people? Yeah, I, I think um, a lot of thanks and a lot of um, appreciation goes to Al and everything he does supporting developers um, on all the different platforms, right the way through to the. Uh, uh, I think the I think we've got Jaguar releases coming through now as well, which is fantastic. Um, it is, yeah. Tony for his work on the layout and the manual. John for his um, his fantastic artwork. Um, on the ROM development side, um, I, I couldn't really not thank Bobby um, for his wonderful music again. He did a, a really great title track, and we even did a B-side, which was so good we included that too, which you can select from the menu. Um, with Bobby did all the music on the X-side as well, and Keystone, and I, I know I say this every time, oh, he's but amazing. He's, he's such an amazing collaborator to, to, to have to work with. It's, um, it's fantastic. But, and also, um, the guys that test all my ROMs and binaries, and that they're with me from the very first releases through to the the release candidate. So that's Treeball, Crossbow, and um, and Steve Ramirez. Um, so that's Robert, Jesse, and uh, and Steve. The feed great testers. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, 
the the contribution they make is uh, not to be understated the suggestions the 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 weird especially jesse the weird and obscure bugs that he finds i don't know how he does it i think he's got like a weird sixth sense <laughs> uh, the bug whisperer yeah. we should call him i think <laughs> and and also yeah, and um, he's... matt and, and and mike because they are um real big drivers behind the 7800 homebrew scene especially with 7800 basic and, and the tools that are now available and mike's always available yeah. to you can pop a question to him and you know he's i always reference him as my code guru in, in the credits and, and that is a title that's <laughs> well earned and deserved he, he's a uh, an absolute master when it comes to helping out oh yeah definitely uh, i mean without the community all pitching in we wouldn't have these amazing games i mean yep. not to underscore the the developers but uh it is a it is a community effort absolutely yeah absolutely um, yeah. And all the and folks it, that download wonderful. the game and test it, and you know, and, and provide comments and yeah. feedback, and it's you know, it's all it's all appreciated. It really is. Oh yeah, definitely. So thanks uh, for coming on the stream again, Lewis. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank and, you for having uh, me. Pleasure as always. Yeah, looking forward to talking with you again in the future about newer games that you're that you're making. I know there's Fabulous. a ton on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Excellent. Such, I mean, Muddy Funster is creating a lot of amazing games. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've played a bunch of them on the show. Mm -hmm. And he just gets better and better and better at them. And they get bigger and bigger. Uh, uh, it's astounding. I love the... Um the visuals on this game which is very simple but the clouds yes. and the colors and yeah. the detail in the sprites of 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 the um the planes yeah. and it's so much fun to play i mean you're, you're just watching me like go in circles I mean, it's a two-player game it's a two-player game but, a two -player yeah. game. but um <laughs> but it is so much fun the competitiveness when two people are playing that game oh. and you're going after each other is so oh, good yeah. it's so good yeah, yeah Al says he's kicking yeah. he's kicking ass some great yes. games from him in the pipeline as well yes um, so next person up is Octavio Pino Bokel, and this, I believe, is the first appearance on a Zero Page for him. Um, and his game is Hellway, if you want to get mm -hmm. him on the line. Sorry, oh, oh. Octavio? Octavio, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Octavio. And we will... Okay. Just message, but that's okay. Did he? Oh. It's okay. Just oh, we have I... to give away some games. We have to give away some stuff. Oh, my yes. God. Ah. Totally forgot. Octavio, oh, hello. <laughs> Welcome to the show. No problem. Um, yes, we do. We do have to give we away We have to give some stuff away. And I've totally so, forgot. Yeah. Um, we can still do that. Excellent. Okay, so... Welcome to the show and, and congratulations on uh, releasing Hellway. Okay, just, oh, a, second, is just it, a second. Oh, it's not. I, I, I didn't Sorry? mute it. you. No, no, now it's good. So so weird to see you from a different angle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. make sure you... On you. I muted the, the stream, yeah. so I know that. Yeah, that. definitely. Yeah, that's that's always the confusing part. Definitely mute Twitch. Uh, we can hear you. We can hear you well here. That's there we great. go. So let's take a look at your new game and unbox it, Hellway. Uh, very exciting. I have just one. And one I know. Request. Please don't forget to add you bet. Uh, Leonardo, uh, the designer, uh, if you do want to talk to him because he sent the request during the show because he, I think he forgot. Uh, oh. <laughs> but if, if it's that's okay. Time, but if there is no time, I, I can I can I can speak for for everything. You'll be able to answer the questions. Yeah. Um, did you pass along our contact information? uh for uh skype yes yes i did i think he added you but the show uh oh, okay. like one hour one hour half, we'll check it after maybe okay yeah we'll yeah. check it in a actually let's 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 check you it right check now. It now yeah <laughs> and i'll do this all right <laughs> so uh, can i minimize this no oh no, no I don't think so. we can't we'll check it after we'll check it in a bit yeah yeah, yeah we'll, we'll check it after Yep. Okay, so let's take a look at Hellway. Beautiful, beautiful cover. Uh, dynamic, moving. It, it really represents the game well because there's a lot of fast action in Hellway. You're speeding through traffic, and this, uh, this really shows off what's going on in the game really well. Yeah. Thanks. 
uh, and it uh, shows the different types of uh, side animations with the play field um, with the parallel scrolling of the mm -hmm. sides is really really quite uh, innovative of the of the movements on the sides mm -hmm. and so let's take a look inside so this is your is this your first um, physical game that you've released yes yes uh, it was like and is it your first 2600 game as well I believe yeah so yes so yes to both questions I actually released a drug <laughs> game a while ago and then I had several failed attempts of, of doing games uh, and this is my my first yes my first Atari game and it was a journey of self-discovery so uh, I don't know if the time to talk but like what you see in this game uh, I, I didn't try to copy anything. I, I, I tried to understand the hardware and try to do things like myself. Like, you know, like this 10 digit score using score mode on the play field, like this vertical parallax, uh, the style of game. Everything is, is, is very different from what you see in other games because uh, I tried to really not to, to copy but discover how to, how to program this, this myself and it was really fun. I mean, uh, for me, it was about a, a, a the journey. Uh, so yeah, and and I think uh, with a lot of new programmers that come to the twenty six hundred, and they discover the system as they program and figure out how it works. I think a lot of innovation comes from that, because the twenty six hundred is very constrained, but it's also extremely flexible at the same time in what it can do. So as, as new programmers come to it, you find them making very, very different games. And this one is, uh, unlike a lot of games, is a, a vertical uh, racer mm -hmm. racing in between cars. It is a ton of fun. And we played your new two-player side-by-side mm -hmm. version on the show. Yeah. Which oh, my fun. God. So much fun. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, oh, they heard Atari meow. <laughs> they heard Atari meow. Yeah, yeah, you need some you feeding talk, soon. You talk yeah. about like, uh, Atari hardware. Uh, I can give you an example, for example, ab about this flexibility, right? I also studied a little bit how to do NES <laughs> games. Uh, so there is something, for example, this game, when you actually going for the, the full parallax, there are several, several border effects, but one is like this three lines of, of parallax plus e e e each car lane. Uh, scrolling at a different speed. This would be impossible to do right. in an NES uh, console. <laughs> because you're, you're, you're talking yeah. about a vertical parallax, like, it yes. would be, uh, you couldn't, we wouldn't do it. There's no way to, to do it. It would be a flickering mess because you have to do it with all these sprites. Uh, we couldn't use background for that. But the Atari, how, right. because we program per line, uh, there's no concept of video, uh, like a video, sh uh, so the video ships per line, right? So you can do the next line is the next line, and then you can do everything. Then you can do <laughs> any, any kind of par vertical parallax <laughs> effect and, and thing that you cannot exactly. do more uh, uh, advanced consoles. So Atari does what Nintendo doesn't, like like the Mega. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the flexibility of the 2600. It doesn't care what you did on the last line. It doesn't care what you do on the next line. It only cares about the line you are on mm. and what you're putting on that line. Interesting. Um, so yeah, the parallax is, is yeah. a way that you can use the 2600 to its fullest abilities. So let's take a look at your game, Hellway. <laughs> I'm anxious to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a little while. Oh, got to switch it over. One second. So many things. Because I'm playing so many different games on different systems. There we go. Now it should work. There we go. So does this go to your uh, website, this QR code? Yeah, so, so one of the, the other guests was, was talking about doing a, a menu, so, but a 4K game is really hard to do a menu. So if you scan this with your cell phone right, right now, uh, yep. actually, it's not just a static website. You, you actually have a, 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 a dynamic table where you select the game modes and it gives you back Oh, you have to select game mode A, game mode B, game or mode three oh. from the options. So, so you actually have a full option menu which you can select what you want, and it will give you the game mode. So it's it, it's like I'm using technology. Uh, so I'm using <laughs> like this 2000 technology to give you 
to give you a menu on a 4K uh, that's, game. And this is the product that's really smart. You're, you're seeing right here. In every, in every lane mm -hmm. has have its own speed. Uh, mm -hmm. And you see the... Okay, maybe... I don't know. Please cut me, cut me out. I, uh, I forgot to, to, to take with me a, a, ti a timer. So I will just speak and they will say, hey, this is too much. Just cut me. <laughs> oh. So oh, it's fine. So what oh, you, it's okay. you see, so I'm using extra decimal. Maybe this wasn't one of the most uh, unpopular decisions. I, I thought that would be cool <laughs> and it was a very great way to use space, but I proved myself wrong in the second game that I could do with five characters to put all the information on the screen using bars and. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was very uh, outdoor uh, thing to do, and this is this one score you don't see often. So this is like a ten digits. Uh, play field scores in score mode to draw uh, half of the play field each time and use, use only five bytes of, of memory uh, <laughs> to do to do to do the score. So, uh, anyway, yeah, maybe this is, this is yeah, it's, too it's, much technical. It, like I was saying, innovation comes from uh, not knowing what like what you can do and can't do from with the system, and very few games use hexadecimal uh, scoring. But, like you said, it was actually a huge advantage when you went to a two-player because you could fit so much more uh, more information on the screen. Yeah. But, so it was a super clever use of it. Yeah, but the, the two-player games, I, I, I changed some X and decimals to, to bars. The, then you're seeing a bar, so you don't have to oh, worry yes. that you're seeing something to, from 0 to, to F. You're seeing a bar that, that <laughs> has 16 <laughs> possible states. Uh, right, and then and, 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 and the best of both worlds. But of, of course, we do improvements as as we, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, constant improvement. And and really innovative of using the website for the different modes because I know this game has so many yeah, modes of about playing. The option, like the last guy, the last guy. <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, can I tell you a little but bit? So. For example, I just like this game is not about speed. It's about maintaining speed and keeping your average speed high. It's not about being the fastest. It's about patience and find the openings, right? So this is a little bit right. different yeah. from most of racing games because it took it take a while for you to get used to. So you, the first time you play, yes. it's like it's a piece of shit game because you start crashing, <laughs> crashing, crashing, and, and you think, oh, yeah. I, I got to face that, that I, have, I have no opening. But you have to control your yes. openings, right? By braking and accelerating like real traffic and waiting for opportunity. <laughs> uh, yep. And you guys are playing really well. So, so from from the first time you played and the second version, oh, like, huge like improvement. Now, now, now you know. Now you know how really how to play how to play this game. I I think you're getting quite quite upset with how terrible we were playing when we played it the first time. But now we're like, okay, now we understand. You get a feel for it and how to the, where to slow slow down the, and speed up. The and strategy of like you're dealing with traffic. It's not a racing game. It's not a traditional. You know, there's opponents. This is traffic you're going through, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I do like, though, uh, it's forgiving in the sense that if you do crash, it's not like you have a limited number of lives. Right. It's all about getting to the end of that stage. And another innovation is the coasting. Yeah, coasting. So at the end. When yeah. you run out of time, you're not right out of time. It's you can keep going if you have, have the speed, but at the same time, you still have to dodge until you make it across to the next stage. So now you're coasting, right? No. Coasting. So as long as you don't hit coasting. something... You're gonna be coasting right now. There you're coasting. Yep. So as long oh. as she doesn't hit any... Uh, yeah. Or something doesn't hit her, yeah. then you can get to the next stage if you make it. Yeah, yeah go to the so right. Go it, to the right. You should go to the right. <laughs> I would go to the right. Well, the, I don't know, I don't know yeah. how, how delayed my, my t television is, by the way. So Because maybe she uh, was the right person, but I'm seeing that my television muted and I don't know the... Ah, score. This, yeah. this, is, this is something that I also don't see in many games, right? So no, people not complain a 4K about the game decimal, too. but I, I, I add decimal for, for everything. So this is the score, and if you have a plus card, this will be submitted online. And the, the total nice. time oh, seconds you played, nice. uh, the, the number, the total seconds you glided, uh, the number of uh, times you heated a car, and the number of checkpoints, oh. plus the exactly version uh, that you played. So so because you're comparing bananas with bananas, so you're playing game mode right. zero. Uh, with car number three and the difficult switches that that you started in exactly version of the game right there 
Uh, it, it just wow, always use the same that's engine great. that you that that that's the score on top of the screen. So just reusing code and, and printing more stuff. Um, yeah, mm. that's that's really great, and that's a lot of information for a 4K game to keep track of as well. Mm. Yeah, that's, I use, that's I use incredible. The when I finished the game, so so it was a more of a process. Okay, when it, like when everything that I wanted to, to do was done, I I went like these interactions and. I have to say, like the community, the community that made this game great. I can give some some examples. For example, the QR code, I was never able to test on a, on a real television because to to actually scan and to make a QR code work uh, on a flat screen panel, it's really easy, right? But you, when you were talking about CRT, we found the distortions and, and problems that you have on, on CRT image. Uh, like the community really helped because people would start like putting uh, the game on their consoles and, and putting the QR code on their screens and actually changing the QR code because of the feedbacks uh, to a, with oh. a more error corre correction. So I, I actually spend more memory on the QR code to put more error correction <laughs> because of the community feedback. Also with the cars. Right. So, so I never had the idea of doing four cars. So somebody picked a design uh. Uh, of another car and then the conversation side to put this design and people so more people stepped in uh with designs but uh since you know atari it's like a pixel perfect collision right so it is yeah. changing changing the the car design would change uh the collision so right it would be really like have the same car with just different designs this is this will not be good because i'm actually changing the collision box of the car so i i decided to right. give completely different personalities for the cars uh, Smart. And this, this, but this was all about community. So people pitched the car, and then okay, uh, and uh, and I start, you know, doing different, different, uh, different this car and because that, because of the collision box. Because if it was not attacked, also it, probably I would have a square collision, and the, the collision I would control myself. But since the car in uh, pixel perfect, <laughs> this also yeah. made me give some different personalities for the car. Um, and that enhances the game. It gives more playability. It's like, oh, what's your score with this car? What's your score with this car? You know, this one has different acceleration. This coasting. one has different coasting, whatever. And, yeah. and it adds it adds to the game. You know, somebody asking for different car designs. That's that's awesome. Yeah, it's all it's all for uh, It's actually the credits are maintained on the source code. So if somebody sees the source oh, great. code. Uh, the the original at authors of the the, the last uh, the last three cars they are they are there. They're in the source code. Oh, that's great. Um, so anything else you want to add uh, to people to thank for for the release and uh, how was the experience uh, actually since this is your first game okay. um, uh, being released? How was the experience of of getting it done made into a physical? Uh, cartridge. Okay, uh, so I have a for, uh, first question. I'm going to show the menu still, or oh, I did on the stream. Oh, uh, you at did. The beginning. Sorry, I didn't yeah. see. Yeah. So that's okay. <laughs> so okay, you first ask for for the tanks. I would appreciate if you actually could. The, the last page of the menu is this the special tanks. Since I don't have the menu oh, myself, okay. I would appreciate uh, if you read. Uh, you bet. Because I, ha I have exactly uh, the people that I want to take there. Okay. Um, this game was fully developed by Octavio Pino Bocal, sorry if I mispronounced that, and the paper art by Leonardo Noguero, Noguera. Some good ideas were adopted by listening to the community in the Atari Age forums. Game published by Atari Age. Uh, game conceived and designed by Octavio Bocal, copyright 2021, Octavio Bocal. Published by AtariAge.com. Oh, I think I'm rereading. Re no, there is a cover special, page. Special thanks, I think. This is special the credits. Thanks. Uh, maybe it's not, not the, the last, last page. Maybe the last. Oh, special thanks. Ah, yes, there we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, to my family, in particular, particular my wife, Aline, and my daughter, Zelda, for all the support and patience while I was doing the never-ending one last adjustment to the game. To Leonardo, my friend that made all the paper art with all his heart. He truly embraced the project. To Leon for taking his time to learn video editing and doing the first trailer. To all the people that tested the game. To all the Atari Age community, this game is possible because of you. My gratitude is forever registered in the forums. To the Zero Page Homebrew crew, thank, thanks for taking your time with the game 
and for the opportunity to be on your show. Oh, thank you so much, Octavio. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure to play. Oh, we we had so much fun. Yeah, we really did. Especially <laughs> now that we know how to play it, playing the two player it against was, each was other. It was really, really we fun. We didn't want to stop playing no. and, because it's just so competitive. And and you don't know what's coming up with the cars and the and the traffic that's that it's gonna bombard you. It's just so much fun. So yeah, I highly recommend the game. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I don't know if I'm out of time, but to ask, I'll ask a second question about development. Do, do I have time? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Go for it. So uh, answer your second question. Uh, I recently had like a daughter when when I started doing this game, and for some reason like having a kid was like for me the time okay if i don't do things i'll never do things because i never have time so it was a lot of sleeping last nights and uh but it was the like it was really my passion uh like i was also i was in love with, with my daughter with my wife but also yeah. like in, in love with this project it was you know <laughs> that was the only thing because your life will start being like donating yourself to, to other people, but this was mm -hmm. me and like a way to to express myself. And I don't know if anybody that's viewing is planning to buy the game or not. I just want to say, if you're planning to buy the game, uh, many hours was put to make it perfect. One example for uh, like breaking, let's say that like breaking mechanics. Uh, I made sure that if you can always break for uh, if you are in the fastest lane. Uh, you're in top speed that you always have time to break by breaking like 200, 300 times until I knew the breaking times, uh, the break, right. uh, the tuning was perfect. And this was with all the mechanics in the game. It was like from many several uh, fail attempts to, to do game, I decided that each and every mechanic that I added uh, to really fine tune. So the so. Uh, it's not just about edge features, but each feature is what was well tested extensively to exhaustion. So you could get, have the uh, the best possible game I, I could make at the time because I have no pressure to, to deliver, right? This is was a personal project. So right. this is the best no game uh, <laughs> I could do. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy. Um, yeah. and thank you. Thank you for, for, for the space, <laughs> actually. Yeah, well, thank you. For making this game and coming on and uh the love yeah. for the game really shines through yeah um in the playability and that's yeah. really what it comes down to especially when people look at 2600 games they go oh it's very pixelated like yeah. if they're not used to looking at it but once they play it yeah they understand why we in the community love these games because there's so much time and testing put in put into the playability of and it the and the feel of them yeah. yeah how things move how you drive your car how you break the car yeah you break in the car because it's done is done perfectly it's done just right so you, that you, you feel like you're driving in traffic <laughs> that's right yeah <laughs> you're weaving and you're going because, back and forth because that feels natural and that that's that's yeah. um uh testament to the time that you put into making it feel that way right yeah. and yeah it's a really fun game really fun game <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Marco Johanna says, having no pressure to deliver is liberating. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and really, there's not a lot of pressure in the community um, to deliver. Because, you know, we want, we want these games to be as good as they can be. Yeah. Uh, we don't want, oh, just put it out, right? Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. These aren't big AAA titles where it's like, oh, it's due on, you know, before Christmas because we've got to make Christmas sales and this. And yeah. it's like, it's none of that. We yeah. just want the best games the, possible. The yeah. so I mean, Al might have... So the only something two, to say the about only that. The deadline <laughs> is the Atari A, uh, the zero page homebrew award. That's the only two <laughs> timeline, right? If you're going to meet. Yeah, and the, I apologize for that. Or, or I, 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 yeah, I never wanted it to be a deadline, but <laughs> unfortunately it has turned into one because people want to get, get the best, for that year, best for game that they year. can before the deadline. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah that's, it, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. That is a deadline. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on. It, yeah. It's it's a pleasure to, to show off your game once more, and I, I can see us playing the uh, two player version in the future again because it's just so much fun. Yeah. Yes. And hey, so we're gonna yeah. talk about the, the release of that one after I, I don't have my copy. I'm really uh, like dying <laughs> to see to see 
to see my hand how yeah. it turns out and and then i can make plans oh, it looks the beautiful game. thank you for the space yeah. thank you for your time uh for yeah. the invitation well, thank you for coming it on. wasn't expected uh but truly really <laughs> appreciated thank you yeah, yeah. So, well thank you for coming on thank and, you, and, uh, yeah, and for have you. a good night bye -bye. Yeah. talk to you soon bye bye, -bye. Excellent. Awesome. Oh, it's always great to have um, developers on the show for the first time. Yeah. It, it's wonderful. There's Leonardo on, on Skype. Oh, okay. Thank you for subscribing, Atari 1974. Uh, yeah, we should accept and mm -hmm. we should have them on very quickly. We're way behind. Should I, should I yep. connect? Leonardo, yep, yep. are you out there? <laughs> well, he's he's there. He's, yep, go yep. Uh, go video. And if he comes up, then we'll, we're good. We'll so give this him is a bit, the, of, a bit of time, yeah. So this is the um, um, person who did the artwork, artwork on the game. Yeah. Let me just uh, check exactly what he did on the game. Packaging design. There we oh, go. So he's here. Excellent. Hello, Leonardo. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello, guys. How are you doing? Good. Good, how are you? you? Congratulations on the release of uh, Hellway. Great job on the packaging. Thank Go you very yep. much. So we don't have a lot of time, but um, if you'd like to talk a little bit about the, 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 the process design. of making yeah. the, the packaging and the, the design uh, that you uh, came up with for the, the speeding car through traffic. Yeah. <laughs> so... I can say that it was really exciting. Um, I love the, the work so much. Um, how can I say? It's it's really wonderful to see that uh, in a product final. So it took a lot of time, a lot of um, coming going. Uh, so it returned a lot to make uh, to fix little problems, and but it was really exciting. So is this uh, your first physical release of a game that you've worked on? Yes, for for games, yes. And uh, what is your what is your artistic background? Do you do this as as uh, work, or is it a hobby, or just something that you really enjoy doing? Well, nowadays it's a hobby, but I had a company um, uh, there so not a long time in Brazil, and I. Uh, artistic projects for a lot of companies, a lot of uh, logos, etc. And I am, I'm a painter also. I'm a, I'm a, I produce a drawings, uh, professional drawings, illustrations. But it was a job some time ago, but now I'm just a programmer. I stopped doing that. It's just a hobby nowadays. Mm. Excellent. So how do you, how do you know Octavio? Are you friends, or do you hooked up through the Atari Age forums or online? Well, uh, we are uh, we are friends. That there is so much time, and we used to, to surf and work together. And uh -huh. when we were in Brazil, nowadays Octavio is not to live in Brazil. Uh, I'm living in Quebec City, and so oh. nowadays we are not so close because we have a huge distance between us. But he's a great friend. A friend that I love so much. Oh, excellent! So, um, anything else you want to say about the the packaging or the process, or in, anybody you want to uh, okay. thank? Oh, actually, what was your inspiration for the artwork? Well, I tried to produce something. How can I say, retro? So something uh, old style to to to, to, to cause uh, when we are t we are talking about. I can remember when I was a little boy playing at home and producing something um, like a Atari, Atari game. I can remember the first time I played that. So I really would like to, to pass that feeling, to, to show that in the cover page, in the manual, and all the material. So the, the idea is to put something, how can I say, um, that could make us think about our past when the, the, the designs were more more simple yeah and, and you really captured like I said uh, at the top of showing this box off you really captured the 
the speed and the dynamics of of Hellway in mm -hmm. in the in the front cover, especially with the car and the lines going past and the the guy leaving the the traffic in the dust there <laughs> with the clouds yeah. of smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really really great. Yeah, and the great like font the as well. To, 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 put, yeah. to, wait, uh, to put a car that, that could pass the, the, the feeling of movement of uh, keep going out of the city like uh, um, to show the, the, the two environments the traffic the moment you were the traffic the moment you were passing by a more calm place so that was it yeah well thank you for coming on uh, uh, the stream and, and talking about your artwork it really well done and it yeah. uh, suits the game really well Thank you guys, thank you for the opportunity, thank you for your time, thank you for showing our product. Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. Thank yeah. you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you very much. See you. Bye bye. Good evening. Bye. Excellent. So twenty minutes behind. That's okay. That's Not it could be bad. worse. We could be three hours behind. You know? <laughs> yes. We still have a lot more to go. <laughs> uh now we're gonna move on to Arms Car Coder. Which hit with his game Dog on It, um, nice. and uh, Dog on It was the winner of Best Homebrew Original mm -hmm. and Best 4K. Watch that cat! Watch that cat! He's sniffing it. Him. And he, Best 4K yep. uh, Original as well. Nice. Um, so okay. if you can go for him, and I will pick it out of the pile. Now this was a limited release before. Um, that he put out, and now this is the unlimited version of the game. <clears throat> it's Andrew, right? Andrew Paul. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, 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 no. no <laughs> I don't I think I said his sure. name. Uh... <clears throat> Doggone is crazy good, Step says. Yeah. What about giveaways? Oh my god. Yeah, we gotta figure something out. Okay. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah. Well. Andrew has a question, and we'll do that when he comes on, and he can say it. Yeah, we'll get Andrew to ask the question. Oh, that's a good... I think I know that. Yeah, is that correct? <laughs> is his answer correct? Uh, uh, n there's another one, is but there? we'll accept either one. Will, will <clears> we? Yeah. Shouldn't we look it up? No, I, I know. It, 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 as long as somebody gives a valid answer, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fine. Okay. Shall I connect with Andrew? Yes, please. <clears throat> and then we'll do some rapid fire <laughs> giveaways. Yes, we'll have to. People are like, limited run was 50 copies. Oh, thank you, Arena Foot. Keeper of 2600 knowledge. Oh, he's on. He's on. Excellent. Hello. Good. Yeah, Andrew, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are y'all? Good, good, good. Congratulations on the uh, unlimited release of Dog on It. It looks just as good as it did before, <laughs> which is excellent. Um, <clears throat> so let's show that off. Thank you for coming on again. Oh, no problem. So Dog on It is a astounding 4K game. So much is packed into this <laughs> small game. Uh, multiple screens, lots of action. Lots of different little characters on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, so let's take a look at the box. Oh, mine got crushed a bit. Sad. <laughs> <clears throat> Someone was making a comment about opening them all with a thin butter knife so that you don't... You don't I'm uh, doing pretty good. You are doing Take a look good. at that. At the top. Show it. What? Yeah, look at oh. that. Oh, yeah. Oh. So anyway. good. I open it up no problem. <laughs> Death touch. Yeah, that's yes. right. I've opened up many of these. He so. needs his white gloves as he goes through. Oh, what is this? <laughs> this is new. Oh. Oh. Doggone it. Introduction and review by Nathan Strum. Perpetually procrastinating pontificator. An Atari Very 2600 nice. homebrew game that is... Doggone good. Very nice. <laughs> oh, and we've got Artie, the 2600. Very nice. Very nice. So that's a nice little bonus over the uh, limited release. And we've got the manual Very here. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Nathan actually, that was included with a limited release. Was mm. it? 
It should have been. Oh, I uh, forgot it. Now, it's, I passed them all, James, so maybe maybe <laughs> I missed yours. But I, uh, double, Well, now I have one, so it's okay. all good. Well, double check. <laughs> I can send you some more because I have a few extras laying around. <laughs> oh, excellent. So let's go through the manual. Uh, had, was anything changed from the limited release to this release in terms of the manual or artwork or anything? No, we just added the Atari Age logos in the certain mm -hmm. spots, but everything else should be exactly the same. Okay. Um, so who did all the artwork for this? Uh, Charles, I uh, can't remember his last name right off the top of my head. Aiken, there it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. My wife's cousin is a graphic designer uh, by trade, Herbie Haller. And he uses Charles, I think, for some of his projects. So I, I've never mm -hmm. met Charles. Um, we've exchanged a few uh, emails, but um, yeah, he, he's the illustrator. Very nice. Yeah, really fun cartoonish looks to them. I love the culvert kitty. Let's go back to that. Crazy culvert kitty. Nice, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> and a thanks. And there we go. And we're thanked on there, which oh, is always nice. very nice. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So, um, maybe you can um, talk about... Do you want to do the, the giveaway uh, question first? Yes, let's yes. let's not forget about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think I have some other answers to your question, but um, I think we'll accept any valid answer. Any you, valid? You are, In case you are all... the judge, James. Okay, <laughs> we'll accept any valid answer, and and other people can uh, can um, verify the answer. So if you could ask the question, this will be for. Let's give away the um, the Tar Age glass. The Tar Age glasses yeah. first. Da, 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 da. Yeah, oh, let's switch over to you, actually. Okay. Oh, actually, we can show this. We have a close-up cam. There, that's what we're giving away. Not this one, but another one just like it. Yeah. That's there we go. Age. So when you asked me about a question, I thought about um, something related to doggone it. And I know I did this, but I couldn't. It's been so long. I uh, Googled or looked around to see what games feature a dog. And I don't remember uh, what I found last time, but when I did it again today, you know, I found uh, at least one. So the question is, what original Atari release game features a dog? There you go. There you and go. the first the person chat. to type it in the chat, a valid answer, is the person to get it. Lol is not an answer. Okay, so everybody's <laughs> on like a, a... There's a slight delay. Five to 20 second delay, yeah. depending on many variables. Yes. So... And I've, I've, <laughs> ET, e no, Sword Quest Earthworld, mm. Snoopy versus the Red Baron. That is a valid answer. I didn't even think of that one. Mousetrap was the one I was thinking okay, of. Okay, I didn't think about and, those. <laughs> and, and what was the one you thought uh, of? Chase the Chuck Wagon. Yep, that is That's... correct. So, Cafe Man 2D. First one to come up with a, the Atari game with a with dog. With a dog in it. Nice. So we've thought of three. Any more? Garfield? Is there a dog in... Well, Odie. Is Odie in it? Garfield game? Is there was Garfield? there a Garfield game for the 2600? <laughs> Paperboy. Paperboy was not on the 2600. <laughs> That's way too complex. All right. Well, <laughs> I think Cafe Man 2D was the... First one to jump in with yep. an idea, so so we'll yep. give it to him. Yeah, Cafe Man Two D. Uh, so you get the glass. So uh, that's that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Dog Walk is a homebrew, so that doesn't count, but it does have a dog in it. Yes. So good stuff. Excellent. Thank you for the question. Yep, no yes. Um, okay. Garfield. Oh, there's a twenty. You can just close that up. Yep. Don't no, that's fine. I, uh... Um. So. <laughs> What took the game from uh, the limited release to the unlimited release? Um, well, when and I, why was it a, a limited release and then and then expanded to a full release? What was the transition and reasoning behind all that? So the the story behind the game basically is it is a uh, a thank you for people that helped me with my uh, cancer journey and and especially helped me during my treatments and. I discovered Atari when I was recovering because I was, when I was going through my rough spots, I just wanted to watch anything. I had trouble sleeping and uh, just wanted to make time pass. 
So I watched YouTube videos, American pickers, you name it. But I discovered <laughs> yeah. some YouTube videos on Atari games. And I would just watch them over and over again. And then I decided I was going to get an Atari after growing up with one. So I watched uh -huh. videos that would show all these games. And I was like, I don't remember that game. Or I don't remember <laughs> that game. So then I was like, well, these games were newer than, you know, the, back in the day. And I think right. Swoops, I think Swoops by Thomas Yench, I think was the first one that I came across. And right. I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. People are making games. And it is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And <laughs> well, then that led me to Atari Age. I, I found Atari uh -huh. Age. And then, like, just because like I said I wanted to read or watch anything I could, I would read the reviews of these games. And that's how I discovered Nathan Strum. Um, his reviews, mm. I mean, he's a clever, smart guy. There's no doubt about that. But his reviews were always uh, fun to, to read. And uh, I was like, who is this guy? And then when I got to the point of <laughs> thinking about making a game, I was like, I got to have this guy involved in my game somehow. Uh, yeah. So Everybody does. Yeah. He's a great guy. And he does give, give very amusing reviews. Oh, yeah. It, it was a hoot. I mean, like, it, just, it made me laugh. But so I wanted to make the game in a physical form and, and obviously give it to the people that it was uh, intended for. But I wanted to make something and just give it away to, to certain people. And... Um, so I had a, you know, sign up in the forums, and I, I gave it away. And I just didn't really have any intent on doing anything more than that. Um, but mm. Al reached out to me uh, at some point. He's like, hey, do you want to put this in the store? And I was like, yeah. I kind of waffled on it first, but then I was like, sure. If people want mm. it, I, I want people to have it. So um, that's kind of what was the idea of why I was limited. And not that I was trying to hoard it. It was just... <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't intend it. I didn't make it for you know, for commercial purposes. Right. It was just a project that you wanted to do. You got it done, and it was done. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I mentioned this. I think on the, the Home Rewards stream, like when I gave this game to the people that made it for their reaction, that's where I did it. It was priceless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what was really yeah. cool was I gave my retro on seventy-seven first. Ah, nice. And they're like, oh, yeah. this is great. Like, my doctor was like, oh, this is so cool. I was like, well, you need that <laughs> so you can play this. And I was handing them the game. Oh, wow. And they were like, uh, yeah. what? You did what? So that, that was the whole <laughs> that's point. A, but, and that's smart to do to give them the Retron 77 because people can hook it up easily right. to a newer television rather than, here's an Atari 2600. What, uh, I, what, what, is, what is this plug into? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, I had my frustrations during development. This was my first game. Um, I did get to the point that every time that there was a screen roll, I learned to laugh and not get mad. <laughs> yeah, and I'd be that's, sitting, that's I'd a be good sitting practice. at the kitchen table, and I would just start laughing. My wife would say, "What's wrong?" And I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's great. So, um, was the reception? The positive reception to the game, uh, an influence in the decision to release this in an unlimited form? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I was so focused on why I was making the game. It, I got about, you know, I don't know, halfway into it, let's say, and I was like, I wonder if this is any fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because, you that, know, that is something you have to consider, yeah. Because like, <laughs> everything in the game is really based on real life. You know, the dogs. Yeah to the color yeah. of the house. That's probably not the best color, but that, that is the color of my friend's house that we, we stayed with. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, um, wonderful. that's amazing. On the dog level, or I mean, the, the hospital level, uh, I picked the color yeah. blue for the University of North Carolina. That's their, you know, their, their color. Um, the color of the machines on the, the last level, that's the color of machines at the plant I work at. So, Mm. You know, it, it was almost like a port of my life in a way. <laughs> That's right, based on real, based on a true story. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so you know, there was a lot of what can I, you know, I had all these grand ideas going into it. I'm gonna do this and do that, and then as I learned, I'll be like, okay, I can't do this and I can't do that. Oh um, <laughs> uh, yeah. But then yeah, at some point I was like, I wonder if this is any fun. And of course, I didn't know anybody on Atari Age, so I had uh, mm. like friends and family play test it. And I played a lot, uh, a lot, because I was so worried about bugs. <laughs> I bet. 
But um, yeah, I mean, like I said, if people want it. I, I don't want to hold anything back. I have no uh, qualms yeah. with uh, it being out there. Um, all of the profits that I was stand to get, I'm sending to the UNC Cancer Hospital. Um, oh wow! So that's great. Yeah, you know, and and. Go ahead. If anybody's doubting how fun it is, it is a lot of fun. It There's a lot, lot of, of um, power-ups. There's a bunch of different screens you play on. There's yep. so much packed into 4K on this game. It's it's actually unbelievable that yeah. it's only 4K. I don't know how you compressed all that down with uh, all the gameplay either, as well. You remember going back, and I think it was, I forgot who it was, talking about, uh, I think it was John, talking about, you, you know, you do something, like, all right, I got to go back and buy more code yes. to produce and uh i i don't know if i didn't really know what i'm doing now but back then i really didn't know what i was doing um but i would spend hours you know looking for something and trying it and of course some half the time it wouldn't work but you know you get to a certain point like all right this is enough no more trying to add anything <laughs> that's right so. and and uh, the 4k was that just a learning thing it's like well the 4k is the basic basics of making an atari game or was it uh, a challenge to fit it in 4k like a challenge to yourself well i would say i just wanted to start with something simpler i i kind of looked at bank switching i was like uh, i don't know if i want to try this in my first one so yeah you know, right. it, it ended yeah. up being a challenge for sure but i think it was just this would be a good starting point mm -hmm. and your next game raptor which is also mind-blowingly awesome um it, that's also 4k as well it is i believe it is yeah the one good thing about 4k is you you can't keep adding stuff right yeah you, know, you get to a certain <laughs> point it's like cannibal yes it's it's full it's all full <laughs> yeah but it it provides a big challenge to pack as much fun into 4k as, as possible and you've done it with both games and and so this is uh, a ton of fun, and I, I really appreciate the Culvert Kitty being in, <laughs> being in the, you know, I being on in the that game. Cat. I don't know, there was a couple of different versions. Uh, I really wanted that cat's tail to work well. And <laughs> I spent more time on the cat sprite than any of the other sprites. Oh, yeah, yeah it works well. The, the animation of, of the, the dogs and the cats are, are great. Um, and you usually don't get a lot of frames of animation for a 4K game here. But uh, yeah, every, everything, all the, the graphics, the sounds, it, uh, it really adds up to a fun game. Cool, thanks. So um, anything else you want to say or people you want to thank for, for this release? Well, I mean, thanks to Nathan for agreeing to do the review. You know, and he sent that to me. I was like, this is gold. This is pure gold. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I was a little disappointed that he didn't, like, rake me over the coals or something, like, <laughs> because, you know, all those reviews when I was reading them online, especially the ones he didn't maybe particularly care for, he would give him a little jab. I was hoping for a little jab, <laughs> but... Uh, I, I don't know if I could find something of this game that's that's bad or wrong no. or, or it could have been better. It's like, no, it's, it's it, it works so as well. intended and plays so well and is so much fun. So I, I, I agree with him not... I don't think I could find something to complain about in this either. Um, my family, um, I, I apologize to them. Uh, I, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I'll be sitting at you know, the dinner table, or not while we're eating dinner, but you know, somewhere here, there, and move the mouse. The uh, title song would come on and on and on, like every time I reload <laughs> it, and they got so sick yeah. of the title song. Um, yeah. In fact, they, I would, can they would just be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so I thank them. Um, of course, the people that it was intended for, um, you know, the community, the way they responded, and the way just for being there, you know, all of you guys, um, yeah. giving me an, uh, the ability to, to make something and, and Al for, you know, putting it in physical form. So, mm. um, I'm just glad I can be one little, you know, contribution to the whole community and just claim to be a part of it. So, yeah. Well, um, I'm glad you are a part of it because uh, you've made it so much better by by well, out so these better. games. We're not talking about robot war here. You know, this is dog <laughs> on. <laughs> they're all equally good because they're all fun. But you know what's um, funny is, uh, this is a Dianoid house here. 
So in my house, <laughs> playing Atari means playing Amoeba Jump, right? Yo, oh, yeah. that's a killer game. That's the kids, so like, much the kids fun. say, let's play Atari. Well, they immediately put, they take my Harmony card out and they put Amoeba Jump right in there. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. And then yeah. I recently. The physics ordered, in that game are so fun. Yeah, I ordered uh, Rubble War and I ordered Tower of Rubble. And now, now it's uh, like we're not playing Amoeba Jump, we're playing Tower of Rubble. And then <laughs> and I'm still trying to get my jaw off the floor from seeing Load Runner. I played Load Runner. Oh my god. Oh. I played Load Runner on my Macintosh Classic for hours and hours when I should have been studying. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, growing up. So I'm going to have. Dean always going to have his own little you know, like <laughs> corner in my in my game room. So Yeah, yeah. There's lots of playability on. Uh... On Load Runner, that's for sure. With oh. all those levels, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got C in thermodynamics because of Load Runner. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming oh, on, and uh, congratulations on the unlimited release of Dog on It. Yep, thank you guys. Yeah, and we'll talk to you soon. Right, see you. Bye, bye, Andrew. Let, ooh, ah, oh. Ooh, oh, let oh. me get this last one. You can play it. All right. Yeah, there Yay. you go. <laughs> <laughs> um so if you go to um john champo did he type anything for a question just in oh, case we missed uh, something let's go to some of these people see. nope yeah. go to lewis hill then i think i saw was it lewis hill had something no go to octavio someone did i know someone did might have been octavio there we go Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. That's answer is actually a really good. And you know uh, the answer to it? Do you have to look yeah, it up? No, I know it. <laughs> I think I could be corrected. You might want to look it up then. No, I, I know it. <laughs> okay, so we have so we're giving away the next uh, Atari Age glass. Yes. For this number question two. number two, uh, uh, Octavio has question. Yes. Nothing. Um, do I, do, so this is just a comment. The glasses, <laughs> uh -oh. the glasses have to be sh shipped, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's oh, also a cer gift eye. certificate and what was the last one? Oh, the sign? The sign, gift certificate, and games. So okay. we have eight total. Is it going to be difficult to ship things to certain people depending on where they are? Do we want to give people the option to switch for the gift certificate or? No, no, no. Okay. All right. I'm it's just, way too just... complicated. <laughs> Uh, all right, next class then. We won't. We won't. Uh, we won't complicate things we won't for complicate anybody. Things. Okay. Doesn't matter to me. I can ship anywhere. Oh, Atari H, thank you. Except for the UK. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> for now. No, no. That's glasses and stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a problem. Because uh, these are free things. These aren't sold items. It's so they're true. gifts, right? Oh, and, and Russia. Russia. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever had a Russian viewer. I. We don't know if we have. We don't know. Have Nobody's it. spoken up. Yeah. 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 Um, you can always redeem. There you go. You For can sure, trade right. it in. There you go. I don't know. Yeah. It's up to Al. We'll figure it out. Um, we'll so the question out. from Octavio is... Yes. How is more for programmers, yeah. but uh, anybody can answer it. Mm -hmm. How many bytes can you address in zero page? Hmm. So the first person to answer that. Yeah, I know I mean, there's bites. always a slight delay bites, bites, before bites. it jumps. And Mike Soul gets it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> zero. Zero. A zero and zero. A quarter, a quarter of a byte. <laughs> a quarter of a byte. Two bits. Yes. Mike Soul jumped in. 256? Yeah. As many as I want, <laughs> Phaser Cat Games says. So Mike Soul wins as far as I am uh, sure, because it's um, the first page, and it goes from zero to 255 um, addressability. Um, because it's very fast to address. Okay. Because you only need one um, byte to address it. Are you sure you can address the very first byte, though? Byte zero? Uh, I don't know. I hope... I don't know. Zero, two, two, fifty-five? <laughs> we need somebody to step in then. <laughs> somebody's, uh... Well, yeah. Somebody's questioning it. Can you address the zero? I, uh, I don't know. That's a funny face, though. Well, I... Yeah, everybody's saying 256. <laughs> Except Kathy Man 2D. And, and Kathy Man 2D. Byte 2D. zeros equals V sync. Now we're not specifying a 2600. Oh, just zero page in just general. Just zero page in general. So, so 256 would be correct for that? Yeah. Yeah. So this is just oh, in general. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say 2600. Yeah. Yeah. 
zero X F F. There you go. Two fifty six. Al confirms it. Probably. Yes, but hardware might respond in a different way depending on the system. Yes. Yeah. No, Al. Zero times one hundred. <laughs> Thrust twenty six wins that one. <laughs> Um, so Mike Soul gets the glass. Congratulations yes, to Mike, Mike Soul. Uh, I hope somebody's keeping track of this. I should write these down. Well, myself. yeah. Actually, it's Al. Al has to write these down. <laughs> um, if you guys can uh, message, can you message each other on uh, Twitch? You can whisper. You can... you can whisper to each other, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. Al, are you good to contact these people? Hey, everybody, yeah, it's good. Um, just give give me a I thumbs can up DML and yes. I can DML on AA. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cafe Man 2D, Mike Soul. These are That's known. What we got so far. Known, too easy of a question. Some of them are going to be easy. Some of them are going to be hard. Yeah. yeah. We'll find something hard. Um, so the next person and game, we're going to be talking to David. Oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. I'm not skipping ahead. We're going to be talking to Marco Johannes. And I think just Marco Johannes. Uh, about PitCat. And PitCat was nominated for three Atari Homebrew Awards. Best port, best graphics, and best music and sound. Well, uh, Difed's in there too, so oh, I is don't he? know. Yes, oh, perfect. We can get both of them. So if you can go to Difed and add him in. Seems we're probably uh, requesting. Difed too. Excellent. Steps says, great stream so far, folks. Thanks. And by the way, do it, did the cat get treats? Yeah, I threw some on the floor. Yeah, we he's, had to he's because he was getting a little crazy. kind of calm right now. He yeah. does have feeding time at four, so we will have to take a short break. Take a short break well, at four. Well, will. yeah. She'll take a short break. Uh, who are we connecting to? Because there's Mar at? Marco and Difed. Are both did you add in Difed? Yes, he's accepted now. Okay, so you'll have to add both. So you start a start one with one, and then go back to chat, and then you add another one in. So if you can do that right now, so I just take go video, video, and then go like here. Uh, yeah, there you go. And then go to the other person. Difed, it's green. Second one down, 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 down there. there. Oh. oh. And go to video as well. It's this no create a new group i don't know video I, wouldn't try that it. be like two people try it i trust this no oh, no no that doesn't separate. work okay you have to create a group okay <laughs> oh wait oh is it working said it go to that one over beside him what's that there there oh we did it wrong okay, okay. sorry i said i'm gonna just hang up on you and then add you to... No, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay. I know what I'm doing. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Pronounce my name right. Okay. Oh, yeah. What? How do you say it again? Daffod. Was it Daffod? Daffod? Daffod Hitchings? Oh, my goodness. Yamtez. Yamtez? Jamtex. Marco J. Um, so let's get the pit cat out. Meow, meow, meow. Oh, it's got some kanji on it, on the side. Oh, I think it's almost there. Oh, we almost got two people. Just <laughs> thinking about it. And oh, yeah, okay. we did it. Okay, <laughs> let's switch over. Oh, it's a bit funky. Um, if you could take that into a window it's it's not full screen. But. Reduce it in a bit. The both both things. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. So we can like fit this. them. Oh, that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. There. Now now on the left, bring that one in. We have to adjust because there's two people in this one. That, there we that's go. That's not so bad there. They're smaller, but it'll work. It'll work. There we go. Hello. We got you both. Hello, Yay. Marco and Dyson. Oh. Oh, and they, they've got dog on it with they've them. They've got dog Yay. on it. Excellent. <laughs> so we have PitCat with us. So congratulations on the release of PitCat. Let's open it up. Um, now, if you guys could explain, probably once again, because I think we did talked about it last time, mm -hmm. That yeah. this is a... You have to order this in a kind of a different way. So if you could explain how to how to obtain 
everything that's inside of this. <laughs> Here. Well, basically, um, the game itself is uh, offered for free, so you have to buy the game from um, Atari Age um, via their make, it, make a cartridge service, um, but you can then buy the box and the manual separately if you want that. Right, and then you will have the complete game all together. Yes, you will. So here is the uh, packaging and the cartridge and the instructions. Lovely. And we have uh, some... Is is that Korean or Japanese? Japanese. 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 Okay, because I saw that little uh, round dot and I'm like, oh, is, uh oh, is that Korean? <laughs> um, so what, what does that say? Pit Cat in uh, Japanese? <laughs> Pikachu, yeah. Pikachu, oh. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so, tell us uh, a little bit about putting together the packaging and the release of uh, the game, and who did the uh, artwork and putting it all together. Um, well, the artwork was done by an artist called. Uh, Channel uh, DCA, um, who was a, an artist um, from uh, the Philippines, um, and basically I basically decided to go for a retro uh, Atari style box with that with the artwork and the um, other art we did um, to make it a nice uh, little uh, box. And um, the the art art uh, style is very distinct. What was the uh, influence on that? Well, it's basically because the, the game is a Japanese game, uh, so we decided to make it look as uh, look at, make it look Japanese as possible. Uh, so we decided <laughs> to go for a sort of uh, a manga style uh, artwork um, for it. So we decided to, yeah, to uh, make, sort of a, have a nod to the origins of the game. Which uh, it was released on the Game Boy, and it ha that also had a very sort of cute uh, manga style. There it is. <laughs> so like there it is. There's there's the oh, uh, that, uh, the yeah. game that influenced this one. Yeah. So you took the the pit from that game and and uh, turned them into cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the the layout of the levels um, were they. Uh, I think I talked with you about this last time. They were translated over from the original game. Yes. Oh yeah, they were uh, decoded, and and you did a very uh, you did a de decompiling of it uh, and analyzing of the original source code or not code, but you uh, you look through the assembly or something like that. Maybe you can reiterate that again. Yeah, the levels were dumped from a Game Boy emulator. So once the level was loaded, just dumped um, a certain memory address into a text file and then compiled them into a format, a compressed format for the Atari. And, uh, and we've got some stats <laughs> that don't come into play in the game, but they're a lot of fun here. <laughs> you've got Cat Girl. And oh, I love their address, as if you could visit them at seven C zero H. That's a, that's hilarious. Um, favorite stages twenty one and fifty one. <laughs> yeah, the stats basically in the original Game Boy game, the, the, the actual manual itself had their stats. Uh, we translated mm. oh. them, but we also added some extra. So the addresses, for example, are where the. Um, where, where, is where the data of the, the um, sprites exist. For example, oh. uh, the levels basically are, are basically our favourite levels of the game. <laughs> so, very, very clever. Like, a, a nice, nice little bonus there. Oh, and bonus sketches. So these are um, oh, the, some early sketches of the cover art and uh, some of the early sketches of some of the other things in the manual. There's, yep. there's that one. Right there. Very nice. Very nice. So, yeah, and some unused it. ones. Yeah, because you get the PDF manual when you download the game, but the actual, those bits of artwork are exclusive if you buy the manual itself to give it to, uh, to sort of give you a reason to actually buy the manual. <laughs> so,
So this is your first 2600 release, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? That's correct. And the uh, it's hard to tell that it's your first 2600 release, actually. <laughs> uh, it employs some incredible programming to get what you have on the screen displaying. And, and we're going to pop it in right now so people can actually see what's going on in this game because it's it's astounding from the menus to the level design to um to everything the transitions between screens mm -hmm. uh it's it's actually astounding uh how how good it is so what is your uh background in in uh programming you, you must have this must not be your first programming uh uh, game I'm probably like most programming people grew game. up with like you basic and doing basic programming. Um, I would actually relate to um, Octavio on before. He said he had a child and suddenly had this urge to do something with his life. I can relate to that a lot. I had my first son <laughs> and um, all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to be changing nappies and looking after kids in my life? I've got to do something with my life. So I had that inspiration <laughs> too to make a game. And, and yeah, so, oh, very nice. Pixely Aww. Lego. That's a uh, Lego Pit Kit Kat. Oh, that's adorable. So I'm not getting any sound. I was just really impressed with the homebrew sound. scene um, for Atari 2600. It's very lively. I looked on the Atari Age forums and I'm like, wow, I want to get on this, make some games on this platform. This is, this is lively. Yeah, very di a very uh, active homebrew scene for the 2600. That's for sure. I, I think one of the biggest, if not the biggest, I, I, I don't know much about the NES or uh, I know that one's pretty decent, um, but I, I, I would guess to say the 2600 is one of the biggest ones. I don't know why we're not getting any sound. Oh, this is just, oh, there we go. You know what? I have... Some switches flipped. Some switches flipped, yeah. Yeah, there we go. So, um, tell us a little bit about how you can get so many graphics on the screen all at once. Uh, tiled graphics. What were some of the challenges getting that done? Uh, lots of RAM, so two kilobytes of RAM um, using self-modifying code in, in RAM. Um, definitely not a, not a 4K game this, to make it this complex. I have a lot of respect for 4K riders. That's an awesome challenge. Uh, just for this particular game with its tiles and uh, decompressing of graphics into RAM, it, it really needs a lot of RAM. So, get RAM. Right. Right. <laughs> RAM. RAM's a solution. RAM's a solution. <laughs> Very flexible RAM. Yeah. Um, oh, we just lost audio to our headsets. Okay, hold on one second. <laughs> we'll have to put in our backup while these charge. So that lasted three hours on the dot. Not bad. Not bad. So we can't hear you right now, so yeah, just hold. Yeah, just you give us a playing, quick though. second. <laughs> the other ones will definitely charge up in three hours while we use these. I hope so. That's good. We have two of them. Oh, Shout out River, to Raid. River Raid. This is my first game I ever got. So good. Oh, I think it might work. Can you guys say something? Hello, testing, one, two, three. Perfect. Yay, we're back in business. <laughs> Automatically connected. Well, you can't get better than that. Excellent. Um, so why did you choose this game as your first 2600 game? Uh, was it the love for the original uh, game that had influenced this because this seems like a very ambitious game to start with. I, I really, really love this game. I've tried to make versions of this in basic, versions of it in Windows. Um, I, it's one of my very favorite games. It makes you really think, but you're not under pressure to, to get it done in a time limit, so you can really think through it. I like that. Button. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, we haven't played this in a while. It has a rewind feature as well. Yes. There was some spare RAM, 256 bytes of spare RAM. So use that for a, a <laughs> cyclic buffer that could uh, record the moves you've done and then be able to go back 
up to yeah to the limit. Every rice over itself after a while, so um, yeah, you can go back quite a few steps. It really depends on the complexity of the move, but yes, that was added. Yeah, so if you make a, a recent mistake, then you can rewind. But if you make a really big mistake, you, you can reset the level. Yeah, right? better to restart the level, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like, like you said, there's no pressure. So um, it's a great puzzler. It's not, it is no pressure to, oh God, the, the things are coming after me right now. You got to make a move. Yeah. And, and, then you become, uh, and how many? And when you become ahead, um, an expert at the levels and you know them backwards, there is a mode to do a speed <laughs> run. So if you know the solution, then you can challenge yourself to make it in a certain time limit. Uh, yes, there's a time, uh, time limit there. And, and uh, you saying knowing them backwards... Um, there's also the whole game backwards too, right? Yeah, mirror mode. It uh, just arranges all the tiles uh, across. So it's exactly the same solution, but you just have to think inverse to what you did before. It, it's um, what's the word? It's very easy to to make a mistake, even if you think you know the levels. When it's mirrored, it's like whoa, it really messes up the mind. <laughs> yeah, it, it even mirroring it, it 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 seems like a whole new game at that mm. point. And I you're like, that. okay, uh, how did I do this again? Oh, yeah, I have to do this, but but the other way around. Yeah, yeah, that was Stop Ed's idea. <laughs> Very smart, and you know, really, it's not that much more. I'm guessing to to display it backwards. It's just you know loading things in the other way around. That's yeah. it. So, did you guys come up with a uh, a trivia question uh, um, for giving actually, away something? I did actually. Um, how Excellent. many? Le- should I say it out here? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you're going to say. What, but, you, what uh, do you want to give away? Oh, it, it's the round Atari Age Sign? signs. Yeah, so that'll be the first of two. So okay. um, as long as you know the answer and you can judge as well, I may not know the answer. Okay. How many levels are there on the Pit Cat level select screen? Ah, there you go. That might limit the uh, the answer. <laughs> but uh, good question. Uh, Dan says fourteen. Uh, that's probably not enough. Uh, Vitoko says one hundred and one. 100 Vitoko. Hey, don't just type in numbers. <laughs> uh, Spice where it says the uh, signs are awesome. I have one. Uh, jealousy. I want one. I'm going to put it up somewhere around here. <laughs> Keep guessing, people. Vitoko says 31 in the absence of anybody else guessing. Okay, people just start guessing. Yes. Start guessing. <laughs> Even if you don't know it, it's the first to guess it. Don't spam, though. Uh, Dan says 58 Al can't answer the question Oh, how many levels are there in the Pit Cat menu selection screen? Is that the question? Yeah Okay So hopefully uh, Steps Steps says give us a clue It's a number between (laughs) zero and a million (laughs) Uh, Vitoko Oh, Spartan581 says 50 Vitoko says 99. There we go. 99. Vitoko guessed it on his fourth guess. (laughs) So, Vitoko, congratulations. You won one of the Atari Age tin signs. So, uh, Al, if you can record that down. Oh, Al says, I need to go fire up a cart. (laughs) So, congratulations, Vitoko. Persistence pays off. Yeah, yeah, just keep typing numbers in. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, since this was your uh, first boxed Atari 2600 game, was there any challenges that you weren't expecting that you had to overcome uh, in terms of either the, the cartridge or the box art or the manual or anything? Was there any troubles that you ran into or was it pretty smooth sailing? Um, I mean, it's the first time I actually did, uh, did a, uh, a box, um, although um, Albert basically did tell me that things like the screen had to be 
a little bit brighter so you could actually sharpen and print better. Um, some of the text had to be slightly changed, but apart from that, yeah, it's uh, pretty very straightforward. So I'm uh, looking forward to doing uh, the, the boxing and the next game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, excellent. And and um, tell us a bit about your next game, <laughs> if you can. <laughs> No, no response. <laughs> just one. Oh, he's just preparing something. <laughs> uh, so, we're working on a game. We're working on an RPG game. That's Ooh. our next Excellent. game we're working on. Excellent. So, looking forward to that. Um, I'm, I'm oh. sure it's just as ambitious as this one. Yeah. Yep. For the 2600. <laughs> yeah, for the 2600. Excellent. Um, so, anybody you'd like to uh, uh, thank or anything else you'd like to say before I let you go? A uh, couple more shout outs. Um, <laughs> to Pitfall, Pitfall 2, 2, to David Crane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this game showed that you can put all sorts of hardware in cartridges and then achieve amazing results. So, that's inspired a new generation of programmers. So, this is awesome. Um, I showed this up before, but uh, this is my first game I've ever played, River Raid, and uh, I was just blown away by it. And yeah, well done to the author, Carol Shaw, for making this game awesome. Excellent game. Uh, shout out to my family for putting up with me late at night doing coding. And um, the <laughs> artist, Sharon Modessa, who did this, she's un unspoken, she's, she's not on here today, but um, she did some amazing work with the art. Um, and it's in the manual, David for doing all the testing of the game and for the putting the manual together, and uh, for doing some real amazing QA on the game. Yeah, and and thanks to Al for um, being able to publish this game. I mean, it's a, a fan remake that's like an un unauthorized port. This is like the spirit we're, we're doing it. In. Thanks for making the. Um, oh, David's got something to show. Like, I don't know if you can see yeah. it. Put it there. You go. Yeah, that's Lord of Biscay. Lord of Biscay. That's there some uh, hand-drawn artwork there. <laughs> oh, wow. Beautiful, beautiful. Is that the name of the new game? Is that's that what's going on? Lord of Biscay, game. yeah. Oh, yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, same old-school style as Pit Cat. Nice. Yep. Excellent. And this one, you'll be able to release it as one together in a box, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Perfect. That's excellent. Well, thank you guys for uh, both coming on, and congratulations on the release of Pit Cat. And really looking forward to your new game. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Same with Tanya. You bet. Always talk to you soon. Great to be on the show. Thank you. Always fun. Oh, to, it's, to it's be always able to great to have you on. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. It's so much. It's such a cute game. It is so great. Yeah. Okay. Bye guys. See you guys. Excellent. Yeah. You guys uh, definitely should be looking forward to their next game. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, so. Uh, how are you doing? How, good. How, how, oh, I'm how fine. are we doing? Are, oh, well, do you I'm need fine. a break or anything? Or? Oh, no, 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 no. I can go forever. You can... <laughs> Pure adrenaline. <laughs> Um, we didn't get a, a question from John Shampoo, but I don't know if he's still around. Mm. So we may have to double up on some questions. Well, we have two um, gift certificates to give away. That was. But oh, we still have a tin around uh, well, well, sign. It was just one sign, wasn't no, it? No, two signs. Oh, two signs. Two of everything. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the next person up, how far are we behind? Uh, half an hour now. Slowly getting getting behind you know more it's more. like waiting <laughs> waiting for the dentist if you make your appointment too late in oh. the day you're like an hour late you know <laughs> right. it's, it just keeps that pushing is true forward. yeah any dentist or doctor's oh, appointment if yeah. you've experienced that then uh yeah you know how it is mm -hmm. yeah i just don't want to rush people or no, cut them if off they have and something like, to say i mean give people the space to i think say we'll it. catch up when yeah. we uh go to non-live ones oh when you're reading yeah yeah, yeah there are a few because i can out, control so. the speed of those and then we'll catch and up. he'll just he'll just speak really fast that's yeah. right yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh thank you everybody for watching and tuning in so yeah. far it's been a lot of fun i hear we uh, have a lot of people a lot of viewers someone was saying we had 60 people watching oh, at one point great. so it's always nice to see a lot of and people tuning in people have made four clips 
Four, uh, yeah, I've been watching funny. some of those clips. Yeah. And you've been very naughty people. Yeah. Taking our stuff out of context. <laughs> But they've been amusing. Okay. It's really funny. <laughs> um, they, they like clip it down to something. It's like, what are they talking about? <laughs> That's so silly. Um, yeah. Oh, I got here late. Had plans with my folks. Hey, Spicewear. Hey, welcome. Okay, so the next uh, person and game we're going to be talking about yeah. uh, is uh, Mr. Yo-Yo, which is a very oh, fun game. Very yes. challenging. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Um, uh, with David Marley, Dave okay. M on the forums, right. and uh, I see. What is, that? what is this? I think I got one. Oh, I, I'll have to give clues. Okay, don't, don't read it out. Don't read it out. No, fully. no, no. Okay. No, no. But I'm he's not, got a question. I'm not, okay. I'm not saying because he put the answer in there. Not okay. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to David uh, Marley now, if you can uh, sure. bring him up on the screen. There. This is going so much smoother well, because you're using things. you're using one video service, and the problem was we were trying oh to make God. all of them it's work, and it was it was a bit. It of was mess. very difficult. Yeah. Yep. Yep. This is much better. Just using straight up Skype the whole time. Excellent. Don't have to jump back and forth and different screen orientations. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got Yay. him. There we go. Hey, David, how are you doing? Hello. How are you? Very good. Good. Sorry for the the delay, but I, I don't know. By now, it it might be expected that we yeah. we kind of get slower and slower yeah. as time when progresses. You sent me my time slot. I kind of figured uh, probably an hour <laughs> after <laughs> that. And, <laughs> Hey, we, we didn't do as bad as you thought, uh, yeah. so that's a win. Yeah. Go full screen. Uh, yeah. So thanks for joining us. I think yeah. this is your first time on on our show. Yes, it is. And yes. Yeah, you oh, know, that's, that's on, wonderful. This is my first time. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for joining. Yeah, yeah. thank you for joining. Thank and you. congratulations on uh, the release of Mr. Yo-Yo. Oh. Um, it looks wonderful. The artwork is, uh, is beautiful and cartoonish. And uh, very reminiscent, the yo-yo of early cartoons of like um, Looney Tunes or uh, Merry Melodies, yes. that kind of stuff. Yes, a fellow by the name of uh, John Calcano did the artwork for that. He did a fabulous job. And he even did a little bit of, uh, of animation of the various characters you see there and i hope al uh can put that up uh with with the listing on the atari age store so people can see that oh it's great it's just fantastic yeah you're the game is is very fun very challenging mm -hmm. i find i think a lot of people are better than me at it i find <laughs> it really really challenging but really dynamic and i was watching a review of your game the other day mm -hmm. i don't know if you caught it I think it was in a compilation of um, 30 Best yeah. Homebrew yeah, Part 2. That. Yes. And he pointed out that, I don't know if I pointed that out, is that you reverse the controls in the game mm -hmm. where you move with the button and shoot with the joystick. Right. And I don't know if I pointed that out, but it's really or like you a good observation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, think and I don't know how many games game do that. On. Okay, <laughs> but it, it really goes against convention, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, that it's very unexpected that you would m move with the button, but it is a a, a one uh, one dimensional game of movement. It's yes. straight up and down, as as a you know throwing a yo yo down mm -hmm. to the ground. Um, and uh, this is your first game as well. Yeah, it's my first original game. I did a number of Richard. hacks like 20-some years ago. Uh, right. I, I did the Fat Albert hack and uh, a couple right. others. Um, but I tried numerous times in the 20 years since to start working on a game, and it always just, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. But finally, I, I had some time set aside. <laughs> Dang, damn it. I've had this game in the back of my head for 40 years. I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna get it done and oh wow that's that's great to doing it and and i think my my point sticks as well with homebrew and that i think first time programmers really bring a lot of innovation 
to to games and it, and it really shines through with yours with like we said the moving with the button and shooting with the joystick mm -hmm. it's just it's just crazy like marco yana says it's a unique game fun and challenging yeah. um so yeah really colorful great cover artwork uh, same back as last time. Atari Age welcomes your comments. <laughs> Make sure you email Al. <laughs> this is oh, my first thank time you for following. This. I haven't. Uh, uh, oh, I oh, there you go. I'll so go slowly. I, I, I proofed yeah. a version of it, but it, it's been a while since I looked at the proof. So um, there we go. This is fantastic. Ooh, look at that. Jamtex is uh, posting some pictures. Oh, pff. no, he's not. <laughs> he's trolling <laughs> i thought he was That's posting a picture of his new their new game uh so let's oh m more mr yo-yo waving hi telling you about the background of the game and there's all the characters oh my god some of these characters make me shake my fist yeah <laughs> yeah they no, are no, you just especially snipper one yeah, yeah, the bouncy one. Wow, that yeah, that one gets that me. That one gets you too. Because you have to be really quick and precise to yeah. to to get rid of those. They stay on the screen. Yeah. And the snippers too. Watch out the for them. The snippers are dangerous. Yeah. yeah. And some of the bonuses and mm -hmm. power ups and uh, bonus gems. Oh, I love the screenshot there. He's upside down. <laughs> yeah, when I when I put the screenshots together for for the manual, is he always looks awkward at an angle. Uh, ah. so, and I wanted to do something to show that he rotated, so I had to mix in a screen chart to where he's upside down. That's smart, yeah. Just so you can show that he's not always just going not, straight up yes, and down. Yes. Yeah, there's there's where he's upright. Oh, very nice. And uh, the recommended controller. Yeah. Of Maybe course. that's what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> not using the CX40. <laughs> there we go. And there's the scoring. Oh. <laughs> a very accu accusatory face he's got going on there yeah. very nice <laughs> i still have my yo-yos from when i was a kid yeah you do yeah you do. <laughs> I, I know a couple tricks so do you have a background with yo-yos is oh, this is this <laughs> like an association <laughs> no. to them no no whatsoever i'm horrible with them i can throw them at people and hit them in the head pretty accurately <laughs> but that's about <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. i was thinking oh yo-yos yeah. yeah, that's, maybe that's you, you know, a championship yo-yoer yeah oh. <laughs> not any stretch of the imagination I, i'm i'm horrible with them it, it the yo -yo <laughs> thing just came from you know the idea the, the idea of reversing the controls came first doing something where ah. you could move with the button and that limits yourself to basically just two directional movement and a yo-yo was the first thing that popped into my head and then I built the game yep. around that. Get that to, there we go. There we go. There's the credits. So the artwork by John Calciano, Atari Boy 2600. Manual box label layouts by G. Tony Morse. So maybe you can talk a bit about uh, those two and uh, your association with them. Well, I, I've basically, I really haven't had much of an association with them. Uh, Al uh, was my contact. <laughs> Don't know him. <laughs> uh, Al set me up with those two, and Al kind of mm. acted as the middleman. I, I sent him uh, the text for the manual, the uh, screenshots of anything he needed, and uh, sometime later he came back to me with sketches and proofs and whatnot, and I just gave my input. So really, um, you know, my big thanks to John and, and Tony. They, I, I've never met them, never talked to them, but they did a absolutely outstanding job they did it it looks absolutely fantastic and uh, oh and we didn't show this i don't know if you showed the sides of it but probably not oh there you go um but there's the uh scissors on one side of the manual and uh the bat on the back so it's got all the enemies all placed all over mm. the uh the the box artwork it looks it looks fabulous. You got the color black and white switch on. Switch it over to color. Oh, there it oh, is. Oh, right now. There we go. There we go. It's freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to get my Mr. Yo-Yo legs. 
Yeah, you know, gotta make sure I switch it back from other games that make use of the difficulty yeah. switches. So how good are you at, at your own game? That's that's a question I, I don't often ask developers because some, some of them say, oh, I'm not that great, I, I can play it okay. Um, some are like experts at it. I, I think I got a little too good at it, just testing it over, <laughs> over and over. Because I'd watch your, your streams and watch you play it and see you get frustrated. <laughs> And I'm like, Ugh. oh gosh, I'm so much, my scores are so much higher than theirs. Oh, <laughs> uh, did I make this way too hard? And uh, um, it was kind of difficult because it, it's, I tried to get as much feedback as I could through the forums. Uh, but every time I'd show it to someone, you know, live, they, they die yeah. within the first few seconds. So. <laughs> I think it's the I think it's the unusual control yeah. scheme that people yeah. just aren't used to and it you don't you don't actively position the yo-yo. You tell the yo-yo what to do. You tell them to go up or you tell them to go down. And the yo-yo only stops at the top and the bottom. So right. that's something people have to wrap their head around when I think when they when they play the game. And because the control scheme is so unusual, they're like, ah, oh, they freak out, right? And yeah, um, and I think that's a, a challenge for developers. Like you said, you're really good at it, and then you hand it off to somebody, and you go, here's my game, and you're like, oh god, <laughs> I made it too hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's it is a tough thing to get used to, but with practice, you get better at it. I mean, we're all used to games yeah. where you can control. Your, your ship or whatever is shooting at a moving target. Well, here, you've got a moving ship shooting at a moving target. It's, uh, <laughs> That's right. Constantly moving. Yeah, like the yeah. yo-yo is. If you is, want there's... that yo-yo to stay in one place, you gotta, you know, hit that button, hammer that on the bob button. up and down, which is not the safest thing to do in the middle of that place. Yeah, it's hard. Have you? <laughs> I've just thought of this. Have you played this game with a turbo button? And does that work? by having a separate turbo button to hold the yo-yo in position. I have not tried that. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know how that would work. That'd, that'd be interesting to see. Yeah, because some, some joysticks, you can set the speed mm -hmm. of the turbo button, and I bet you could dial it in so that uh, the settable turbo button would hold him in place. I don't know how advantage, advantageous that would be in the game, Maybe not at all, especially not when you get up to the scissor level, because you have to get the hell out of the way. <laughs> um, so it sounded like this process was fairly hands off for you getting the um, uh, physical product done. Yeah. So you was it like you you made the game and said, hey, Al, I've got a game. Do you have some you have some people who know how to do artwork and stuff? And you just said, here's my game. That's pretty much it. Um, that's got a word for word. Yeah, I, I, just, I contacted Al, and uh, he said, if I know someone that can do art work, we can go that way. If not, he knows people. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, he set the, the whole thing up, and after that, it was pretty much whenever Al emailed me with questions or requests for some content of some sort, I just took care of that, that end of it. That, that was it. So it was really quite easy on my end and a uh, big thanks to Al of course for taking care of all that and I, I'm guessing you did write the manual though. yes yes I did yeah and that's and that's that's a normal thing because who knows the game better than yourself right. obviously and um, so was there a back and forth with the manual I'm, I'm guessing Al gave some layout suggestions or corrections of mm, not too much I I you know, you, yeah. there were a couple minor corrections I had to make on on spelling or whatnot, but really, yeah. pretty much the the first draft I, I sent to him was pretty dang thorough, and it's a pretty <laughs> thick manual. I, I when when I get to typing yeah. like that, uh, I know I have a tendency to <laughs> over-explain things, and I think that's what I did a bit. But uh, the manual is pretty <laughs> much what the first draft was, with a couple minor corrections here and there. And, and speaking of the thick manual, was there any limitations on how many pages that Al said, oh, keep it under whatever? Because I've seen some, some manuals that are just a leaflet, like you open it and there's yeah. no pages. 
except for, uh, you know, that's the manual. And some of them are like thick, thick, thick. No, no limit. Uh, I know that manual runs 20 pages, which is a lot for a simple game. But there's a <laughs> lot of little hidden features in this game. And I wanted to make sure I uh, explained everything that was going on because I know it's a, um, a difficult game. So I wanted to give the player as much uh, of an advantage as I possibly could and give hints and tips right. and tricks and tell them all the little secrets I programmed in there and what they can do throughout the game. Yeah, good, good. Um, so I think you typed that you did have a question yes. for our uh, giveaway for our second Atari Age medal sign. Yes, so, um, I, I do. Uh, before I get to it. that, though, I still have two more people I want to yeah. thank. Uh, first oh, of sure, all, sure. Yeah. Um, Dennis Debro, uh, wonderful programmer. He basically built the kernel for the game. Uh, ah. my, the original version, the one you first had on your show way, way, way back when, suffered from a lot of flicker and being a new programmer for the Atari, really didn't know right. how to do it. So he agreed to help out. He wound up just building the kernel. Uh, okay. uh, so did a great job. He did a lot of work on it, put up with a lot of... He had a tremendous amount of patience with me, let me put it that way. So he, he did a fantastic job. And then I also oh, yeah. want to thank my fiance, uh, BJ, uh, BJ Myers. She did the music you hear during the intermission. That's great. Uh, yeah. She did a great job on that, and she's sitting right over there. Hi, honey. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So she did a fantastic job, and... Um, uh, she's going to be working with me uh, for music for my next game whenever I get around to that. Uh, that's, that's a <laughs> slow, slow work in progress, but that's another conversation. Another 20 years? Time. Hopefully not. <laughs> no, I'm trying to wrap it up in the next five, six months, but finding time to work out oh, is very scarce yeah, right now. Excellent. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Trivia question. So this is something no one's going to know an answer to, but I'm going to give clues. So <laughs> oh, good, good, guess good. a game. And I said, to ah. so 20 something years ago when I did those uh, hacks, I also transcribed an instruction manual for Atari H. So he's got the, the whole archive up there with the instruction manuals. I transcribed one. I have the manual right there. Uh, so the question <laughs> is, what game is it? So obviously no one's going to know that. No. Really know it. <laughs> so uh, it's a third party game. It's not Activision, not a Magic, but the first letter of the game's name is same as the first letter of the company that published it. Okay. You control an object up top, and you shoot objects down below. Okay. That's, uh, that's pretty decent hints. Those, that's pretty decent. decent hints to get you started. Because there's only so many publishers, so that helps. So you probably want to start with the publishers and then think about what games they put out. Um, so it's not Atari that put out this game. Not Atari. It's a third party. Third party. Not yeah. a not a Magic. Not a, not Activision. Uh, Ground Trooper comes in with Polaris. It's not Polaris. Uh, uh, Who put out Polaris? A different publisher. And like I said, the okay. oh, game's there. name is the same as the first letter of the publisher. Yeah, so that narrows it down. Threshold from Ground Trooper. Ground Trooper's the only one with guesses here. It looks like. <laughs> well, it's 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 a kind of a, tr a tricky one, but uh, right. I bet there's a list a list of games and list of publishers out there that people can go through. Cafe Man uh, 2D says, uh, well, he's not giving an answer, but he's saying, well, I don't know if this helps at all. CBS or Apollo Games. Okay, I, so I, I don't know if you want not, to answer I, that. I, I might as well. We'll move it along. Not CBS. Yeah. Not Apollo. <laughs> not a Magic. Um, yeah. Polybius. No, it's not Polybius. <laughs> Never came out for the 2600. I don't think. Did anybody name a homebrew Polybius for the 20? I don't think I've ran across that. Well, Al helping out with all the... All the oh, there you go. Yeah. Command Raid from uh, Command Raid. Thomas Command Hedge. Commando Raid. Command Raid. Uh, Spy Hunter. Who put out Spy Hunter? Damn it. I don't know the companies very well. I think Spy Hunter was Sega? Yes. Yes, that's right. In which case we're getting... I can see the cartridge. We're getting warm. Mm. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, well, there's a big hint. Atari H says, Sega! Well, there's the hint. So that really narrows it down. Really, really, really. Uh, Bitcorp, Command, Vid, Cosmic Swarm. I mean, that fits the question. There it is. There it is. But now there's the big, big hint on the screen, as you can, <laughs> you can see right there. Now, come on. Come on, people. You can do it. <laughs> there's only so many Sega games. Star Trek. Not Star Trek. Good guess. Subscan. Good guess. Subscan. Subscan. We've got a winner. It's Thomas Yench. There it is. There's the poster. Congratulations, Thrust 26. Subscan. Subscan. Certainly not my favorite so. game, but it's the only thing I can put on such short notice. <laughs> it works. It works. It's a good question. It got people guessing, yeah. and it didn't take super it long and not to the super Atari short. Site looking at lists. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So congratulations, Thomas Yanch. You get a, an Atari Age metal sign, making me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I will get one of those. I swear. Um, anything you want to uh, add or talk about uh, for your game? Um, oh. I don't. I don't know if there's anything really I want to add. Uh, I think we covered a lot of it. I thanked everyone I wanted to thank. Um, yeah. I think the only thing we didn't discuss, there are two, excuse me, there are two two-player modes. You can select the level. Uh, yeah. so oh, it's, yeah, it's got there. a little bit of variation to it. You can do, yeah, two-player alternating or uh, one player controls the yo-yo, the other That's controls right. the firing. Um, yeah. I haven't had a chance to actually test that one out myself, but... Uh, I've heard it works. I think beautiful. we did play it once. You, yeah, you, you you played it briefly. I think we did on the yeah. show yeah. because yeah. that does that can, that can help because one person can mm -hmm. pretty much be in defensive mode, moving out of the way of things. Yeah, and the other person can concentrate on. Oh, there's a. I'll shoot Shot. there, left, right, yeah. left, right. So that's a good that good co-op yeah. mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, I was looking at putting in extra extra modes, but it sort of ran out of room. Didn't want to go beyond the 8K. Because uh, then <laughs> yeah. it would just take forever to to get to a final product. You just keep expanding, keep cramming stuff in there. Um, that makes so sense. That's where it is. Um, maybe somewhere down the line, I release a sequel if it does well. Uh, <laughs> Mister Yo Yo Two: The Revenge. Yeah, yeah I was thinking <laughs> yes. of doing one where after you complete the cave, he goes up top, and rather than just roll off the screen, I can have the whole thing scroll, and he can have a little platform adventure up top above the cave oh, oh fun so. yeah oh maybe you can use his uh string as a grappling hook or something oh, yeah there you, go. you read my mind that's exactly the plan so uh, yeah <laughs> love a good platformer yeah. perfect <laughs> so maybe somewhere down the line i'm working on i got some other ideas i'm going to do first but maybe a uh, fifth or tenth anniversary edition or like that <laughs> Well, thank you for coming on, David. Uh, beautiful box, uh, fun game. It so provides fun. lots of uh, challenge and fun. Yeah, and uh, it's a challenging game, which it, which keeps you pushing to keep playing. Because you know, you know it's one, of, it's one of those games where you think, oh, I can do better. I can do better. I can <laughs> definitely do better <laughs> next time. One so more, one keep, more go. One keeps more you coming go. back. Yeah, yeah, didn't want to make it yeah. easy. So uh, glad, glad you enjoyed. <laughs> thank you so much for having me on and having the game on yeah. uh, your show. Uh, all the times you did. It's been absolutely uh, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank well, you, David. Thank you for making uh, it. Talk to you soon and yep. see you on the forums. Yep. I'll see you in Portland. Oh, yeah. yes, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. See you there. Right. See you there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Lots of fun. Can't wait for Portland. You should see the list of people that are coming. It's Everyone's gonna be a going. It's a fun time. <laughs> we should have a meetup, go we out for dinner. Yeah. We I would say go out page. to an arcade, but... Oh, there is an arcade after hours. Uh, ground control. Yeah, I'm not sure because I think it's That's a great their, arcade. It's their arcades that go to yes. Portland, so they might Let's, not be fully open. I, they are. Are they? Yeah. Okay. They are. They we'll are open. Them. So we, I think that would be ground a good. Ground control is awesome. Yeah. It is. The de decor in there is awesome. Oh, yeah. The games they have in there is awesome. Yeah. So it's a good after hours. Yeah. They're not you know, paying us. It's, it's a legitimately <laughs> it <is good. laughs> fun place to you go. You know, you, after a hard day of playing video games, you can wind down and go to ground control and play some more video yeah, games. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Have a drink, play more video games. That's yeah. right. Yep, yep, yep. In an inebriated state. Yes. Um... <laughs> Oh, uh, Atari H. Uh, Al says, yes, they're definitely open during the show. 
Are they? Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure because I think they actually provide some of the, I th the some of the games, games that are I played. Think so. so anyway. Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, so we have a tiny break from the video for a bit. We have some people who couldn't make it on the show okay. through video. Okay. Um, so. But what games are we playing? The next one. <laughs> And this is, provides me a chance to catch up a little bit. Okay, okay. Um, but they did provide Q&As. Excellent. Um, so that we will be able to uh, relay their information that they wanted to talk about. Uh, Soul of the Beast by Michael Christofferson, a.k.a. Aeroform, a.k.a. Flame. Uh, it mm -hmm. won for Atari 2600 Best Homebrew. Would that be Flame Aeroform in the chat over there? It is. Yeah. So you can actually answer your questions in the chat if you have any extra ones that yeah. he didn't cover. Yeah. Or he can type some more stuff as well. Yeah. Um, so I don't have the poster that comes along with this. Yeah. So there is a beautiful poster. Okay. Um, that I believe is the same as the cover art work as well, who is done by Helvetica Blank. So let's move all this stuff off of there. Mm -hmm. Now, the artwork on this game is astounding. So let's yeah. move to the Blank. unboxing cam. There we go. So oh, I, it's I'm going to get it out of the cover gorgeous. so it's not as shiny. So it's not as reflective. It is... No, I didn't get any posters, sadly. Actually, I haven't checked the mail. Maybe there's posters. Did you oh, did I somehow not include the poster? No, I didn't. Sense? There's two posters that I didn't get. One was from one a Jaguar game. Oh, it would have been in the box. Mm. Let me check again. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I went right. No, I did go right to the you bottom. You did go I right did. to the bottom, yeah. No, sadly, there's no posters. So sad. So sad. Um, <laughs> I believe you can see the poster in the store, though. If you in want the to store. take a look at the um, posters. Yeah. So here is the pff, astounding art. Oh, I love this art. Yeah. On the it's cover beautiful. of Soul of the Beast. Like this, I am glad he made a poster of this because this is like frameable art. Yeah. Like, this reminds me of uh, like the, what is it? Um, oh, jeez. I don't know. What's his name? Um, we did all the horror films in the 50s and 60s. The 50s and 60s? Yeah. Not the either. birds and uh, oh Hitchcock Hitchcock's uh, movie posters oh because it's black and white you know, like and Vertigo red. and like yeah. the, the simple lines yep. and the yeah that's what it reminds me of it's really beautiful um, oh yeah the small posters I I believe unless I am mistaken and there's posters in here but I thought it was a rolled poster that this comes oh with. I see it might be a folded one maybe reminds me of Roger Dean's art yeah I'm not familiar with that we'll have to look up Roger Dean. Or maybe the poster is in here. Oh, nope. Nope. No, oh, no, no. That's okay. I, I knew it was a separate poster. Yeah. Yeah. Album covers, for instance. Gotcha. Ah, okay. Well, look at this cartridge. <gasps> that is Ooh. different. Look at that. Is it? Yeah, nice, solid red. That's really wow. nice. Wow. It tells you where to insert it, too. Yeah. In the arrow. <laughs> I always love the arrows. That Just in case you good. can't quite figure out which way. Beast. <laughs> well, let's show the sides. I always forget to okay. show the sides. Because they are artwork as well. There you go. Nice. Beautiful. Here's the manual. And it's got some strange language there that you have to decipher. Yep. Japanese. Don't know. <laughs> looks Japanese it, it to me. It does look Japanese, no, actually. No, it looks Japanese to me. Yeah. Yep. It's not a strange language. Um, so here's the inside. Follow me. Ooh, down the ladder. Yep. Oh, yeah, the broken ladder. Very uh, simple, clean manual mm -hmm. with black, white, and red. Special feature. Controls, landmarks, quest items, mysterious shrine, eternal lantern, unremar unremarkable key. <laughs> Elixir, Winged Vial, Troll, Slithering Venom, Creeping Crawler, a Gremlin, uh, Monster Manual, Vespin, an Apparition, Beam Racer, Orb Weaver, Wyvern, uh, Dashing Boulder, Noxious Drip. <laughs> You're a Noxious Drip. Uh, flame, <laughs> a Vicious Protrusion. I love the names. Oh, oh look wonderful. at that. The artwork uh, in the game is beautiful. Yeah. Like, absolutely gorgeous. And this game has always been 
heralded as um, a game that shows off yeah. uh, a system's abilities for uh, graphics. Um, yeah, some funny symbols all over the place. No turning back now. Mm. Uh, made in Merivales and Reykjavik, I Iceland. Very nice. Interesting. Ah. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'll pop this in, um, and I you can play it while I read out the Q and A. Okay. Very funny, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, I have it. Have it backwards. Yeah. I'm like, they got a good up the nose cam for a bit there. Oh, nice. Not on the stream. Oh yeah. on the tiny bottom. Oh, one. the bottom one. <laughs> Cause that's always on the stream. That's true. Cause it's true. always that's a cat true. cam going. It's usually not pointing all over the place, but. Oh, uh, very nice. Okay. There we go. Also, Soul of the Beast and Katakana. Yes. Katakana. Ah. So here we are. Grab a joystick. And I will start reading out the Q&A. Soul of the Is Beast. It, uh, Is that the wrong there, one? Or? Got the right joystick. I don't know. Am I plugged in? Oh. I oh. Don't, no. You just have to hit. Oh, okay. yeah. I don't think this is couch compliant. Um, the... I... So he said, the process asked him what the process of putting together the package cart and manual, etc., how it was. I was always in love with the big box artwork of 80s video games, especially ones published by Psygnosis. There was something uniquely lavish about them, and it was a and it was a time when they were much more like record covers, often almost entirely unrepresented of the actual game. And it didn't matter because they looked so good. Let me just turn up the volume here. Every game is a different volume. So I have to keep adjusting. Um, it was important for me to create something evocative of these kinds of releases and classic Atari games. So I tried to find a middle ground to look like it could have existed and not look out of place as a mainstream release back then. I don't know. This is, this is astounding. This is really, really nice looking. Oh, it's crushed. Are you crushing these? Dead. Who's crushing these? It's crushing my boxes. I'm not crushing anything. I'll blame the cat. Um, ultimately, I wanted something distinctive and powerful. You got that. Something that might, uh, that people might say, that looks fucking cool. That people might want to buy for the box art alone, or the poster. Um, uh, similarly, the booklet was intended to be reminiscent of 2600 original manuals. Somewhat sparse and infor informational, but with neat little details here and there. Oh, you got that right. This is my first published title, so I needed to get it right. Uh, any challenges you had in creating the physical items? I had a general sense of the design very quickly, but putting it together to do something that showed off the incredible art and pre present the game without upstaging it and maintaining an Atari-like sensibility was tough. <coughs> One of the biggest challenges was writing and creating the lore around the game. Descriptions of the items, uh, areas, and, and enemies. I always remember reading booklets like this that hinted at a much larger and grander world than what was necessarily presented on the screen. I always liked that, but wanted to have it to have meaning. Sometimes it can be difficult to parse what you're looking at, especially 2600 games and the characteristic blocky sprites. So it was important to be clear about what everything is. Um, influences uh, for the artwork by Helvetica Blank and Rutherford Craze for the packaging. The direction for me was mainly something evocative of Psygnosis' releases and Roger Dean's work. They def So uh, Al nailed it. I believe he mentioned Roger Dean. And they definitely understood the assignment, especially Helvetica's work on the cover. It, it, the influence is pretty obvious, but I wanted to see what they would do in their own style, and it was perfect. Stark, striking, menacing, and exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, the Rutherford also knew exactly where... I was coming from when making the beast word mark lettering and surreptitiously had also made a typeface called Nichrome based on 70s sci-fi books that fit perfectly with what I was going for. I'm extremely grateful to them. Uh, the interest and reception of the game by the public. The general response has been great. With surprise, it was with surprise mainly that a lot of people instantly recognized the game for what it was inspired by. 
I have seen lots of comments and some reviews praising the graphics, the amount of content, and generally how technically impressive it is. I am very proud of that. As yeah, fast dripping oh, water. So hard. What did he call it? Menacing water? Threatening water? Something very funny. Uh, noxious drip. It is a noxious drip. <laughs> so noxious. Obnoxious. Oh, fail. Oh, you ran into its tail. Uh, uh, oh, what you might be working on next. I'm working on a couple games, too early to talk about it at the moment, but mainly continue to develop tools like my project management software tape. You can find more of what I do on aeroform.io. Anything else that I might have missed about the release and packaging? This is a hard game, and that's intentional. <laughs> so I want it to be the little oh, clues gosh. and things to set you going in the right direction. It is challenging. It is a challenging game. Yeah. Um, you have to hit at the right time. You have to be exact right time. Pixel perfect. Yeah. More or less, this tiniest bit of wiggle room. Like, look at how fast that's dripping. <laughs> like, I always find when doing this, it's like you can go too early sometimes. You're anticipating, oh, I'm, I have to go quick, and you run into the bottom of the drip just before it's off the screen. Uh, there's also some subtle references. For examples, for example, some of the hostiles are named very specifically. So these names have more meaning than, oh, more than, than, uh, than what they uh, appear to be. Like Eternal Lantern? Hmm. Mysterious Shrine? Hmm. Unremarkable <laughs> Key. Oh my god. I'm one, dead. One I'm left. Dead. I'm dead. Things come so fast. <laughs> that would make me just want to punch the drip. Don't punch the drip. Don't punch. Snake! Oh, you got it. And oh, the di the difference tiny. between you being hit and you hitting them is like that much. You really don't know if you're going to get hit or you're going <laughs> to hit them. Yeah, even it's, after it's... you punch, you're like, I don't know. <sighs> do, do I get, did I get hit? Um, oh. I the, need a medic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you might find one. The atmosphere and the graphics in this game are really, really, really well done. Ah, oh. just too close. And, and you just kind of... Bleh. Bleh. It's like acid, acid yeah. straight down. So beautiful, beautiful game. <gasps> um, if people liked the original, I think you really like the 2600 translation of this game. Yeah. Um... Like, look at the overworld. Oh, this is beautiful. Is is there parallax? Does it think... Yeah, they move at different rates. The clouds and the stuff on the ground. There's even a... I think in the original game, it's a blimp oh, in the I sky. See. Oh, you're getting oh, hammered there. Already. <laughs> uh, in an earlier version, you can punch drips and fireballs. That seemed like an exploit. That might make yes. it too easy because you can stand away from the drips. I, I think there should be things you, you have to... Jesus. Um, time yourself to get past, right? Like Yeah, and you yeah. want a bit of um, challenge like this and, guy. and differences. Yeah, this guy just goes below ground for a moment. You just have to go... <laughs> yeah. And also, it's not a rush game. Like, ah! It's immediate death, too. Because you can't rush through it, because those things pop up, and you're dead. So you, you have, have to be, be very, like, very, very careful. Click, click, click There's on the a special controller. feature to give you more life. Flame air form says. Oh, so. uh, do you mean like you start with more life or? Uh, I, I don't know. He's not saying, That's but okay. I think there's like things you can get and pick up. Or maybe there's like something underground here that you can pick up. Um, so congratulations on the release. Yes, um, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful game. Look beautiful. At this. Look at the look at box. the sunset in the background oh. and the colors. That's what the 2600 is good for is colors, colors, colors. Oh, oh no. You have to be pixel perfect. And it comes with a poster which is amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, amazing, yeah. Amazing. So. Um Where's my schedule? Is it in here? Ah. It is. <laughs> Looking at you and not the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, the next uh game we're going to be looking at with another beautiful cover yeah uh is unholy by leonardo santiago and unholy is the winner of let me just go back to here no more you're done all right <laughs> unholy was the winner of uh best homebrew completed original uh and uh, graphics and homebrew original music and sound excellent so a lot of these games are award-winning games, as you know. 
They're top quality. <laughs> um, Wait, so, unboxing? Unboxing unholy. Right. So let's go to the repurposed cat cam. <laughs> repurposed. It's gone Do you want to see? We can make it a cat cam for a second. Can? Go for it. Okay. While I get the uh, unholy box out. Let's see. Let's let's see how the cat. How is you doing? doing? Say hello, sir. Do you want some treats? Should it's a good do, time to do treats now that we don't do have a live person on. Yeah. Before we go to unholy, hello, really quick. Oh, Atari. Oh, he knew what that meant. Do that there. Okay. Are you gonna feed him? Uh, the camera? Sure. Are you hungry? Hungies. You get a close up of Atari. I know now. you don't usually get to see him. Uh, he asked, "Hit the bell first. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. What's Move this? Move it out a bit. Here." the bell. Hit it. Good kitty. Yay. Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh, Captain. Aww. He looks different from this angle. Usually it's from above. Yeah. I know. You don't really get a nice head-on shot. We can put it, put it even, can give, it, give it some cat perspective here. <laughs> It's really from his pers perspective now. Yeah. Definitely a cat cam now. Yeah. He's a <laughs> handsome cat. Yes, you are. <laughs> that look from Hit Atari says, as soon as you leave, I'm chewing on every one of your cables. <laughs> yeah. That's why I shut the door. Harder, harder. Hit you it can do it. Harder. Do it again. Smack it. Come on. Come on. Do it. He's like, I did it already. Oh, no, oh you have to... so soft. You're just so. You're he so... does have very soft too, paws. Too gentle here. Smack it. Do it again. Come on. Good kitty. Good kitty. I don't think he cares where there's a sound comes out or I not. I don't think he pays attention to the sound, really. It's just like, I hit it. Come on, guys. I did hit it. Yeah. Okay, I did hear that. I heard That's that. your last one. Okay, last take, one? Yep. Take the bell away. One more. Give him one. <laughs> okay. Give him one more. He's so cute. He is cute. Cute cat alert. Cute cat alert. Oh, there you go. Good kitty. Good kitty. All right, now back. Back to the regularly scheduled program of Unholy. Let's take a look at this. Now, this artwork is actually done by another developer, VHZC. <laughs> look, oh my God, look at that artwork. This um, is. Al asked, do we hide the bell uh, when you're sleeping? And no, we keep it locked in a room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely keep that out of, out uh, of his reach. Paw's reach. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is gr another. These box, the boxes in the art are amazing. Astounding. Absolutely and I think, amazing. I think it pushes people further and further every time. Like they see these boxes and they're like, I have to meet that level of standard and they just get better and better all the time. Well, it's going to be a fun part of developing the game is doing the art for the manual and the boxes and the, and the cartridges, oh, right? Yeah. So let's take a look inside yeah. this. I love that wonderful skull on the front. Oh yeah. Here we go. Maybe I'm crushing the boxes. I was melting them. There we go. And we played this. We played all these games on the show. Ah, so we went for a black background nice. on I like the cartridge. That. I like that. Very it really, nice. it really, um, you know, makes the red and the white really effect. stand out. Because you have limited space, I'm guessing he, he didn't want to include um, the whole thing mm. because it would cut it off. And uh, went for something that was a, uh, a bit more contrasty for the cartridge. Yeah, it's got good contrast on it for sure. There's the end. Let's take a look at the sides of the box so I don't forget. Uh, which way? Very nice. It's one of those kind of scripts that uh, looks like a, a metal band, so you're not sure which what direction. Oh. After it's, it's, <laughs> it does. It is very. There, uh, it's a little hard to read. Uh, like calligraphy kind of script. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, that looks good. Very, very nice. There's all the pieces. Beautiful. So let's pop that in. Now we did do, I'm pretty sure, a complete playthrough of this game. We did. 
Yeah. Um, super fun. Super fun. Um, a lot of really great level design. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go. There. And atmosphere. And Forgot atmosphere. about the atmosphere. I'll, I'll do that. It keeps coming yeah. off. It's just because it just sits on the top there. Here, you get the yeah, joystick. It. It's all good. Has an intro. Maybe we can keep it on the target. Look there. at that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very uh, <laughs> reminiscent of the Exorcist, that is. Yes. Okay. Now, this is uh, another text interview. All right. With Leonardo Santiago. Well, Tiny plays the game. Okay. He says, hi from Brazil. This is Leonardo Santiago, developer of Unholy, and I would like to share with you a little of what happened behind the scenes of the development of the physical media of Unholy. This one might be a little loud. Yeah. There we go. Uh, I started developing the game in mid-March 2020, and shortly after, with the game already in the final stage, Albert contacted me the, offering the possibility of producing and selling Unholy at the Atari Age store. At that time, Vladimir Zuniga had posted on Unholy's Atari Age thread his version of the cartridge label that I had ridiculously designed days before. Mm -hmm. I loved his drawing style. Who doesn't? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And on the occasion of Albert's contact, I suggested to him Vladimir as the person responsible for the graphic material. While the drawing was being prepared, I was translating from Portuguese to English, together with Albert, the entire text of the manual. It took a long time for everything to get the way it was supposed to be. I, I, I can understand that with like the translation of the English uh, to English. During the process, I believe that the biggest challenge was, or is, the language barrier. Sometimes needing... Oh, we didn't look at the inside of the... Oh, I'll have to go back to that. Silly me. Um, sometimes needing ex expression dictionaries and Albert's help to put the text written by me in Portuguese in the correct form in English. Because in languages, sometimes there just isn't a direct translation. You have to find a... Especially for sayings yeah. or puns or, you know, wordplay like that. You have to find an alternative. Yeah, like that, an alternative... What do they call them? Idiom. Idioms, yeah. yeah. Um, when the first sketch of the box presented to me, I felt that Vladimir had captured the atmosphere of the game and reproduced it in the best way. I also felt that the manual could be in the style of an old spell book. Oh, oh we have, we have it to is. We it didn't does. look inside. Kind of like the, we'll the leather in. carvings yes. on an old book. Something that is dangerous to open or read after you've opened it. Um, with yellow pages and a very striking cover. And so it was suggested... Great use of Moonlight Sonata, Marco yes. Yana says. Yes. Cinematic. It is very cinematic. Very, very, very. Why should packaging be easier than coding? Uh, do, 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 do. After all the adjustments made by Vladimir Albert and myself, we reached a beautiful result, which only adds to the adds value to the game. Thank you. Shortly after the game was nominated for the third Homebrew Awards, which came as a surprise to me, many people got in touch congratulating me and expressing their anticipation for the release. Mm -hmm. It's very gratifying to see this feedback from the public. It shows that I'm on the right track. Mm -hmm. Since Unholy, I've made two more games. Keijo Chases the Cheese, also which also game. awarded the best 4K and under game, and most, most recent Razor's Edge, perhaps the first beat-em-up style homebrew. And we didn't find another one. <laughs> So I think it is the first beat 'em up homebrew, uh, which which where the protagonist is a woman. I'm currently working with friends on Keijo ports, but I'll resume development for the Atari 2600 soon. Thank you all. So it looks like he's uh, porting Keijo to other platforms. I think I saw. Oh, what platform was it that he was working on? Oh. I can't remember what it was, but I saw it. I saw it posted. There's actual thunder and lightning outside my window, RC7E says. Very immersive. Yeah. <laughs> it's controlling your local weather. Nostalgic says euphemisms and idioms are tough. Like, yeah. there just isn't. You can kind of translate them, but... You have to figure out, okay, what in my language is means the it same? Sort of means is, is used to mean the same thing, right? Yeah, so you yeah. have to get the meaning behind it and then find your own. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Leonardo Santiago. We had a lot of fun playing this game, mapping out the levels, 
and uh, work oh, our and, way through it. And it's yeah. a long game. Like, it is. Ah! Ah, get out of there. It is a long game. It There's is a, a long lot game. to it. I love, especially the floor artwork that oh, sometimes. Oh, yeah, the blood dripping. Slowly and fills the, itself in. And then, then you have like some of the, the skulls and faces. And the pentagram and on pentagram. one of them. Pentagram, yeah. They did a lot of great work with the play field. And uh, like that, look at that. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And also the enemies too. Really, really great. Floating disembodied eyes and helmets. And look at that, look at that vase. And the, yeah. the color he used, so it, it gives shading to it. Just, just amazing. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna go back to the manual. Okay. Because you guys have seen us play this game. All right. It's mostly about the manuals and the boxes today. Yes. yes. So you can look to our other shows. The streams, for, yeah. Yeah. So let's or take a look. Um, YouTube's, yeah. Inside no. <laughs> the manual, if you want to man the camera again. Yes, I will. Woman the camera again. I'm, I'm okay with man the camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will woman the camera. <laughs> There's the cover. We didn't look inside, I don't think. Or did we? Did we? Briefly. No, did we, we didn't. No, no, we didn't. Okay. I forgot. I was too excited. Um, so there's the story. There is the... Um, is it monk you play? The monk, I think. Priest. Yeah, young monk. Priest. There's yeah, a monk. monk. Yeah. Because even words like that, you have to make sure they work well. Yeah. Like nouns. Gabrielle Sancti. Sancti. Survivor. The survivor. <laughs> um, doorway, closed door, number of survivors. Nice little flourishes at the bottom. Really, really nice. Yeah. I don't know if VH says he has done artwork for somebody else's game before. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't, I can't remember. Anybody know that? I don't know if VH said he's in the chat right now. Yeah. Um, there's all the enemies. Great variety of enemies. I love all the enemies too. Yeah. All the floating skulls and devils and knights that come at you. I do save my maps. I save all of them in a folder for all the games that we play. Yes. In case we need to come back to them because I'm not drawing those maps again. <laughs> Especially for RPGs. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, Levers. Extra oh, the music's lives. still playing in the background. That's fine. Oh, it's nice. It gives <laughs> it a lot of atmosphere. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, there's controls. There's the items. There's switches that you throw. Mm -hmm. Oh, turn on and off the music. Very nice. Or the live ball there. Good to know. Good to know. From Very the author. Nice. There we go. This game is my first attempt to code something for the something big for the Atari 2600. It was a challenge for me and makes me more passionate for this console. I hope you enjoy playing it because I enjoyed developing it also. I'm so thankful for my family, Giselle Camargo de Oliveira. Camargo, yeah. Camargo de Oliveira Santiago. And Alice de Oliveira Santiago supported me during the development for Leandro Camer Camera, Come who was very important in many decisions about the game. For Glauber, oh boy. Krinkovic. Uh, Dorici? Dorici and Marcello Baglio. Baglio. Baglioli? Baglio. Baglio. Baglio? G is silent? If it's Italian. Ah, Baglio. Who tested the game while I was developing. <laughs> I'm thankful for also for the Atari Age uh, forum members who tested and suggest many improvements for James O'Brien to show off the game oh, to nice. the masses and for Atari Age to make this cartridge possible. Very oh, thank nice. You. Um, so, box, label, and manual artwork by Vladimir Zuniga. Manual yes. contents by Leonardo uh, Krinkovic Santiago. Santiago. Yeah. Uh, published by Atari Age. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I'm really impressed with the batch of games today that have come out. It's uh, really quite, quite, quite good. Like, all of them are really, really good. Yeah, I think I'm crushing them. <laughs> smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. So it's all my fault. <laughs> Don't smoosh the, the boxes. Uh, uh, oh, Vladimir did the manual label and manual for Evil, Evil Magician Returns, Returns 2. 2. Very okay. nice. Um, he also did the label and manual graphics for the uh, as of yet unreleased 7800 BIOS. So mm -hmm. he has done some other ones. Vlad's last name should be spelled Zuniga with a. Wavy and Zuniga. Yeah. Yeah. Nye. 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 Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Um, yes. Okay. It's a cat time. Cat needs to be fed. Yep. I need to run run away for a second. Do you okay. have something to distract yourself with? Uh, 
Oh, yes, we have one more. So do it quick. Escape from I the can, castle? And or? I can do an unboxing of the escape from well, the castle. How about uh, you do that while I'm doing it? Yeah, I'm going to unbox. You, you can unbox there. Yeah. Maybe find a, 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 a an angle you can do that at. Yes. Okay. So the next... Uh, quick, quick, quick. So the next game that we're going to unbox is Escape from the Castle by Eduardo Villar... Villarino. <laughs> Villarino? Villarino. Yeah, Villarino. So, uh, Escape from the Castle was nominated for Best Atari 2600 Homebrew Original. Um, so, I couldn't find any artist list for the box or manual on the Atari Age website, so we're going to check it on the box. So, let me bring out Escape from the Castle. And uh, when we played this game last time, the developer said, don't play it too much. You're going to give it away before it gets released. And we, so we only played it a little bit. Um, obviously, we won't have time to play it too much here. But it's a great um, puzzle platformer type of game. So let's see how I, well I can handle. Give James a shiny to distract him. Don't distract me. That's a problem. I need to uh, keep it moving. Actually, how are we doing for time? This should be at 3.40. Oh, we gained a tiny bit of time. So if we can get... Mm, yeah, we can catch up a little bit here. So, actually, here we go. So let's go to the unboxing cam. So there is the cover. Beautiful. Great use of colors, the purples and the blues. It's beautiful. There is the back, Escape from the Castle. A castle full of challenges awaits. Cat and Leo have been captured and must escape the castle in time, but not before defeating the powerful boss named Mealy Bat. Melee Bat. Mealy Bat? Melee Bat. Uh, designed and programmed by Eduardo Villarino. Maybe he did everything. Hmm, we will find out. I'm just going to put you down for a second while I open the rest of it so I can show it to you. There we go. There is uh, the manual and the cartridge in the uh, classic Atari 2600 style. Maybe I'm too close. Maybe that's why I can't focus. I'm pretty sure this can go quite close. Maybe not. Oh, no, it can go very close. There we go. Well, it says design and program. So there's all three. Let's take a look at the back. Oh, very nice. It's got some brickwork in purple. It's definitely gone for a purple motif. An adventure in 32K. Gray. Uh, is that gray or is it silver? Uh, it is gray. I would say gray. I mean, gray and silver are uh, not too far apart. <laughs> so it's a little, a little difficult to say. So, oh wow. Very nice. Very nice artwork. Oh, so shiny. There we go. Not so shiny. I'm going to have to flip these one at a time here. Shiny gray. There, we'll, we'll meet in the middle and say it's shiny gray. Not quite silver. It's shiny gray. There's the objects. Trampoline, levers, yellow key, doors, ladders, torches, skull. Did we see a skull last time? I can't remember. Select your hero. Inventory. Time left, total escapes. How to play, use the joystick. Left, right, up, down, button, jump. Uh, game select to open inventory. Game reset to reset game. Uh, try to escape 10 times in a row with any character to get the special message, but beware after each escape, you will need to rush. The time to escape decreases, so it gets harder and harder. And if you'd like to uh, deface the manual, you can write some game notes in there. I dedicate this game to my children, Katerina and Leonardo. I love you. 
So it looks like he did everything. So he's a really good artist. I think that's the last page. Oh, Tanya's back. Hallelujah. I am back. The cat is fed. He should good. be quiet for about five minutes. <laughs> Before he starts begging. I just want to oh, steal oh, a couple oh, of pretzels. Oh, oh. We'll I'm put so this sorry. over here um, in the middle, if you like. I probably should eat some of those pretzels too before I pass mm, out. Mm-hmm. No passing out while you're playing Atari mm, games. Peanut butter filled pretzels. <laughs> Yummy. Okay. Mm. So, time to pop in the game and I will read the Q&A from him. Mm-hmm. And let's go over to the game. I don't know if you played this last time. Were you here for this game? Yes. Okay. Yep, yeah, we did play this game. Crunch, 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 crunch. Crunch, sorry. crunch, crunch. That's why we don't uh, eat we during the show. We have peanut butter pretzels out right now, too. Oh. oh. RC70. Great snack. These are fantastic. Unless you're allergic to them. Well. In case they're not a good snack. They're a deadly snack. <laughs> okay. finish eating. Sorry. The process of creating the box, manual, and label for the cartridge took a long time. Longer than I would have liked, as I decided to do the entire project alone. I had a lot of difficulties with this part, although I have a good understanding of Photoshop. I would say, oh my god. The artwork is amazing. Albert from Atari Age helped me a lot with many valuable tips. I really appreciate his patience. Um... Uh, any challenges you had in creating physical items? The main challenge was to understand the measurements and standards to produce the material in the right way for the graphic shop. So, yeah, so you have to make sure it all fits on the correct size for the manual. Make sure you're not cutting off the edges, mm -hmm. um, getting into the bleed zone. Yep, I've done, I've done, uh, I've actually made posters <laughs> for my own films and done a lot of graphic work now for various items. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Influences for the look of the artwork and packaging. Well, the game's story takes place inside a castle, so I wanted impactful art for the cover. Uh, the image of a castle at dusk. I bought art from, from an artist. Ah, okay, so he bought possibly the castle then. Securing the commercial rights to use it. I believe I made a good choice. The castle's colors influenced me to use the purple tone on the cover. Although it's not very usual in Atari games. It's great color. Um, Neomedia says, I have to leave, everyone. Thank you for the sh uh, show, James and Tanya. Night all. Night, Neomedia. Um, uh, the interest and reception of the game by the public. I haven't had direct feedback from players yet. I know the game has already had a solid, uh, sold a good amount of units, something I didn't even expect, but I'm still waiting for player feedback. I actually saw some comments after the world premiere held by Zero Page Homebrew. The comments were complimentary and interesting. It is worth remembering here that the game was released a little by surprise. No one knew, so I believe people were caught unprepared. So I be, believe it caught people unprepared. Yeah, I, I don't think he showed anything off before we showed it on the show. So that was the first glimpse for everyone. Um, oh, well. You absorbed a, a floor donut. Floor donuts. <laughs> um, Deadly floor donuts. What you might be working on next. I'm working on two new projects next. I'm creating a Windows version and possibly an Xbox One and Nintendo Switch port of Escape from the Castle. But with modern graphics. Uh, this is a long project, which will likely be released in 2023 or 2024. Here I can put all the creativity and original ideas of the game into practice, as I no longer have any hard hardware or memory limitations. The game engine is being developed. That's my initial focus. I'm sending some print screens for you to have an idea. I know it's your not, uh, not your audience's focus, but you can show them, show it to them. That, that would be interesting. I'll have to uh, cue that up. Uh, let's see if I have, there we go. I don't think it's that one. One second. Obviously I did not read through this because I didn't have it ready. 
silly me. But I can have it ready in a short amount of time. So I definitely want to show off his new stuff. There we go. It is almost ready. Uh, and B, I'm creating a new game for the Atari 2600 called World Fighters Clash of Destiny. It's a fighting game in the best known style. Street Fighter 2 influence, obviously. Uh, the game is 70% ready, but I'm having trouble with technical issues. I'm trying to use large sprites, which Street Fighter had. Um, uh, but And this was a problem when creating the animations. There's a lot of challenges here, and Batari Basic is limiting me on some issues. So I'm venturing directly into assembly to try and work out the issues. I'm hoping to be able to finish the development of the game in 2022. So one-on-one -on -one fighting game, large sprites. Sounds very ambitious. Looking forward to it. Uh, floor. Oh, somebody put uh, Homer drooling over the floor donuts. Floor donuts. Floor, d forbidden floor donuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's a floor wax and a dessert topping. Mm -hmm. Looks like frosted donuts to me. It Hilarious. does. Ooh, or spray or with powder, powdered yeah, sugar. Yeah, powdered donuts, powdered There's floor something donuts. Something to this, but I can't remember what. That button. Oh, you have to jump at the. Oh, you have to do those in order first of all. But one of the, one of the, you have to do like two, three, one or something. Try two. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at his uh, artwork mm. that he passed on for his uh, mm. ports of this game on much bigger platforms, mm. much more expandable platforms. Let me get that queued up here. Where's my keyboard? Oh, that's not the right spot. Let's see. Hold with us. So we'll have to do a full playthrough of that game now. Mm -hmm. Now that we have it. Now that we have it. So actually, <laughs> I've been uh, trying to like, oh, what am I going to play in the next few shows? Now mm. we have a ton of Now we have of a ton of games to, play to, play, to push, push our way through it. Yep. Yeah. So I'll be able to queue up some mm. stuff uh, after I collapse tonight. <laughs> uh, okay. Here we go. What is this? Phaser Cat Games. It's a floor wax and a dessert topping. What is that from? That is from something. It's from it a movie. It's probably an SNL sketch. No, or like toys with Robin Williams or something. Like it's from something. I, I've heard that yeah. before. SNL. Yeah, Mike Stoll says SNL. Ah, guessed right. Mm. Just sounds like an SNL thing. It does. Uh, okay, oh, here so is... Cute. Is this going to work? That's going to work. There we go. Wow, look at that. Wow. Bit of a graphics upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, this is Eduardo's port of Escape from the Castle for wow. various modern platforms. Wow. Mm, examine, conversation. Oh, oh that's talk cute. and examine. Oh, mm. Look at that. The green key and the blue key. Look at that banner. I bet it waves around mm. as if there's wind in a really castle. Cute. Maybe the wind's blowing through from one port, from one door to the other. Climbing up the... Oh, it would... Mm -hmm. uh, scrolling mm -hmm. from bottom to top. There's a switch. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Oh, here's a screenshot from his new game, 2600 game. Ooh, World of, Fighters. Uh, his nice. title screen. Sounds very, nice very font. exciting. Yeah, oh, the font looks oh, great. There we go. Wonderful. Beautiful font. Great mm. colors, which is Tire 2600 strength. Nice colors going from one to the other. Uh, Chevy Chase. Incorrect. Autocorrect. Yep. Chevy Chase, Gilda Radner. Ah, glow gotcha. up. SNL skit. So yeah, yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I, I know that from something. <laughs> so now we're only 21 minutes behind as opposed to 35. <laughs> So we're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next one is actually a 5200 game, which we have never played. No, we did last Atari Age Day. Did we get an Atari 5200 game running? Mm -hmm. Did we do emulation last time? Might have done emulation. Because I remember bringing it out. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we do have a 5200 mm -hmm. ready to go here. 
Um, so that's very exciting. So we're going to be talking with Ryan Whitmer about IntelliDisks mm. in a few seconds after I switch over some things. Oh, let's take the glow off my face. There we go. See, if I have a white screen beside me, it gives this huge glow oh, besides it does. me. Yeah, it's, it's so like funny. From the side. So yeah, if you can get him on the line. So you said that was Ryan? No. Ryan Whitmer? Uh, it might be... It should be. It's in the top somewhere. No, it's all in the top. Nope. My imagining things. You favorite it. Hmm. I do not see him in the Skype. Hmm. Is he in the chat? I don't know. Let me check my notes. One second. Make sure I am not imagining things. I don't know. He should be there. No, no, no. Oh, don't be dragging things. No, I'm not dragging things. I'm just. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, Bring him in. Maybe I w didn't have him as a contact no, properly. No, not in the contact. That's oh, fine. that's. We're all good. We're all fine here. We're all good. We're all good. <laughs> Nothing to see. <laughs> so this is uh, Ryan Whitmer, a prolific Atari Fifty Two Hundred programmer, and almost completely carries the Atari Fifty Two Hundred homebrew scene on his own. <laughs> uh, programmer of Ratcatcher, Magical Fairy Force, Real Sports Curling. And now, IntelliDisks, please help me welcome Ryan Whitmer. You have video? To the show. That's you good? My ear we got video. All Can right. you see us? Perfect. I do see, see you. Fantastic. Excellent. Excellent. Do you hear me? Congratulations on the release. Yes. We can hear you. We can see you. Everybody's fine here. There are still um, cookies, by the way. Oh, uh, save them for PRGE. Mm -hmm. Bring oh. them along. <laughs> it's a little ways away. My, my, Store my them baking in. keeps a uh, while, but not that long. <laughs> yeah, we may not want to eat them at that point. <laughs> Maybe a fresh batch for them. <laughs> um, so congratulations on your new release. Uh, like I said, you pretty much carry the 5200 homebrew scene on your own. Um, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're keeping keeping the dream alive. <laughs> I, I think I might be the only active person who's developing specifically for the 5200. Um, I, I like new ones. There's some ports here yeah. and there, but like act like new original non-ported stuff. I, you're one of the few, if not only, I believe. Yeah, there's a lot of people who do like Atari 8-bit games and convert them over as sort of a, a courtesy mm -hmm. almost. Uh, <laughs> yes, but uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm not aware of anyone but it's, else. So it's, it's good to have yeah. you for those 5200 fans. You know who you are. Yeah, there, um, there's a couple. <laughs> um, there's a couple, some some rabid 5200 fans. Yeah. Um, um, so we, S. Ramirez has the signature <laughs> collection of my first two games, and I'm sure oh, he's going to be yes. after me for some more at PRGE this year. <laughs> signature collection. Okay, Ken, you got to get down. We're doing some showing off some some packaging here. So um, this is an homage, a port, a uh, translation of uh, a very fun. In television, disc-based oh, oh. game. Oh yeah, um, this this is one of the uh, probably most beloved in television games out there. If you if you ask people what's your favorite in television game, you know top five, whatever. This game comes up a lot. Um, so you know, it was a game I really wanted to do yeah. right. You know, so I had to make sure I yeah. really took my time and nailed this one. Uh, and I hope I did. You know, I, uh, people seem to enjoy it. I um, so. I think you did. It translated well, and I remember playing this on the television back in the day, and just the, I think the mechanics really draw people in. The throwing of the discs around the room, it's just, it's just fun, I think. Yeah, and I, when I first started dabbling in uh, the 5200 stuff, which would have been, I don't know, maybe 2008 or so, um, this was actually one of the very first things I thought I was doing this game. Uh, but I wanted to make sure, wait until I had a couple more games under my belt you know, before I really took this one on because I, I, I wanted to get it right so badly. 
And, uh, you know, I, I figured mm. it was time, so went ahead and got her done. Yeah. Uh, here's the chunky boy of a cartridge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. It, it fits well with, uh, with the chunky uh, uh, system. There we uh, go. Beautiful, better. beautiful artwork. So, uh, who did this artwork? Uh, the and, artwork was uh, done um, by a guy named Lou Graziani, who is an artist I've worked with for a very long time. Um, he he did the uh, the cover artwork for Ratcatcher. Um, he's worked with me on a number of PC projects. Um, yep. he, he also did all the work for Magical Fairy Force, uh, the all the character artwork, ah. and uh, you know he's doing the artwork oh. for the the PC version of that as well, which oh, I'm hoping great. to have out later this year if all goes well. Um, yep. Yeah, so he did all he did the cover art for this, and I remember uh, talking to him about it and just telling him I wanted something that looks so 80s it hurt. And, <laughs> yeah, I think he well to along the top, you, he definitely captured that with these colors along the top oh, of the yeah. map. Yeah, it's the colors they really are like wonderful. the, mm-hmm. the almost yeah. like old CGA graphics colors from uh, like old PC games. And and the slight jaunty angle of of the gray going upward, yeah, it definitely captures it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did a great job here. I love the uh, the gate. <laughs> I love all the character artwork. Hunter, leader, drone. Oh, that that actually wasn't him. The character artwork was done by um, somebody else. Albert found. <laughs> Albert was responsible in the manual? for that. He will, he will fill in on that. Um, that wasn't him. Uh, Atari Boy Twenty Six Hundred. John Calcano. That sounds Calcano? right. Yeah. Calcano. Okay. Of all the artwork. <laughs> yeah, additional artwork. It yeah, says. all the artwork in the manual was done by him. Uh, okay, cover art by Lou Graziani. Okay, mm-hmm. watch that cat. Um, the identifier. Oh, that looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, actually, uh, your you know stream favorite Vladimir uh, Zuniga uh, gave me <laughs> one thing. I, I would, you'll see it when you play the game, but the you know, it's called yep. the recognizer in the movie. I call it the identifier just to avoid any uh, issues mm-hmm. trouble. Um, I was trying to design that myself one day and I had graph paper out and I'm trying to make this thing and I couldn't do it. So I gave up. And then he just out of nowhere posts his own in discord. It's completely unprompted. Wow. I was like, wow. I asked him, I was like, wow, that's great. Can I use that? It's like, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, so that's the one thing he contributed to the game. <laughs> just ah, out of nowhere. So. New, new identifier design of Vladimir Zuniga. Yeah. Yes. I was wondering what that meant when we popped it in, uh, when we were looking at it. It's like new identifier design. That sounds like so general, but it sounds like something specific. I'm not sure what <laughs> yeah. it was. Now I know. Well, now that you've explained um, it. I had originally copied the design straight out of the Intellivision game. And I had I had a couple of right. test builds that I had posted with that. And I remember when I, when I put the new one in there, there were some people who said they really liked the old one better, the original Intellivision one. Um, and for a while, oh. I was posting <laughs> parallel test builds, like one with each version. And when I got toward the end, I had enough ROM space. I decided, you know, I can just put them both in there. So so there's a menu oh. option where you can pick which one you want. That's so you what can just it pick is. Whichever yes, one, yes, yes. You know, whatever you like better. That makes sense. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to pop it in and take a look at it. And, of course, um, you're going to be hit right away with Bobby Clark's fantastic music. Which I have to. Oh, he, he did all the sound work and he did a fantastic job with it. Take out my Atari Max. Oh, got the Atari Max. Oh yeah. Oh well, then you can uh, <laughs> you, you can test Robin Banks then. <laughs> ah yes, perfect. And we've got uh, I can't remember who made this controller, but uh, you may be able to identify it. Yeah. It's very cool. Oh. Uh, that is not a 50, uh, that is not a sanctioned controller. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it is analog. Oh, so, it's analog. Uh, All right. Mm, so you, yeah. you'll get the full 16 directional movement then. Oh, perfect. Okay, I think I've almost got everything ready. I had to look hook this up specially for today. That's right. You modded it, didn't you? Uh, I was in the process. I didn't quite get it done. So this is RF. It looks okay. Right. It's it's quite it's decent. Yeah. Do you, so you have the one I, the, I am in the process. Do you have the four controller port model or the two? We're using a two today, but I have a four, okay. and I'm going to be modding the four so we can play um, some four player games in the future, which is really what I want to do. All right, well, because I got two um, of them, <laughs> so and, exactly. And you're holding one right that's, now. 
<laughs> yeah, so I'm really looking forward to the modding, and then we can get a four-player uh, game going, and uh, and play some of your 5200 games. The yeah, the the battle mode was my addition to the Intellivision game. I didn't I didn't really want to add anything to the core game that wasn't in the original uh, Intellivision game, uh, but the battle mode, I figured, you know, might as well. I got the space for it. Let's just throw it in there. And I, I always like taking advantage of the four-player uh, ports when I can on the system. Oh, look well, at that. This looks fuzzy. Uh, authentic 80s. Authentic, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> um, what we go for here. <laughs> that, that, that fine uh, boot-up logo there is my... my uh, the one time I've ever used Ooh. the 320 pixel mode, and it came out really well. Oh yeah, it does. Got to watch out for cats with guns. That's uh, that's, that's trouble. <laughs> it's true. It's they're, true. They're enough trouble already. Um, we may have to just look past the fuzziness or or bask in its authenticity of the eighties. <laughs> yeah, at yeah. the moment, that's, that's how it's I supposed think, to be. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's probably just all the massive amount of equipment that I have yeah. running at the moment that's interfe introducing I, oh, a yeah. lot of yeah. interference. I, I've got probably um, like eight consoles running through one splitter, so you know I don't know how it goes. Are you playing or? Uh, what is going on here? Here, here, here. Are you moving? I'm moving, but I'm not shooting. Oh, okay. are, did see. you switch? Are you in keypad mode? Oh, you, oh, you picked the wrong mode. You're right. You're right. I remember you switching. There we also. go. Let's try this again. Yes. There we go. There we Thank go. You. So there's different modes. Maybe you want to talk about because you have a two uh, two joystick, a twin stick uh, oh, mode yeah, as well, yeah. right? Uh, well, well, the keypad mode to start off with. That's how the Intellivision game played. So that's oh, okay. that's kind of the default because that's what the original game was. And um, I think someone in the chat's yelling for you to look at the back of the cartridge because you're going to find something back there. Um, but oh, oh yes, that's right. Well, and we'll talk it, about uh, those. Will not fit. <laughs> will not fit in my controller. Yeah. Um, uh, that's probably why you're like, ah, not authentic. Um, I think I'm going to have to stop the game again to pull it out. Uh, yes, I will. I, I would like to see these myself, so that's why I'm... <gasps> what happened? Oh, here we go. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Where's your... No. Where's your overlays? Oh, Sorry. What happened? Um, there's no overlays. Maybe oh. they're in the box. Let me let me just look in the box, I, I don't just know. in I, case. I, I thought he was shipping them on the back of the cartridge, but maybe not. Maybe they fell out. Yeah. Or or he might have uh, forgot. Is there a bag in there? No, no, it's no Can bag. I'm just looking. Oh. Uh, no, I th I th I think they may have been uh, missed. So oh, no. I have a little bit of catching up with my. Uh, uh, stuff that he shipped me when we go to PRG. <laughs> okay, well, get all the extras. Um, so we did Maybe controller can overlays them. for this game. I might as well talk about them if you, even if you don't have them. Um, well, actually, I shouldn't say we did it because it completely caught me by surprise. I didn't know about the overlays until the store page went up. So that was mostly out. Ah, point. wow. Um, I, I did put in some input on them. You know, just some stuff that should be on the overlays themselves. Uh, but most of that was yeah. already done by the time I even saw them. No, so that was a nice touch, and it's as far as I know, it's the first 5200 game that he's done overlays for. Um, I don't know if that's something right. he's going to continue doing in the future. Um, I mean, this game in particular, I guess, kind of calls for it a bit, um, but a lot of games just it's just not yeah. worth it. Um, like when, when Robin right. Banks is done, that there's no reason that game should have overlays. So I doubt we're going to do it. <laughs> uh, but as far as the control modes that... go, the uh, mm -hmm. which you know the overlays are for the the keypad mode, which was the original control mode from the Intellivision. Um, I yeah. put in the trigger mode, which I assume you're using now, uh, which is more like yeah. a berserk. Or as someone later pointed out to me, the 2600 version of this game, which Mattel made, um, uses that sort oh. of uh, fire button mode. Which wasn't what I was thinking of when sense. I did it, but it was kind of neat. It, that it works good. fairly well, and, and a lot of games that use directional shooting use that kind of control scheme like Robotron if you don't have a twin stick. Yeah. yeah. Um, the twin stick mode was something I wanted to do from the very beginning, whether it actually worked or not. I, it just it was such a cool idea to do it. <laughs> and the, um, the 5200 joystick coupler, which comes with Robotron and Space Dungeon, was the only major peripheral I hadn't used yet. Because uh, the last game ah. I did had trackball support. 
So I thought, okay, yeah. now I need to do something with that joystick coupler. Um, so I decided, I don't care. I'm going to put in the twin stick mode in the game. And I don't think it works very well, honestly. It, it's more of a novelty than anything else. Um, I, right. I think that with uh, digital joysticks, it might work really well. But I'm not sure. I don't have a digital joystick set up. Uh, right. And yeah. I don't know if anyone's really tried it with that yet. Um, <laughs> but, I'll have to you know, try. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the keypad I, mode, I think, is ultimately the best if you've got, you know, the controller with a working keypad. I think that's that's really the way to go for you know, the pro yeah. high scores that <laughs> players like If you're going to go demand. pro, pro tip, use use the keypad. Yeah. yeah. So it would be uh, eight directional with the keypad? Oh, uh, yeah, it's eight directional and you have a, the five button in the middle puts you into, you have a blocking mode you can go into, which the uh, second right. button will do in trigger mode. If your controller has two yeah, buttons I don't on think. It. Want to demonstrate the uh, blocking mode there? And uh, when you're blocking mode, you can uh, move around your uh, shield. Yeah, you so can that, position uh, you it can... to to intercept the discs and break them. Um, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a general blocking. It's it's you have to block in a direction to block it. Yeah, and which is uh, uh, the funny thing is, I never used the blocking mode in the Intellivision game. I never cared yeah. for it. And I mentioned briefly thinking, you know, should I even bother with this? But people are like, no, man, you got to have the blocking mode. It's fantastic. It's a huge part of the thing. <laughs> like, okay, fine. And it, it's act that was actually surprisingly difficult to program, too. And so I, I kind of wished I could have skipped it because I didn't really want to do it. But, yeah, you know. Yeah. Then people were getting on my case. And, and I, have a, I, have, I have a box of 5,200 controllers that the keypads don't work on. Oh, okay. um, so it's good that you gave the option of using the buttons for uh for shooting as well yeah so there were there were some people you know during development i i maintain a, a you know a couple of threads in the 5200 forum at atari age where i post you know binaries from time to time and uh there were some people who swore by the button mode like that was like this is the way we're going to do it I, <laughs> I love this trigger mode i don't want to use a keypad so I thought all right you know i must i'm probably on yeah. the right track here i might as well put that in and i i'd be afraid of damaging the overlay actually of putting in the overlay and and pressing it all over the place but they're yeah. pretty they're pretty sturdy um the and i think in one of these games in the jaguar games he's also included overlays i'm not yes. sure maybe al can chime in how many other games he's used overlays with because it would just be 5200 and jaguar ah. i think those are the only systems that ha he has he puts done out a coleco games for. game i i i <sighs> Ooh, I think so. I have, Maybe for one some or reason, two, I have this but... vague recollection of him doing a Coleco game that had a an overlay, but don't. Oh, Al just said, that. "Nope, those are the first two games." Oh, so oh, okay. congratulations! So being the first, no, thank uh, you. one of two, and it wasn't even me. It just I don't know where. Uh, <laughs> just boom, an overlay. That's, yeah, that's a very cool add-on. It is, and, and somebody uh, said it, yeah. it. It brings in the authenticity and nostalgia of a fifty-two hundred opening, a uh, fifty-two hundred game opening it up, just like in television. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Slips and actually makes it even better because it's originally an Intellivision game to have these overlays. Yeah, and I, I remember at the time thinking if I ever did overlays, I'd probably want. I, I was wondering if I should copy the way the Intellivision ones looked. Cause, uh, but instead, right. we, he did ones that looked like the Atari ones you know, looked, which is fine. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. Um, the, the Intellivision overlays were always a bit more graphic if you ever saw them like they had a lot more artwork and weird things going on whereas the, yeah. the atari one i'm thinking quite a bit the more pit, basic i'm thinking of the pitfall one where there's an alligator going oh. right through it oh and, yeah yeah they're it, quite decorative yeah especially the third party ones i mean i remember like some of the activision oh. ones like you said were really crazy yeah uh, but yeah this um, um i said this is a project I've, I've wanted to do for years and i'm i'm really glad that i got it done um there, yeah. surprisingly, there weren't too many technical challenges really involved in getting this, you know, put together. I think the biggest thing, which yeah. I hope I never ever do again, um, was trying to get a four-player mode where all four players could use their keypads. Just shoot that. <laughs> oh, no, I, 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 uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a challenge to have four working controllers on the fifty-two hundred. Well, I mean, not just that, but um, without getting. In, you know, into the nitty-gritty technical details. Reading the keypad input on these controllers is really, really awkward. And oh, you know, really? I, I can see why a lot of games don't do it because it's just it's a pain, and uh, it's a pain with one controller. Trying to do it with four is 
which you know, is an exercise is it, in frustration. Is it, t- is it a timing thing? Like it takes a lot of time to um, read it, just like a paddle on the 2600, or um, is it no, just awkward? Uh, what it is is that you can only read one per frame. So there's per frame. There's sort oh, of like wow. a there's like a switch in the system that identifies which controller port is active for the keypad. Oh, so boy. <laughs> you have to uh, like have them on a rotating schedule where you're just going through and, and hitting them you know, every so many frames. And if you do it too fast, it'll like bleed over between frames and like player four will do something. Right. It'll show up on player threes and you have to find oh, just the right no. timing for it. Oh, my God. I mean, if, if yeah, you, so you have to. No, oh, sorry. Go yeah. On. Well, if, so if you're doing a game where player four presses it and 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 you have to keep track of who actually pressed it in that frame or yeah oh my god I I don't remember exactly how I pulled it off I think I had like a <laughs> like a, a long term storage I was like this is the last key this player pressed and then you know go back and just keep oh, overwriting it and checking it and it it gets complicated um, but if you're doing oh, a game where only yeah, one yeah. person's playing at a time it's easy you just say you know now this is the controller that has the buttons um but when you're trying to roll through four at once it, it's tough and i i can't think of very many games on the system that actually use the keypad on multiple controllers at once um tennis uh-huh. does i think maybe i think the sports games are probably the ones that probably do if anything does right uh, but most of them it's yeah just you need a lot more control. controls for throwing and bases like in a baseball game yeah. or something you'd have to yeah that makes sense yeah but outside of the sports games a lot and like star raiders uh, most games stayed away from the from the keypad right. Yeah, yeah, and because it it's 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 challenging, especially on high action games, going back and forth, and you, sometimes you pretty much have to look down unless you completely memorized it. On this type of game, it's not so bad because it's a directional thing. Yeah. But if it's if it's like Star Raiders, it's like oh, what is yeah. you know this and what is that, and you you definitely have to look down. Yeah. But a high action game like this, it's like no, you better just just do it. There's no time for looking down. Yeah, and I mean, fortunately the uh, the, like the four player mode, you can actually choose between the trigger mode and the keypad mode for each individual player. So if you just don't want to do it, you just say, you know, I don't care. I'm just going to use the button <laughs> and just dodge uh, the whole issue. Yeah, somebody somebody mentioned Mule, which is uh, would be a, the killer game, which is really one of the reasons I definitely want to mod um, the 5200 so it can play four player Mule. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if that uses keypads or not. Mm, I'm not sure. Um, it seems like it's the kind of game I, that would, but... Yeah, because I, I played on the, the Commodore 64, which only has one button, so yeah. I, I think it could probably get away unless get away with not using the keypad unless it you know, expands out the, uh, the auction mm. uh, levels, but I haven't played it on the 5200, so I'm not sure. Yeah, and I'm surprised at how many of the Atari 8-bit ports don't use the keypad, because I think a lot of the ports that get done tend yeah. to be the simpler like arcade style games where it's just one button and you're done um, yeah yeah that 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 makes sense because they they they're thinking oh well either, either it's a really complex 8-bit game where you're using the keyboard yeah which, or it's a simple game where it's one or two buttons maybe but it only had one button on the 8-bit yeah so it's either one button or super complex although on the subject of the 8-bit this this has been converted uh, to the 8-bit and you can find it oh, if, if you poke around. I, there's a website that has a bunch of these. Uh, there's someone who keeps converting all my games. So and this happened. <laughs> Damn with... them! Oh no, I, I absolutely encourage it. Um, uh, you can go download the source yeah. code to this. It's all open source. So, um, you know, oh, that's great. People are more than welcome to do whatever they want to with the code for this. Uh, but there's a guy who ports all my games within about two weeks of them getting finished. So uh, <laughs> oh, no. he's waiting, waiting yeah. to. So I, I, you know, once Robin Banks is done, that'll probably be you know ready to go on that one too. Yeah, that's another wonderful Intellivision game that I loved as well. Oh, Lock and Chase. Lock and Chase. Yeah, yeah. that's um, it, it's kind of playable at this point. There's still a lot of uh, details that need to be worked out. You know, little things, stuff yeah. like that. Um, I. Uh, mostly working on menus and stuff now you know the, the stuff no one thinks about uh. <laughs> the afterthought but it, it's looking really good i've been following uh, along and watching the videos and screenshots and yeah that playing the binary here and there yeah that's, that's another fun project um and it probably be my last port for a while um because i'm i'm mm. i'm kind of done with ports i wanted to do a couple just to do them but i want to get back to original games 
Um, so. What was the uh, what was the, the sports game somebody proposed that you do some really obscure weird sports oh, game? Uh, the, the cornhole thing. Uh, that, that was actually yes, an April cornhole. Fool's joke. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't I, I think you should do it because the analog joysticks are almost perfect oh. for that, right? It I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do another <laughs> sports game. You know, after I did curling, everyone was like just throwing sports games at me. It's like, oh, you got to do this. And you gotta do that. And I was like, you're okay. being typecast, right? I guess. Well, who does sports games? I mean, how often do you see a homebrew sports game? It's extremely rare. Outside of Edward Smith, not many. He does tons for the 2600, like a ton. Okay. And I know there's a, a baseball game coming up from Champ Games, but outside of that, almost never. Yeah, it's pretty because rare. That, that was kind of the go-to originally when these consoles were released. Everybody wants sports games, yeah. so they went... You know, baseball, real sports, baseball, all that, all that kind of stuff. So they're kind of done almost. Maybe they don't want to recreate them. Yeah. Well, that's part of the reason uh, I did curling was because, uh, you know, if you do say yeah. uh, like a, a football game, the first thing anyone's going to do is ask, well, how does it compare to real sports? And if it's not exactly. better than real sports, why would I bother with this? So <laughs> I figured, you know, I, if I do something no one's ever done, then, well, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of the best already by, you know, just by virtue of existing. So, yeah, you, know, you have to do water polo oh, or yeah. uh, water polo <laughs> or uh, what are highlight or uh, I don't know, some other super obscure game. Field I, hockey, maybe? Field hockey. Yeah. I, I, I've Cricket? considered golf. That's really the only other one I've really put some serious Ooh. thought into is the possibility of doing a golf game. Uh, mostly because I used to really play... good golf games are quite popular and and very fun to play. Yeah, well, I think um, you know to go back to the Intellivision, the Intellivision uh, Super Pro Golf was a fantastic game, like mm. decades ahead of its time. I mean, it still holds up today, and uh, it would be a fine model for you know for a fifty two hundred golf game. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, but I I don't think I'm going to venture back into the sports realm anytime <laughs> soon. Um, in fact, yeah. I actually, I, I did want to mention this because you, it's, it's at least tangentially related to you. Um, a, little, oh, okay. a little while back, <laughs> you were doing a Christmas episode. I think it was around Christmas. Yep. And yep. Uh, you were looking for Christmas games. And I thought, man, there's no, yes. there's no Christmas games. There's not even... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, there's a lot of Halloween games, but Christmas is a very a smaller subset, yeah. Well, I mean, on the 5200 specifically. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And I, and there's really isn't any winter games apart from maybe my curling game at a stretch. I I, I thought yeah. maybe yeah. someone had ported it's winter cold. games over from some system or another, but I couldn't even find that. Um, so I Don't decided, so. you know what? It I need to fix this problem. So I think after Robin Banks is done, I'm planning to make a Christmas game, just Ooh. so you know to fill that weird little hole that's missing there. <laughs> Um, I mean, that's a smart idea to, to fill those niches that just don't have anything out there. Any 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 clues of what it kind of is going for? Is Santa Claus involved? Is Oh, Santa Claus is, is there... involved, but I think that's okay. all I'm going to say on the subject because it's a very, very special uh, thing I have in mind. And I don't want to give it away yet, but um, okay. okay. what I do plan to do with it, though, is Albert has this amazing 512 kilobyte 5200 cartridge. <laughs> And I'm going Whoa. to use that. So that's going to be. Oh my, wow! I'm planning this to be my first game on the 512K cartridge. So we'll see how that how that works out. So, FMV 5200. Oh, right? I've Is thought that what about you're it. Going I've for? thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fill up that 512. It, it has crossed my mind. I, the, the thought has been there. Um, Excellent. Well, thank you for porting this. This it's an extremely uh, fun game. Throwing around discs in a uh, Tron-like environment. No, you haven't gotten to the crazy enemies yet. They don't show up till 10,000 no. points. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Boy. <laughs> That'll take a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to defeat... It's a little slow. Got to defeat the big, the big uh, interceptors. Um, the other big uh, thing is, is to wipe out all three people in the wave before the reinforcements show up. Um, there's a bonus. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so once the reinforcements yeah, show up, I... you, you, get, you don't get as many points, so... There you go. Mm, yeah. That makes sense. Well, anything else you'd like to add before we let you go? Um, well, I suppose I should, uh, you know, once again, especially thank Bobby Clark for doing the sound for this, uh, which, you know, he did it almost right away. I mean, it was like practically instantaneous. I think there was one thing we had to go back oh, and God. change for some reason, like some sound effect that was colliding with another one or mm -hmm. something like that. 
But other than that, it was yeah. it was just such an easy process for him to, to do all the sound <laughs> for this. Um, I think That's he might great. do the sound for Robin Banks as well, which will be great. Uh, you know, once I get around to actually doing the sound for that, and I can't yeah. wait to see how that yeah. turns out. Um, so hey, yeah, great work. I mean, I know he gets thanked a lot because he does so much sound for all these games, and of course, yeah, uh, he, he has his fingerprints over so yeah. many games, and, and he does such a great job. Um, you know, Vladimir for the uh, for the recognizer design he did. Which, oh yeah, is great looks great on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much, and congratulations on yet another fifty-two hundred uh, uh, release. It's four down. <laughs> <laughs> Many more to go. <laughs> I got to keep it alive. I'm the, I'm, I'm, I'm the last. That's hope. right. <laughs> your, your only hope for the fifty-two hundred. Well, thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks it's for It's been a pleasure, me. and uh, uh, see you in the forums. Yep, and I'll be at PRG. Uh, so. Oh, oh, awesome! Yeah, <laughs> excellent. Well, we'll keep an eye out for you, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. All right, well, see everybody later. See ya. Bye bye. Excellent, fun game. I haven't really had a chance to play it yet. <laughs> You've been testing it out. <laughs> yes. It's oh, first yeah. time I've played that game in particular, so. Um... Because mm -hmm. I never played it on the Intellivision, so. Uh, well, I had a I had a friend across the street from me who had an Intellivision, mm -hmm. so went through a bunch of bunch of Intellivision games. I think that's the only person I knew that had an Intellivision. Oh. Um, and then I got one, much much later in my twenties. Mm. Um, started collecting, <laughs> building up my collection of vast array of oh. old technology. <laughs> Um, so, what, where are we on the schedule? How are we doing? And so, we're at Wizard's Dungeon Excellent. by Bido Empire on the 7800. Oh, we have played the 7800. Good. Is it still on? Nope. Let's warm that puppy up. Oh, no. Warm it up. Get the right colors. So, um, Wizard's Dungeon by Bido Empire. It was nominated for Best Homebrew Original. Mm-hmm. Um, the cover artwork was by Blues Bloody. Actually, let's get it out before we say their names. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's see, Wizard Dungeon. We had a ton of fun playing through this game. I think we yep. finished on the easiest level. On one, one of the easiest. Right you over. should eat some of this, though. I'm a little worried you're going to stand up and, and uh, pass keel out. over. Probably. Yeah. Possibly. Looking forward to Robin Banks. Me too. I mm -hmm. I love that game. It's It's a maze game. You're, you're getting dots, but instead of power pellets, you have like, you can close doors on the people chasing you. So they. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. yeah kind of like Ladybug then. A little bit like sort of? Ladybug, um, but the, yeah, it's it's more akin to Ladybug, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of fun. And the characters are really cute with their hats. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's fire up the, you're on the camera. Mm-hmm. Cam, repurposed cat cam. Wizard's Dungeon. Wizard's Dungeon. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Mm -hmm. Video game cartridge for the Atari 7800 Pro system. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know that is cartridge is, is inside and it's not a book or something. Mm -hmm. Fantasy role-playing action. This is, I believe, his first game it's an um, amazing that game. he's made. Very, very, very fun. Oh, so much fun with mm -hmm. all the different enemies. Things and to get along the way. Power-ups. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, so good. Just adds the uh, name at the end there. Very nice. Boxing. Boxing more Wizards Dungeon? <laughs> oh, Atari Age is... Al's boxing stuff. Mm -hmm. Boxing stuff up to ship out before he has to ship himself out. <laughs> And the triplicate design. Yes. <laughs> and here's the end label for Wizard's Dungeon. Looking good. Game manual for the Atari 7800 Pro system. Oh, he's got some fluffy boots on. Very nice. You can see them more clear here. <laughs> and the skull. I think, I think, yeah. Some yeah, growing, nice. oh, very menacing eyes all around the background there. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's got a staff and some, uh, some fireballs. fireballs that he can defend with a sword in the background oh you should Very grab nice. that sword yeah for sure but you know 
uh, projectiles, always, long range, long range, projectiles. always good. Don't yeah. get close to the enemy. Nope. That's how you stay alive. There we go. And then when we play it, we'll actually go through all this. <laughs> I think Al earlier in the show. Um, oh, highlighted. Akim de uh, AK Mindweb. Yeah, AK That's Mindweb. It. There you go. <laughs> uh, absolutely loving the show. So many games, so many little time. I don't care what anyone says. Nothing beats Atari. Agreed. Yeah, I went all in with Atari. I'm mm -hmm. only missing uh, the links, mm. which I'm planning on getting because I already have the multi cart mm -hmm. on order. And I recently got the Jaguar, and I probably won't get the Atari ST computer. I'm just, yeah, just too. It's a six. It's a, a newer system. A newer. And I'm, I'm sticking with the consoles. I, I mean, I went in with the 8-bit computer system. Yeah, fair enough. It's fun, but mm -hmm. I think that'll be the only one I don't have. Uh, there we go. How to play? Shows you what's everything's on the screen. Uh. Oh yeah, there's the um... ghost mode, which is very cool. So when you die in this game, you don't die. <laughs> Turn into a ghost. And you have a limited time to get back to a gravestone mm -hmm. and resurrect yourself, which yeah. is a great game mechanic. Yeah. Um, so you kind of have to mentally keep track of where the gravestones are. Actually, you can flip to the map and find out. But you have to rush to a gravestone, which is super cool. Um, there's the spells, psychic wave, lightning, fireball. A whole bunch of items that you have to get. Treasures, a bunch of monsters, bats, goblins, giant snake, giant spider, giant tentacle. They're all giant. Um, mummy, minotaur, phase spider, and ghost. Mm -hmm. Great designs. Uh, special thanks. Thanks to the entire Atari Age community, and especially the 7800 com homebrew community. You're all wizards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, extra special thanks for Blues Bloody for the awesome cover artwork. Beautiful. Which is really, really nice. Great work. Uh, G. Tony Morse, box label and manual conjurer. Oh, drop zone for the additional manual artwork. Mm -hmm. Crossbow, aka the Buck Whisperer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's his name now. Uh, James and Tanya O'Brien oh. for, for the zero page homebrew Twitch stream playthroughs. You're welcome. Pleasure. Uh, Muddy Funster, coding and debugging magician. Revenge, coding and debugging sorcerer. Mm -hmm. Random terrain, coding and debugging warlock. Pat Brady, coding and debugging. Uh, Thaumaturge? <laughs> mm. Don't know my D&D &D that well. Uh, Carl G. Coding and Debugging Enchanter. Albert, Grand Archmage of yes, Atari Age. I think he does get Grand, Grand Archmage I think that status. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, there, HDMI mod, there's a VGA mod for the Lynx. I don't know if there's an HDMI mod. Uh, yeah, I also have an analog pocket. I don't, I don't know if the Lynx adapter is one of the ones that comes out first, but they're planning to make an adapter or there's already one out okay okay so, so let's pop that in and i will read the uh pre-written q a remind I me how i get to the up enough now. um the yeah. map uh i'm sure it says in here that... it might be the second button or two buttons together you don't need to go to the oh there's two buttons uh fires your spell next available so pause Pause brings up the map, sc map screen. Okay, so let's okay. switch over all the things. All the things. So I have to switch over to, I have to switch over a switch box and also the retro tink. So it's in the right mode. So it displays nicely. Oh, hold button one and press button two. If that works, that's even better. <laughs> there you go. Totoro? Yes, Totoro. Mm -hmm. Totoro. <laughs> ah. And a soot sprite. And a soot sprite. We actually went to the LA uh, Academy Museum Academy when we were there. Academy Museum, and they had, oh, I didn't switch it over. And they had uh, a display of oh, the animator. Miyazaki's. Is that his last name? Oh my god. Ghibli stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was quite good. And just like the museum in Japan, you're not allowed to take photos. Mm -mm. So we didn't. We got photos outside. Okay. Is it on the right input? I guess there's no sound in the menu right now, I think. Here's your joystick. Thank you. So you can go ahead and give it a run through. 
play normal. hard. Go for hard. I'll do normal. I'm not. I. I. I, I, I want. I think we won on normal, not. I don't know. You should do hard. Because <laughs> it's going to be a short game anyway. Oh, there's the sound. I think I turn it up a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Oh my goodness. The star with the 2600 switches is nice. The star? This star? Oh, yeah. I, I forgot about that. Yeah. They do look like 2600 switches. I remember somebody mentioning that a long time ago. Unintentionally. So, Baidu Empire sent in a uh, text Q&A. There we go. Um, I had an idea for the story of the game a long time ago, and I knew I wanted the manual to start with that. Then controls, objects, and monsters. The flow of the manual was pretty clear uh, to me from the beginning. I love that classic game manual set the stage with a story. And I think that was very important for a lot of 2600 games, because it has to set the atmosphere. And then when you play the game, you think back to the manual and you go, I know what that thing looks like. You know, that's not pixely and blocky. Um, um, it really struck me a few years back when I started playing through Pool of Radiance, which I actually did play a little bit of that as well, my C64. Even though the introductory story was just a few pages, it painted a much more interesting setting than modern games' intro cinematics. Words can get deeper than images, but at the same time, leave something to your imagination. Classic arcade-style games always had a fun story to set the mood and background, even if it had little to do with the gameplay. All, I always read those stories when I got games as a kid. They definitely influenced my playing of the game. Even a few paragraphs can paint a great picture and get you in the mood. I also had to have images and brief descriptions of some of the monsters in the manual somewhere. That was one of my favorite parts of the manuals from the Gold Box D&D games. That was definitely an inspiration. Putting it together was pretty smooth because I had a clear vision, at least for the high level flow. I didn't know or care how many pages or what restrictions there are, I can make the basic concept work. Fitting into constraints is half the fun of developing games on classic systems and the manual is no different. This seems like a lot, a lot like Gauntlet, which is great. Uh, yeah. I mean, Gauntlet is scrolling, but it does feel a lot like it because there's monsters being generated. Uh, the process for the manual is pretty simple. Fire up GIMP and start writing. I had no idea how to do the box, though. I tried a few things, but they were all terrible. I definitely needed help with that, and the end result was all Tony, Tony Morse. I just wanted it to, to look like a traditional cartridge game box. We did a few variations of the color. I wanted it to capture a bit of the D&D gold box vibe, which is why we went yellow in the end. I think it helped it stand out too. Uh, the biggest challenge for me was learning how to use GIMP well enough and getting the exact dimensions correct. Al gave pretty clear directions, but it took a couple of iterations. I'd like to think I'm a decent writer, but wow, I did make a lot of bad grammatical and phrasing mistakes. Al's editor, editor's eye was invaluable. I'm surprised at how much iteration that text needed considering there isn't all that much text. Thankfully, Al gave a really good detailed feedback and the manual is much better for it. Has anyone ever noticed the best homebrews are usually a hybrid cross of two games? That's a good observation. It's probably because, you know, somebody, the, the developer is like, oh, I like this game and this game. I like want to see a game style. that's put together. Yeah, the, the movement of one game and the graphics of another or two different mechanics of games. Um, influence of the artwork and packaging. I'm fortunate that there's such great artists on Atari Age who answered my request for help. There's a couple of other really great pieces of art submitted for the cover, but I really wanted to capture that classic 80s D&D style. Not too cartoony or too modern. The hand-drawn look was important to me. I wanted it to look like a game my teenage self would have wanted to play. Blue's Bloody's wiz Wizard looks cool and tough. I really liked the detail, like the skulls on the floor. He did a great job. It was, strong fo it was a strong focused image. I like the Drop Zones artwork captured some of the monsters in the actual game, like the mummy. Uh, I really wanted to use it. I tend to improvise and find ways to make things work. So when I started putting together the manual, I thought it might be a great background behind every page. And I think that worked well. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Oh my goodness, there's great backgrounds. They probably didn't come across on camera, but um, 
in real life it's like a very faded gray. Um, I, Al found Tony Morse and he added that level of polish that only a real graphic designer or artist could achieve. Uh, it was exciting, so exciting for me to see James and Tanya play it for the first time on Twitch. I felt like I actually did something with my time. <laughs> <laughs> if, a, if a tree falls in the forest, right? Yeah. If you make a game and nobody plays it, what have you created? Of course, the feedback was really important too. There's so many parts of the gameplay I took for granted just focusing on implementing and debugging. That's That seeing where people got stuck or frustrated was illuminating. Oh. Creating games like this was a lot of work. Oh, you're getting hammered. Um, but seeing people actually interested in it and enjoying it was very validating. It made me want to keep working to make Wizard's Dungeon the best it could be. What he might be working on next? Murdering me. I had the torchlit maze concept for Monster Maze, the thread on 7800 programming forum for a long time. So you haven't seen that. He's posted, um, I think, a binary already uh, of that. You can move around. Yeah, we played it on the show, actually. Um, I have a lot of ideas for that game, and eventually I'll finish it. Um, oh, so... So after a nice post-wizard dungeon break, I started figuring out how to code, get the code to work. I got sidetracked with a much bigger project I've work, been working on with Packlander and TIX. It's been interesting working with actual artists and not doing everything myself. The scope of the game is such that it may never, not even ever see the light of day, but it's pretty exciting. A lot of design is done, but the code and artwork are taking a long time to get going. It's a big commitment doing these games. Sometimes family, job, and work get in the way of Atari homebrew. Yeah. Damn you, job, <laughs> family, keeping me from making games. Uh, uh, Wizard's Dungeon would not have been what it is without the incredible help from Atari Age members and fellow 7800 programmers. They helped me with so many tricky bugs. The community was so open and sharing. I wanted to give everyone who helped a special shout out at the end of the manual, so definitely read that section. That's an instruction to me. Uh, I think I, did I, did I do that? Yeah, I did. It was all funny. I gave gave, every, gave everybody names, conjurers, magician, sorcerer, warlock, thaumaturge, enchanter, grand archmage. Beautiful um, artwork on this. The game oh is God. a lot of fun. Tanya's uh, having trouble on hard. It is hard. Hard <laughs> is hard. Yeah, we're gonna definitely gonna have to do a playthrough on hard. I, I'll have to look what we played it on last time. I think it was easy or something easy? like that. Yeah, it wasn't too Or bad. not normal. I usually play games on normal. I think we try to, but I mean, if you're playing it for the first time, and it's the kind of game that you... Nice screen shake effect, yeah. Yeah, when you it's get hit, the whole... Simple thing. It's like, start drawing here, start drawing here, start drawing here, start drawing here. That's, that's it. I haven't found a single grave. <gasps> oh, finally. <laughs> oh, boy. Because like... you're almost... Well, you gained a bit of health there. How did I you mean, get some help? Oh, uh, if you kill everything in the room, they'll drop stuff sometimes. Oh, okay. But, like, now I know where the grave is, so when I die... I oh, know the bats move really fast on hard. Bido. Oh, there's Bido. He's in the chat. Excellent. Was that free dirt? <laughs> I think it's a pile of coins. Yeah, you do right? get coins. Free dirt? Oh, boy! That's what I always wanted. Dirt is best when it's free. <laughs> when you have to pay for dirt. Well, you sometimes have to pay for quality dirt. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a really fun it's game. If it's not coming across on oh, uh, gosh. the playing, it's, it's challenging and super fun, especially when you have to deal with different kinds of monsters that have different types of movements. Um, then there's the map. Oh, you've only got one power up. Oh my god. Oh no, it's all I found so far. <laughs> hard well, is it's hard. hard. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. They're really uh, stingy with the uh, power ups and the health on this. Wow. Great, great game. Classic graffiti. Free fill dirt. Uh, someone called them bird seed once, Spido says. Now I can't, un can't unsee them as coins anymore. They're bird seed forever. So it's the Roadrunner bird seed oh, pile. Oh yeah. Pile of bird seed. Way more bird seed than the Roadrunner needs. Like those piles were huge. Like the uh, coyote was using way too much bird seed on those piles to lure them in. Uh let's see. Oh, we've got Dragon's Descent from Todd Fermansky next. Revan Tooling, he's live, so. Excellent. We're gonna have to 
Oh, All you've right. got some extra health. Ugh, it's like five health at a time. Have to cut your game short. <sighs> That's okay. You're only in the first Super level. Super fun. Oh, it yeah. It is. Super fun. Hi, hi, highly recommend. So, yes, yeah, yes, yes. It's a very good game. Um, so, 7800's all warmed up for it. Perfect. Sweet. So, let's go back to here. If you can get him on the line. Sure. I see he's in the... While I eat a handful of biscuits. Can you hand over the... Uh, I am starting to get hungry. Oh, the uh, pretzels? Yes. Have a few of those before I connect to Todd. Oh. And Todd... Does he, did he say it, uh, uh, question? No. Nope, but uh oh, we're going to have to come up with some because oh. we have four things to give away he's, still. He's typing on Skype. He's there. Okay. Excellent. You have, shove a, shove a few pretzels in your mouth and, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard um, to speak and chew on peanut butter at the same time. It is. So forgive me for a few seconds <laughs> so I don't pass out. Oh, he does have a question for the audience. Excellent. Mm. Um, do you have two? <laughs> we'll have to come up with some. We have four. Four to give away. Four things to give away. I Maybe have, I have can... an idea. Oh. You should know the answer. Oh, good. I have, I have an idea for a question. It's a you general it, question. You want to do it now while I eat these? While you eat them? Yeah. Okay. So this is for the gift certificate. Yes. Okay. So, oh, well, we're doing games first. And then gift certificates at the end. Games? There are games too? Two games. Two random, random games or games of choice. Oh, or... okay. Excellent. Oh, Nathan Stroma has one too. Yay! Yay! Okay. Perfect. I think we're almost covered. Okay. Uh, so I'll... Uh... You're not bringing the bell. Ding, ding. I have to throw them in his mouth. Yeah. Ding, ding. Uh, <laughs> So my question is, uh, we have been on the air for a while now. Don't say how long. <laughs> I'm curious how many months we've been streaming on Twitch. Oh, there you go. That's pretty good. So the first I person the to question. guess, do you know the exact number of months? Um, do you need to add it up in your head? No. No. Okay. So how many months have we been tw streaming on Twitch? I hope that's not too easy to find out. 120. 50 months? Um, I'm going to have to actually look it up. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'll scroll back and see who's first. Who's first? One of those is probably right. Okay. It's right there on the ZPH Twitch homepage. <laughs> well, Atari age. Don't give it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that may be incorrect. I don't know if it, it might have reset even. Right? Oh, I'm kidding. He says. Okay. Oh. <laughs> It might be because it's like I don't know, first but you you know you know your first. Uh, All I have to do is look. Yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> it's actually pretty easy. Yeah. I think. Oh no. Okay. Um, He's now going to count on his hands. Uh, <laughs> oh. Okay. So, uh, the same person. Oh my God! What are we going to do? If it's the same person again. If somebody won. That's fine. They can win two. Yeah. Sure. It's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm, I don't like that, but we'll do it for this one. Okay. Because we I didn't put a rule there. It's Vitoko. Uh, 51 months. Wow. Because we started in uh, February 9th. Saves on shipping. It, saves, <laughs> it does. There we go. Al's happy for that. Wow, Vitoko jumped right in Vitoko. there. Vitoko, it's 51 you. months. We yeah. started uh, February 9th, 2018. Unbelievable. So that's four years, 48 months. Yeah. Plus three. Okay. This is the fifth month. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So congratulations, nice. Fitoko. Good job. People were very close. They were jumping in with oh, 50 yeah. and 53. 50, 50. They're all very close. Very, very close. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, Nostalgia got 50, 50 which is off super by close. One. And yeah. Ground Trooper 48, yeah. 50, 53. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'd like one of Tanya's handcrafts. <laughs> Well, I can. Well, I do have to make some more. So we are going to, uh, I think, give some of those away. With who, who was the first prize? Oh, the you mean the very, very first one? Oh, somebody must know. Uh, <laughs> Scroll back. Caffey <laughs> uh, Man Two D got one. Vitoko got one. Vitoko got two. I think it was Caffey Man Two D. Nope, maybe not. That was before you instructed. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're the I one think... sending them. 
<laughs> uh, we'll have to go back through. We'll have to review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure that out. I've already forgotten. I know. Oh, Charles Reese has been here two years, seven months, and nine days. Ah, nice. Who's been here the longest? Oh, yeah, I think Kathy following? Mantudi was the first person. Yeah. Mm. I was okay. close because my subscriber length was about two months left. So, yeah, there we go. They'll be on YouTube. Exactly. <laughs> you can rewind on. You can rewind. You right can rewind now. on Twitch too, can't you? Yeah. Once I, it's put. Once once the once stream is done, done, you can go back through. Yeah, it you as can't well. do it live yeah. as far yeah. as I know. Yeah. Ground Troopers forty-two months. Wow. Wow. Very close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people have been following us from the beginning, which is amazing. So. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. are you good? Um, yeah, I've, I've stuffed a couple pretzels. Okay. That'll keep me fueled for a bit. <laughs> yep. And Todd? Uh, we'll call you Todd. Okay. Yep. Let's We're ready for Todd. Uh, Todd Fermansky. Uh, Dragon's Descent 7800 was nominated for Atari 7800 Best Homebrew Port on the Atari. Uh, Right. Says fueled for another six hours. <laughs> yeah, I don't need much. Hey. There we go. Hello, Todd. Lover of all things dragons. Oh, we oh. can't hear you. That's uh, can they hear you? No. So you're not coming through. You're not on mute, are you? It, uh, hmm. Let me turn off and on. No, no, no. I, I don't think it's, it's any it? settings there. We no? haven't changed anything. I'm going to restart the, the laptop here. Just one second. The laptop? Not well, the connection to the laptop. Oh, I see. Just in case. And... Are we there now? Check, check, check. Does it say muted right there? No. Oh. It does. Oh, it does. Uh, yeah, it says end? you have no no microphone on, Todd. So uh, maybe check for a microphone, turn it off and on again. Oh, now that's disappeared. But it's still no sound. Hmm. Well, you can... Um, Disconnect and uh, reconnect. Uh, no. Go go to your options and uh, test your microphone in Skype, maybe. Okay. I'm just gonna disconnect and, and try again, maybe. Yeah, I can't yeah. hear you. I can't hear you at all unless I mute and listen to Twitch. Oh, so oh. he can't hear us either. Yeah, maybe let's disconnect I'll and disconnect reconnect. So you. we'll we'll connect to you and uh, back up. We're just gonna hang up and call you again. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything here? There's nothing weird here in the settings. No. Okay. Communicate via interpretive dance. Yeah, yeah. We may have to do that. This is when we need the, the sign language, you know. Oh, we're not there yet. Oh, I hear... He's probably on a different plane of existence. Dragon plane. Okay. No. No, still gone. Semaphore. I hear a game. Some people are saying the game's still playing in the background. Oh. <laughs> well, that shouldn't interfere, but... Um... No, we still can't hear you. We did get a battery low warning, but... From what? Oh, the headset. But that doesn't interfere. Um, so, Todd, when you test your microphone locally, does it work? Uh, we can only communicate in yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> it does work locally. Okay. Uh. Um, but what you still, can you hear us? Uh, through the lap. Oh, we're going to have to switch uh, headsets anyway. It's not working? I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, but we are... Um, Hello. Can you hear me now? Our headsets are low, unrelated. So those are just outputs. 
back in there. And I'll get the other ones ready. Short pause. Oh, you can hear him now. Oh, we have sound. Oh, excellent. Oh, good, good, good. Maybe it was an earphone thing. No, then. it's not an earphone thing. These are s s completely no? just output. Okay. There he is. Funny. Funny. Uh, well, that's very odd. Too many inputs, maybe. No. <laughs> I don't know. Into the computer? <laughs> no. Is this working? You guys could hear him for a second. In... Now James broke it again. What is I going broke on? it. Blame. Um, we had sound. That's weird. Is it the that's Bluetooth? Really weird. Um. Oh, oh, now it's back. Okay. Okay. Oh, hooray. Nobody touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the cat away from the cords. Yeah. No we'll cats, blame the cat. No cords. <laughs> Welcome, Todd. Thank Hello. you for joining us yes. today. Congratulations on your 7800 release of Dragon's Descent. Thank you. Very, very exciting. Um, so let's do an unboxing. Well, sure. um, you can talk about the artwork and the artist that did the artwork on the cover. Yeah, that was uh, Benedict Schaeffer. Um, did also did the work on um, the, my first published 7800 game um dragon's cash he actually um mm. actually i was i mean it was one of these cases where i was busy trying to get the game working and and I, i'm a much better programmer than, than i am an illustrator so i was i was one of these cases where <laughs> like i just it was going to be too much work and then he came in with it with a, some some you know some initial sketches and i was like oh this is great this is perfect um yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a terrible drawer as well, but I can I can pretty much do everything else, organize things together, but making the the basic stuff, nope, no good, <laughs> can't draw at all. But I mean, it's, I know my way around like Photoshop and Illustrator and stuff, but it's switching gears. It's hard to go from programming to art and then back. Um. <laughs> yes. So beautiful cover. Mm -hmm. The the dragon is blasting a flying eyeball, which is wonderful there. Programming and designed by Todd Fromansky, built with Batari Basic by Fred Quimby, and 7800 Basic by Mike Asarna. Artwork and layout by Benedict Scheffer. So, uh, how do you know Benedict, and um, how did that uh, translating of the game to him uh, making the artwork go? I mean, that was, a lot of this was all through the forums. Um, that I was looking, through, um, again, trying to get stuff ready and Benedict basically came and said like I would have some artwork for oh, the, for initially for Dragon's Cash, the, the the puzzler um that I was making. And, and again it was it was exactly what I needed at the moment. Um and and helped to lay out the, the instruction manual which is, you know, it's a ton of work. Sometimes it always feels like I mean the the eighty twenty problem. We often get eighty percent of the game done and then the last twenty percent takes eighty percent of the time. Um and same thing with all the, the printed <laughs> materials and such. Um but yeah, no, um, yeah. Ben did a great job, I think. Uh, yeah, especially with the, with um, Descent, Dragon's Descent, getting the um, good pictures of the enemies that you meet um, in kind of this. You yeah. Know. Janice looks great. A, a very, very angry cube. <laughs> well, you, you, learn, you learn to really hate uh, Janice in the, in the game. It's probably one of the nastiest mm. things to come across in the, in the dungeon. Um, yeah, so this is, it was. Dude, a lot of fun going through it, and, and of course, Al, as usual, was an excellent editor, going through making sure everything was was working. And so it was since we've kind of had gone through the process before, we kind of knew what to expect. Um, right. You know, going through, I mean, a lot, a lot of good notes. Um, but again, we have the template down, a lot of the printing and everything. So really glad it came together, and it looks great. Yeah, the 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 outside outline re looks really, really nice, and I don't think a lot of people might notice that with this light shining down a tunnel that you can see the top of the tunnel um, looks really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I love that you uh, included a, a European control pad for the was, 7800 in here. I think that was, I think it was from Ben, but it, it worked, again, works really great and, you know, mm. keeps with the schematics, definitely. Um, keeps with this with the style. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it looks great. So let's pop it in, <laughs> get Tanya playing. 
Oh, that's why the chat disappeared. Oh, sorry, he was full screen. Funny. funny. That's okay. Funny. <laughs> it took over your stream for a, for a minute or two there while we were figuring out sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, because I had to restart. Uh, well, that was one of my troubleshooting, is just restarting the capture from the laptop. Okay, so let's go back to the 7800. I tried to plan all the 7800 and 2600 games together so I didn't have to switch too many back and forth. Um, yeah, Al says he'd take that uh, control pad any day it's... over the 7800 Pro controller. <laughs> I, I, oh my god. I test with it all the time for my other games and stuff. It was to, to a point now where I actually have to figure it, it into the design because you play it for more than an hour, it's, it's, it's a health hazard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, that's why I have many alternate joysticks for the 7800. Um, but I do have a, a European control pad as well, just in case, because I saw it at a convention once and like, well, I have to pick that up. It's just, it's a cute little controller, very much like a, a NES style game pad. Okay, here's my question, um, uh, which yeah. doubles as marketing. I mean, Dragon's Ascent <laughs> boasts thousands of possible mazes. How many mazes? Um, don't 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 select it just yet. I, I want to see how many people get. Oh, how many uh, how many uh, opening? How many initial mazes can you choose from in Dragon's Descent? Okay, so it's the should we stay on this screen? Hmm? No, no, you, you don't have to. Use this. It, you kind of it's almost given away when you if you if you choose maze select on the screen. But uh, oh, oh, okay. and it's it's, it's okay. exactly the same as the twenty six hundred version. Uh, uh, oh, I, think, I don't know how many people know this is a port from the, from my twenty six hundred game. And the game yes, logic is which almost identical. It's exact. Yeah, it plays exactly the same. So if you're good at the 2600 version, it translates. Your skills will translate over perfectly, and it's a, it's a great translation of of the game. Um, nothing is lost mm -hmm. whatsoever. Um, it, either way, the the biggest thing was so, just due to the constraints of the 2600. The walls were lethal. Like just touching them was another danger. Which, which oh my god! Makes the game hard. So I, was, <laughs> yes. I added the option so that yeah, walls don't kill you necessarily in this game. Although you can turn it back on and make lethal walls in there. That's that's the hard mode. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely the hard mode. I, I do prefer to play with non-deadly walls. But if you're if you've hit your limit of of uh, playing this and it's too easy for you, definitely turn on the walls. Um, okay, so. You posed a question. I don't think people yeah. got okay. that, that that was your trivia question. So for the second uh, game giveaway, uh, maybe say your say your question again. Yes. This is for the yeah. Atari Age game. So so there's a maze select option in, in Dragon's Ascent. Um, how many starting mazes can you choose from? Right. So you can select the the maze that you want on the title screen by moving the joystick up and down. And so how many total mazes can you select? So we've got uh, Steps as 255, Arena Foot 99, Serrano Reboot 256, Cyrano Reboot 65,536. One of those is close, but not no cigar yet. Yeah, I thought one of them might be close. Nostalgic 64, Dan AVC 65, Oh, don't complain. It's not hurting you. Ah. I'm going to... Uh -huh. I'll give a big hint if, if, if nobody guesses it in the next minute or two. Um, I'm guessing it's a big number. It's, it's a big number. One of those is, is close. But but again, yeah, the fact that there's a quirk about how the programming works and how random how, how uh, random seating works, uh, especially on the... Oh. The okay, so some of them might make duplicate mazes that are the same. That's why you can't count them as... Not quite, uh, but it's something like okay. that. Uh, I think you might might need to give some more hints. Or we need to... Oh, did it just show a level? Um, level one. <laughs> <laughs> it was level 001001, I think, it showed on the screen. Mm -hmm. So there's six digits... One of those is close and has the right idea, but there's uh oh, okay. Um, the other thing is that it, twist it, to it. the way of the random algorithm I'm using, you can start with a number and then it creates a random number out of it. The, the thing is, is that if you input zero, it will zero out everything. So you actually can't use zero as a random number seed. 
Oh. So does that just remove one then? Or does it remove it all things? One value, but um, the random seed I have <laughs> is two bytes. Okay. Oh, There's got enough programmers in the chat here to, to pick it up. Okay. Uh, Cyrano says 65,535. No, no, I same. <laughs> no, no, you're, 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 on, you're on the right path, but. Um, right. I mean, two bytes. It's two right, bytes. It's 255. But I'm not allowed to. I can't use. It, either of the bytes, I can't use one value. Oh, okay, so. Keep guessing. Come on, you're really close. Just think about what he just said. <laughs> Programmers. I think I've figured it out. And I'm barely a programmer. <laughs> TM event says 98. Yep. Uh, I think that's pretty that's pretty far off. <laughs> I think it, there's many more than that. Oh, arena yep. foot 65,534. Uh, we're going to be here a while if if, you, if you're counting up there. Oh, okay. I thought that was it because you were counting it's, it's, two two bytes. Both can't be zero. It's two bytes, but again, oh, I, I'm but able it combines. To, they're not. They don't. They're they're multiplicative. The first byte's a larger number. I'm, yes. The reason it's around sixty five thousand is because it's two bytes worth of values. So two oh, bytes boy. is two hundred fifty six times two hundred fifty six. Right. Two fifty. Oh, I almost said it. Yes. But yes. Yes. I can't use 256 uh, values. I can only I I have to use a little less than that because I can't use zero on either byte. Yep, we're getting close to a big, big hint. You can do it, people. Get out your calculators. There we go. Sixty-five thousand and twenty-five. Uh, wow. Steps. Guessed by steps. Congratulations, steps. You win a game from the Atari Age store. Um, so Al, if, is Al still there? <laughs> and, and that's oh, yeah, he's still there. Even more mazes than that. Um, that's just the starting mazes, but then I actually add wow. elements like difficulty and different. I, I add another dimension. Right. Right. So there's more variables that can compound the number of yeah. uh, different types of mazes, I guess, that you can you end up in. Right. Yeah. Congratulations, Steps. Good job. Lots of hints. I mean, it was a difficult question because of that little quirk that you couldn't use zeros on both. Right. And then I was like, oh, it's just one zero, subtract. Yeah, no, no. Uh, good stuff. So, it is this is not your first 7800 it actually physical cartridge? Is, well, it, the first physical cartridge was Dragon's Cash. This is actually the first game 7800 game I programmed. And I ported oh, okay. Dragon's Descent from here. Um, okay. Did it kind of do to, to learn? Did again learn how the seventy eight hundred works? How the logic works? How the graphics work? Um, yeah. And I like to think it's actually a pretty nice portable game. Um, and it, I kind of yep. designed it to be a roguelike that's very streamlined. Like, you know, yeah. in, in many ways very simplified, but there's still still a lot of strategy to it. There's a lot of, um, you know, yeah. There's a limit, limited maze, so you know what you have to do in each maze. There, there's some variables and some choices that you get to make. There's time limits and stuff, but it's not like um, you can get super, super lost. There's a there's a limit. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of designed, it's one of these, you know, game design-wise, I tried to make it so there wasn't, it, whatever the optimal strategy was, I tried to make sure it wasn't boring. Um, you know, you can't, oh, it's not boring. <laughs> you, you, you can't farm points because eventually the maze will go black yes. and the shadow dragon will come in and chase you down. Uh, yeah, because that's what I thought when I first played it without knowing that shadow dragon. I'm like, oh, you can just farm. You just keep shooting things. And then you were like, no, no, no. You cannot farm. <laughs> you will die. But but you can light up the rooms with with your dragon right so that does help quite a bit right but then oh, it, there's the shadow but dragon. even kind of minor things like that whereas if you pick up the lamps in the treasure room those give you stronger fire breath but that also limits how much fire breath you have so you still kind of need to be careful with it right um you know so, so again there's um again everything is a, is a trade-off and if you are playing for score you're not getting more powerful but that's if there's an optimal strategy, it's probably like just um, collecting as many 
uh, gemstones as you can, but trying to make sure you don't get hit, it gets very, very risky. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, and that's that's the secret to any good game is risk reward and finding that balance between them while still maintaining the fun of the game. Mm -hmm. And I think that you've you've nailed it here. And it's not too complex of a game that somebody can't just pick up and play it for a short period of time and, and understand all the mechanics of it. Right. Well, uh, it's. I mean, I, I this has a, this is kind of like what I you know how would you make a roguelike for the twenty six hundred to start with, and then with the seventy eight hundred yeah. I kind of said like well I, I wanted to make this look like a game that was like at a nineteen eighty two arcade. You know, it was kind of yes. a golden age era game. Um, even like even the aesthetics I made for it, with the graphics and such. Um, yeah, you nailed it there. Yeah. And um, another thing that people may not be getting if they have never played this game is the momentum. Oh yeah. <laughs> aspect of it. This dragon doesn't stop on a dime. It takes a tiny bit to stop, and you do have to factor that in when you're kind of you're kind of sliding around the maze. You, this this dragon has wings. He gets to, he gets to fly, right? Um, so that's oh, you got to score there. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you do it right, you so, can like while you're moving forward, you can just turn around really quickly and fire behind you while moving forward. So there's oh, you know, you can you can use it to your it's advantage. Slide. Yeah, yeah. So did you have any struggle with getting the right momentum right for for the game? I know it started in the twenty six hundred, yeah, but it carries over. For the 2600, that was probably the most complicated thing was just, um, there's a good fixed point, like a uh, decimal library or a uh, um, part for basic, but it was still a little tricky to make sure that if you don't get the numbers just right, you end up getting like um, jittering or um, it just does, again, only a certain values will feel smooth. Um, mm, and yeah. so getting that to work just right was, was yeah, it took, took a challenge. Once I was in, kind of mapping it over to the 7800 was a little bit of work, but it, um, porting it from mm -hmm. from basic to 7800 basic was actually was actually pretty straightforward. It was really nice. Right. What what kind of the things did you have to massively alter from doing the translation? Over? Logic was kind of one to one. It really it was getting learning yeah. how the graphics worked. Um, Right. And I mean, the, you, the graphics are much, much more capable on the Sony Hundred, obviously. Although you do miss a couple things, there's no hardware flipping. Mm. Um, oh, okay. So you have to like, it's you basically have double the amount of sprites because you have to draw them for left and right, um, which yeah. isn't a big deal. But Jeez. it, you know, it's odd that I would miss anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing that the Twenty Six Hundred has things built into it that just aren't on other systems. Oh, no. Um, oh, oh, don't no. run into him. I'm Big bag dragon. To. There you go. Good job. Um, yeah, like, um, does the 7800 have pixel perfect collision? It doesn't. And so that was... Okay. I mean, I've done enough game programming where, like, that was, you know, it was kind of, you know, it, was, it wasn't even annoying to implement it. Just like, oh, I have to implement it instead of using the... The, you know the 2600 system but um that is also right. if you do want to have like non-lethal walls if you want to have sophisticated wall collision you need to you need to do that anyway um right yeah and and you have one uh enemy on the screen at a time so you don't have to keep track of too many right collisions it's it's the wall and the enemy and and i guess the the pickups right. as well the things you need to pick up yeah well, kind of so it's not too intense not like Robotron, where there's exactly. 200 things on the screen, and they all collide in different ways and produce different things. So, yeah. And there's, um, you know, what's funny is I was able to, to bring in, I mean, even I was able to bring in over all the, there's a lot of secrets in this game. Um, it's funny because uh, people in the forums have found some of them, and they've gotten really close oh. to finding a couple other ones, um, but I've had to keep my mouth shut. But there's... <laughs> uh, in the forms, they do find yeah. there is a, there is a hidden boss. There's kind of two. Oh. There's a mid boss and a final boss, a quote unquote final boss. Um, that yeah. if you're playing normally, like the game will end, but you can play indefinitely, and he'll show up every seven levels. Um, uh, okay. Okay. And so, but then there's a hidden boss. Um, if it, if you if you play a certain way, you can you can find, and he'll give you he'll, the boss will give you a lot of points. Uh, yeah. There's a bona fide Easter egg in, in the game. But I'm not. Oh, okay. Again, um, because people have like almost gotten it. Like they've kind of like. There's other little quirks. Um, 
Now again, I'm, I'm only posting because somebody posts in the forums. There's there's a couple of different types of play that are you know that you're rewarded with um, if you play a certain way or not. You know, like the treasure rooms are part of that. Oh. You you play a tanky character just collecting nothing but hearts. You play a glass cannon collecting nothing but lamps. Right. But you play a greedy, you know, score heavy. <laughs> oh, so. Yeah, you get a different type of gameplay. So yeah, and and that makes for variety. If somebody wants to play a certain way, um, they can. If they have certain skill set of avoiding the characters, but they want strong shots, go for yeah. it. Yeah. No, exactly. And so that's what I like is, and you can play it till you you know beat the final boss in level seven and consider yourself winning the game. But if you're hardcore, I almost consider that's the tutorial. Like if you're gonna, if you're the kind of person who tries to, to play a perfect game of Pac-Man to, to level two fifty five, this game will yeah. work for you because you can. There's this game. If you pick one random seed, it will play through about two hundred and sixty odd levels before it even starts repeating. I don't think anybody's gotten anywhere near near that. So this right. will. Right. Right. You know, if you want to keep... There's no no chance of memorization, that's for sure. No. <laughs> if you pick one seed, it will always be the same maze again. But yeah, there's 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 thousands and thousands of levels. So you can, if you wanted to right. do a... If you want to do a competition where somebody, where you guarantee that people won't want to have played the maze before, you can give two people competing against each other the same seed. They ah, won't know the maze smart. layout, but it will be the same maze layout. So did you develop the algorithm yourself for the maze layout uh, seed combination? Yeah, the, the seed I took from, from basic, um, but then I used that to um, to make my own maze generation algorithm. Um, right. And so a lot of that was based and on the fact that I know every maze has a key, has an exit, and has a, has a treasure room. So I kind of randomly place right. them and connect them in a, in a little, in a certain way so that you can have some loops, you can have some dead ends, but the maze isn't going to be super big. Right. Yeah. There you go. You did much better that time Yay. at defeating the boss. Good job. Well, this is, I mean, um, it's a hard game, but it's, you know, if you play like 80s train montage music, you know, you get a little better each time. <laughs> you get pumped <laughs> up. That's true. Yeah, that does, that does help. A little soundtrack to your gaming. Mm -hmm. For sure. And there is music in um, here. Uh, it's it. Um, again, again, with all the audio over the stream, it might be hard to listen through. But yeah, if I, you know, there's a couple tracks. Um, you know, a two different maze, uh, a title theme, uh, you know, dungeon theme, and a, and a boss theme. Yeah, and is it TIA? This is TIA. Um, music. Um, it's quite good. So you didn't have to even do anything translating it over to, from 2600 to 7800. Even for the, the music. The 2600 didn't have music. Um, but mainly. As, oh. Mainly because I didn't, I just didn't have some space to have an off switch. Um, because uh, really? <laughs> I like to think it's, I've gotten Funny. it listenable on, on the TIA, but uh, with the 7800, you have more space. You can add things like echo. You can add a little bit of reverb. You can make it more complicated just because you have that much more ROM space. I could have mm -hmm. maybe have done something on the 2600, but I had already taken up all the switches for uh, for different options, and I would not want to force somebody to listen to the music if they didn't want to. <laughs> it's always good to give an option in case somebody's just like, nah, I'm out for the music, or they like to have it in silence and just hear the, the sound effects. Exactly. That that it's it's always good to give more options. So it's never bad. Um, so uh, anything else you'd like to add before we let you go, or thanks? Oh, um, or... I mean, again, thanks to again the, the folks who credited the, the just the, the, the Atari Age community has been amazing. Um, getting this all, you know. Um, it's been a huge help between you know the the various forms of, of basic for Atari seventy hundred basic, um, you know Benedict Sheffer of course for, for again this is kind of the reason Cash Dragon's Cash came out first is that he get he got the the materials ready beforehand and um, <laughs> right. and, and it was glad to have him I was glad he was willing to work and, and did a winning job on here and as I said this is part of an informal trilogy so. Um, Right. Dragon's Havoc is I I have the ROM in basically a late beta form and we're we're getting the, the materials ready for that. So I'm hoping to have something showable, at least a demo, um by for uh, Portland for PRGE. Um, Excellent. Looking forward to it. So yeah, that's and then and a couple other games I'm working on. Like um another one is which uh Harpy's Curse after the trilogy of uh, is Harpy's Curse is basically Joust yes. meets Metroid. Um so Ah, 
Yeah, that's going to be interesting game mechanics if, if you're flying around like Joust. Mm -hmm. That's great. Oh, you're on the level seven? <laughs> Good luck. Just trying to get there. I think we'll, we'll watch watch till oh. you die wow. or... Oh, you're close. It's or you level make... seven. This is, yeah. You're going to... This it's, is the... It's the unofficial end. The final of the boss? tutorial kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, this, well, this, you know? this is the first time you meet the, the, the boss. And if you're... The boss. If I make it. Yeah. <laughs> I can give you some directions if you want, but... Um... <laughs> I I know we've done it before. Yeah, it's good to get the power. You know? Yeah. Especially when you're facing off against a boss. Did we make it before? We must I have. Think yeah. we sh I think at least we saw the boss. Mm -hmm. At least on the 2600. I think so, if I recall. Did we pass the boss? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, maybe not pass the boss, but... Ah, run. Oh, good. Oh, got a key. Okay. Good. Just need. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. It's dark time. Or it's starting to be dark. This yeah. is like the warning when when it flashes. Oh, I think the boss is down here. There we go. Oh, that's impressive looking. Oh. Run. Avoid the, the eyeballs. eyes. Do not there look directly into the eyeballs. Yes. Oh, ah. that's a great ah. graphics on the skull here. Oh, ah. good job. Doing great. Nice. Woo. <laughs> Perfect way to end it. So thank you so much, Todd, for coming yes. on the stream again. Thank you. Um, it's great showing off your new game. Congratulations on the 7800 game, yeah. release. <laughs> so much it's, fun. It's a lot of fun yeah. to, to play. That is for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you again. I, I, oh, I, always, I love watching folks play. And thank you again for oh, you just also just for being part, part of the part of this Humber community. This has been it's always fun watching watching your show. So. Wonderful to be oh, here. Oh, thank you so much. It's yeah. it's fun playing them. And, yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So we will uh, talk to you soon. Are you going to be at PRGE? Uh, I'm going to try to make some time for it. Definitely. I'm going to going to make Excellent. an effort. And and even if I'm not there, I'm going to try to make sure that my games are there. Awesome. Take care. See you in the forums. Why there we I, go. Why was why was my mic muted? That's weird. That is very odd. Maybe when you were oh, I was trying to mute the video game because it was playing oh, in the background. Oh, in the background. Okay. okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, no, we were just saying uh, there's four more games to go. Mm. A little bit behind. Mm. Hopefully, VH said C is hanging on there. He mm. is our uh, last live person. Yeah. Um, save uh, save Vladimir for the last. Uh, Last two games of his okay. that we're going to be playing, but we're up to the Jaguar games now. Hooray! I'm excited. So we're going to switch it up for a different console. Yeah. Um, so the next one. Sorry about the no sound. It happens. <laughs> if you watch this show, <laughs> there are things that happen. Uh, the next game we're going to be showing off mm -hmm. is Doctor Typo Collection, and it is a collection of uh, kind of mini games for the Jaguar. Nice. That are all put together. They're all done by Dr. Typo. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get a hold of them mm. in time for the show. Um, so we don't have a Q&A. So we're just going to be going off and playing what we see. Awesome. Yeah, we're just going to be playing a really quickly some of the games. Nice. We're going to be blasting through them. And we'll definitely be playing these later on the show um, at a later time. Um, so this has 
Uh, five games, two Bessie, two 2020, Fallen Angels, Gem Race, and Rings. So let's get up the camera. Put this down on the ground. Oh, take it, take this out for a second. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh. We're two games before we get to put that back in. I know. Sounds like a typing tutor. Dr. Typo's typing tutor. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, there we go. Nice. Dr. Typo collection. Very nice artwork on the front there. Uh, details the games on the back. Tube SE, Tube 2020, Fallen Angels, Gem Race, Rings. Dr. Typo collection. Dr. Typo is the game, uh, name of the developer, so it's nothing to do with typing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're thinking this is, is a typing game. Mavis Beacon, t Mavis Beacon teaches Jaguar. That's hilarious. <laughs> Let's take a look at what's inside. There we go. Um, I think I need to get some more of these boxes from Al because last year... Oh, the folded ones? Like, yeah. Yeah, they're nice. Um, the Jaguar games that I got didn't come with these types. Oh, so, so they, they're kind they of weren't loose. held in place. So I'm going to have to make a list of things I need to get from Al when, at PRGE <laughs> yeah. uh, to fill in the blanks. Ugh. Yeah, because the other ones are just loose. Mm. Sometimes, obviously, he's, he's um, pressed for time to send things out, so things are missed, but it's not a big deal. As long as we get the game. Oh, the game. Yeah. That's what's important. And mm -hmm. and all the packaging, because that's what we're showing off. Mm -hmm. Dr. Typo is clearly the boss battle in Mavis Beacon. Hilarious. Has Jaguar a keyboard? Uh, never. I don't know much about Jaguar, but I'm not sure it had a keyboard. I think it was past I think Jaguar was past the we're disguising our console <laughs> as a learning tool yeah. for kids. Yeah. No. So parents come buy the Jaguar. Oh, yeah. For you me. can learn on it. It's good for school. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Um so there's the there's the cartridge. Um I guess it does have a keyboard. It has little lots of buttons on the Keypad. controller. Keypad. Yeah. Ooh, look at that. Very nice. Race, win, save, survive. Mm. Oh, this is a very thick manual because there's so many games in it. So we're going to blast through this. Play a couple of games. Yeah. There's tube, some tube games. Shows you all the controls. Tube 2020. Really nice mm -hmm. um, manual. Lots of really rich looking artwork. Look at that great artwork there. Mm -hmm. Fallen Angels. That's great. And of course, because the uh, Jaguar has so many buttons, you definitely have to make uh, 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 diagrams uh, like yeah. this. It's not just, well, for the one button you have, mm -hmm. <laughs> this button does this. It fires. Gem Race. Rings. There we go. Credits. There. And that's now we can read who actually did the artwork. If it does, because I couldn't find any artwork on the Atari Age site for this. I don't mm. see any artwork credits here either. Soundtracks. Yeah. Music game. Music game graphics. Nope. For each game, special thanks to William oh, Thorup for creating cover art for each game in this collection, as well as packaging, design, and layout. A little bit closer. Can you see it? Well, yeah. it's not that. So there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes if you just... Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't Gets know. confused. It does. There we go. And the Jaguar scratches at nice. the back. Very nice. Is the Jaguar Scratch and Scratch used for Rage Reset? You have to ask uh, uh, Nathan Strum. Oh, he, it does he look like it. that, and I'm guessing that's what it was. Yes, very art. Atari Age says, "Do you want to know a secret about this collection?" Of course. Of course, all everyone. The secrets. All the secrets. <laughs> okay, so let's switch over to the Jaguar now. Uh, yes. Oh, there are two hidden games. Two hidden games. Oh my god. Two. This is a big Not collection. one, two. Very fancy. Okay. 
and my Jaguar is um, plugged in through SCART. So let's get that going. Does this cartridge work like a multi-cart? Well, there are multiple games on it, if that's what you mean. <laughs> but I don't think there's an SD slot in it, or any way to load. Oh, no, that's not Jaguar. Number four is Jaguar. Wish I could label these. Mm. I'll have to make a little printout. Uh, okay, let's go to that one. I think. Oh, that one. I actually have one for this. Boom. Okay, here's your controller for the Jaguar. Thank you. Let's get oh. that roar on the oh. screen. Oh, red fail! <laughs> I, I think I need to. I think I need to clean my cartridge board. Yeah, we were having this trouble before. I love the red screen, though. It is quite dynamic. Ugh. Oh. Authenticity. Okay. <laughs> See, I threatened it by standing near it. Yeah, that's why. That's what you got to do. Look at that Jaguar. Nice. Atari, it's one of your cousins. Nice. Very nice. Is this a Jaguar or the Virtual Boy? Yeah, it's 3D. Put on your 3D glasses. It's Virtual Boy time. Dr. Typo collection. Very nice. Wow. Jack. Yeah, it does dip. Good. Uh, A, B, C to play. You can pick any one. D-pad to select game. Oh, select the game first. So two Bessie. Might as well start with the first one. D, the, what? D-pad? This pad? That, that. Oh, yeah, okay. That's... Yeah, I re I've replaced the D-pad on that. It's a modded controller. Oh, I see, yeah. So Fallen Angels. Gem Race. Rings. Rings. To Bessie, go for it. Should be A, C, B to play. It's a typo after all. Very nice. I love tube games. We played a tube game on the yeah, Atari 8 bit as well, and that was super fun. Oh my god. Oh, that's very loud. Oh, geez. Intense music. Go, 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 go. I guess stay on the green. Whoa, jump, jump with the, uh... ah, ah. so I don't have any Q&A answers, so we're just going to play a little bit of each game. Is this, is this just score or it slows you down? Uh, no. Oh, super fast. I don't see score. You definitely need to jump when it's, uh... I'm guessing you stay on the green for the safe parts. But you don't seem to fall off when you're not. No, on you're the green. not, which is a it's good thing. It's more of a guide, I think. Oh, it slows you down when you're not on the green. That's that it. makes sense. Okay. Thank you, Atari 800 XL rules. Great job with the ZPH. Love the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing. I didn't even hear that. Silly thing. Probably too much. Too much going on. Oh, it's Nathan Strum says no, but the Rage Reset scratches were inspired by the Jag logo, so they weren't. They weren't directly from the JAG logo. Now you know how better to play the game. So you just stay on the green for fast. The non-green slows you down. And the green does guide you to the things like jumping over stuff and speeding up. I bet you're going to beat your time this time. Ah! Whoa, just made it. Yeah, we played Yoomp. That's what it was. Best time! Okay, different game. How do I switch? Do uh, I go back? Option, maybe? No. Option now? No. Ugh. I tried all the buttons before. Oh. I think you have to restart it. No, no, no. No? I bet there's a enter code. No, no, no. <laughs> 8791, sure. <laughs> They're just different. We could read the manual. <laughs> Is there a back? There must be a back. Maybe not. Ah, I'm starting the game. No. Maybe you hold down something. 
I'll tell you in a second. Okay. Woof, that's intense. Read the chat. Uh, these games are individual games. They have no concept of going back to a menu. Yeah. No, return to title screen. What? Oh. Does Al lie or does the manual lie? Who tells the truth? You might have to hold them down so you don't accidentally. It says both of them. Oh, this is the title screen. Oh, this title screen. Okay, uh, never mind then. All right, that's fine. We're going to have to brave the red jaguar screen of death. No, once it's in, it's probably fine. Once it's in, it's in. Hey, kittens. Meow. You come back. He's like, ah, oh, my food's settled it now. It is I tradition like to not read the manual. Yeah. That is true. Come here. Because everything's a surprise oh, at that sweetie point. Sweetie cat. I'll take come. those. Come here. Come here. So Play let's... some Dr. Typo. <laughs> Play Dr. Typo. It's on the Jaguar. We it's... just need a, we need a mini game that just has a bell to hit. So... Now we're going to play Tube 2020. 2020. Actually, I'm going to play Yeah, you once. should. You should play it. I have nothing it. to read out. So. Yeah, you're not uh, interviewing anyone at this point. So. Gravity off? Sure. Let's go for defaults. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's the first person? Oh, there's the go button. There's the go button. That is first person. Oh, you can bang into walls. I don't think I'm going very fast. But... I don't think you are. Is there gears? No, it is 3D. It's like up and down, left and right. Oh, it's inverse. Okay, I am banging against the walls. Oh, some green dots. Does that speed up? No, that's break. <laughs> Figuring it out as you go. Oh, that's the fun of it. B is start, A is accelerate, C is break. Okay, I'll tell you why I don't read manuals. <laughs> because I never had manuals as a kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did I, really. Um, because I got, you know, used cartridges from, you know, secondhand stores, flea markets, and my Commodore 64 games were... Invert Y. No! Okay. Mm -hmm. I saw that one. <laughs> um, and my Commodore 64 games were... Uh, uh, I think I only bought one, let's say. Let's put it that way. <laughs> my dad got it from his friends, so all I got was a disc, which maybe had a label, which maybe had handwritten on the front of it yes, what it was. Sometimes, not even that. So you put it in, you see how the game works, you not, figure it not out. Not reading the manual isn't going to go well for Gravitic Minds, Cyrano says. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that goes. We did have a look at but it. But it's mostly about the... Uh, artwork at this point. And when we pl feature it on the show, then we will read the manual. But we'll, we'll go through it in detail. Um, yeah. This one does look a little, a little bit more complex. I read up about it beforehand. Fallen Angels? Yeah, you're rescuing people on planets. Yeah. So, altitude, compass. Avoid missing ball for high score. See, that's all, yeah. all the instructions you need. Plasma guns in the middle. Okay. Accelerate. Okay. De decelerate. Okay. Open airlock. Oh god. <laughs> activate shield. Oh god. Land ship. One oh is land ship. Seven is boosters. Yeah, that's too much. We're just going to fly around and D crash into things. D-pad is control your ship. Yeah. One is land ship. Oh wow. Just when you land, it's kill one, two, everything. three. Kill Those are probably survivors. Yep, pilot, pilot killed. killed. Yeah. All right. You, wanna, you don't want to kill the pilot. Watch that cat. Dangerously close to a cable. You want to land by the pilots. Oh, by the pilots. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I, oh. I saw something on your screen. So did I. Yeah, see the. the oh, there's, there's something. I won't shoot him this time. Okay, then you want to go down. No! Oh, no, I pressed Why the wrong button. Why do you keep shooting the pilots? It's <laughs> that one, was genuinely one the wrong two, button. three. One to land. Oh, one to land. Okay. One to land. Oh. I think you have to put those, both those... Oh, there we go. Let's turn around. One to land. I can't. No, I can't see him now. Oh, just I think land. I'm like right on top. I don't know, just okay. land. One. One, landing. Two to deactivate shields. And Shh. three to open the airlock. I think he's coming in. Yeah, now um, boosters is seven. 
Oh, return to mothership. I don't know what that means. Did you get them all yet? I got one. So let's go to the mothership. What yeah, is it? Seven? Or maybe not. No. Maybe you still have one, one to more? To fly into space. Yeah, you may not be able to do it. You follow the, the dot. We're going to crash That's into the ground. That's pretty impressive. It is. Very visually impressive. Smash. Oh, I died. Oh, no, my ship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Very, very cool. Pilot killed. <laughs> Avoid missing ball for high score. Yeah. Gem race is the last one. That one looks a little bit more straightforward. Yeah. Jump, break, accelerate. Jump, break, accelerate. Yeah. Okay. S uh, level select and start game is just... Don't weird. collect the mountains, James. <laughs> <laughs> nice smooth uh, shading on the terrain. I don't think I've seen yeah. better on the Jag. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. So, uh, then there's Gem, Gem Race. Race. Straightforward. What was it? Um, press 1 to 9 to start. I'll go uh, 1. Jump. Oh, look at that Break, horizon. Accelerate. <gasps> Trying to get the gems, I assume that's why it's called Gem Race. Look at all those gems. Oh, I'm going very fast. Oh, I'm missing most of them. There we go. I think they're just nice. individual points. Yep. And just getting points. I don't think there's any points for getting streaks of them. I don't know. No, doesn't no. look like it. It's probably just get as high a score as you can. I haven't seen anything Yay. for you to jump, though. No, it must be... Uh, Level 2, maybe? So a to continue? Pick, oh. Yeah, there must be, the... like, gaps in the road. Yeah. Nice. Rock and music. Yeah. 90s. Love it. Love it. Nine that music. horizon! Do, 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 do. How great. beautiful is that? Oh, yeah. little bit better at not wildly driving, driving all over the road. Man, if that was my Windows background back in the day, that would have been awesome. Oh, I missed the last one. Oh. Very nice. Three? I don't see any... Not any need gonna to jump. I am going to have um... You can pick... Uh... Oh, you're going to die? I don't think I can go back. Um... Oh, I'm in level three, so... <laughs> Love how this car steers. Watch. You can go right off. <laughs> 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 you don't need to use your tires. It's it's a levitating car. Yeah. I don't know why you would jump. It must be on much higher levels. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe you could... Oh, what you could do is instead of taking the curves, like this one coming up, I could just... Jump it. So if you get in trouble, like, off the, off the map or something... Maybe. It keeps you moving fast. Yeah. Of course, you have to take your hand off the accelerator to do that, though. True. And the steering is instantaneous. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Fun stuff. Fun little gem collecting. Uh, Very cool. Race. A paddle would be nice. Yeah, it does look like Ooh, this would translate a to a paddle. Very, very well. And then last is rings. Who knew that the Jag had mode 7? Feels like you could do a 7800 port of this. Even a, even a 2600 port, if you scaled it down. Because all the gems are on different horizontal planes. And do you have a nice sunset on the top that you never get into? I think this could be easily done in the 2600. Because we've seen lots of racing games where the the track goes like this yeah, on the yeah, 2600. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Some, there's an idea that nobody wants to... No one, no one wants to do. <laughs> Unsolicited so, game uh, Rings the controls. Requests. Yep. D-pad. Yep. B is fire. Yep. A option is music on off. Oh, okay, that's fine. And we basically, uh, avoid the red balls, destroy the aliens, cat collect the yellow balls because they give you shield. Okay. And don't collide with the train. Okay. I want that yellow. I think I got it. <laughs> yeah. Avoid the red balls because the red balls are essentially their fire. Yeah. I think I got it. Doesn't really give an indicator that I can Not tell. Really. Maybe I didn't get it. The yellow balls, no, I think you did. The okay. yellow balls just give you Maybe shield. I think oh, your shield? shield is on the, must be on the left. So your shield's pretty full. I, 
doesn't look like anything's hit you. I'm that good. <laughs> there we go. So I'm like, what do the rings have to do with anything? But you're essentially you're running. You're on a ring. You're on a ring. Like you're in, running over and over in a ring. Yeah. So you're, um, there's no accelerate or decelerate. You're just constantly moving on You're this just line. moving and shooting, yeah. Yeah. So it Neat. simplifies the controls for you. And what are the bars on the left and right, does it say? It, uh, altitude is on the right, shield okay. energy is on the left. Oh, okay. I've got lots of shield then. I have not been running into many red balls. Oh, you, you something hit you there. A little bit, you yeah. You go down. As soon as I... Ooh. That one was right in the terrain. Yeah. And it I, is just strictly for score. Whenever I play a game on any system, I always think, how could this be done on the 2600? What's <laughs> <up>? <laughs> like This I, meh. This one is... I mean, you could get the bullets and the enemies, but the scaling is a little hard. You could have, like, two or three sizes of them, but the terrain? No, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, you could have a... You couldn't have any texture to it. Oh, I died. But you could have nice. a small thing going to a bigger thing. Yeah. And have little lines of it moving. Mm -hmm. You could do that. Very good. This cartridge looks like a collection of uh, playable 3D demos. Yeah. yeah. It's just, just Star Raiders. Anything with vo voxels in it is a win in my books. Mm. Like Halo. That's great. So I don't know how Hi. to get to the uh, two games. I'm going to uh, no, leave them. Leave them leave for them. everyone else to figure That's out. True. Yep. Yeah. And we'll, we'll figure it out when we play it on the show. That's right. We'll 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 take a stab at finding the hidden games. So that's the Doctor Typo collection. Um, there's even more bonus ones if you care to look for them. Find them. Find them. Unlock them. Yep. So there's a nice little taste of that. Mm -hmm. So let me go to the next and final Jaguar game. Oh, oh, oh. Pixel says it's my turn. I'm going to see if somebody can figure it out, Atari H says. <laughs> Pressing some keys at power ups. Pr probably some combination of that. Hey, Pac Man Plus. How's it going, Bob? Okay, there you go. Thank you. And the next game is oh, Gravitic yes. Mines. Now you you ooh, ooh, might do you have something to read out for this one? I do. Okay. Yes. I might you might need to give me a little bit of help with the controls. Oh yeah. yeah uh, definitely. Or maybe we'll look at the manual when as you unbox it. Yes. We're gonna have to kick this big fluffy butt off the table. Yeah. Sorry, cat. <laughs> oh, he looks at me. Uh, where's the with treats? Disdain. Treats. Treats, please. You kicked me off the table. I deserve some treats. Uh, so this is Gravitic Minds and the Jaguar by uh, Lawrence Stavely, uh, who's Serrano J, and nice. Ander Lex, a gradinu, a gradinu, on uh, the Atari Age forums. And uh, so this has a lot of stuff that we're going to actually show. Mm. Buried in my box. Nice. So I'll have to dig that out. But we'll take a, a look at the box first. Which is beautiful. Very look beautiful. Look nice at that. Little Do you inset. want to flip it over there? Oh. oh, I had it all queued up, but I didn't flip yeah, it over. Yeah, that's good. Um, so it has a little inset of what the actual game looks like on the cover there. Mm. And here is the back. This time, we strike first. Nice. Some more game shots. Ooh, I want to know what that is. That looks awesome. Mm -hmm. Very uh, organic with a big... Eye? Yeah. Irritated eyeball. <laughs> Very nice. Gravitic Mines is by Reboot. There you go. Same on that side. Depending if you want to put it on this or this. Very nice. Ooh. And uh, I believe Lawrence is in the chat. So if you want to have any questions for him, mm. you can ask away. Oh, look at this. What do we got here? Ooh. What is it? What could that be? Ooh. One of the first two overlays ever made by Atari Age. Ooh. There we go. All these bags. All these bags. It's a big mess I have to clean up afterwards. 
They are gravitic mines. A nice handy handle. I like these handles. I do the Jaguars. too. I think they're really nice. Yeah. That's another back. There is the manual. Take a look at the back. Oh, a Jaguar got at it. <laughs> An Atari. Table of contents. Prologue. Look at that artwork. Gorgeous. Um, I don't have any artists listed on the Atari Age website, so let's go to that right now, if I can find it, so that we know... Credits. Um, here we go. Who did all the artwork? In-game artwork, uh, music, sound effects, mission briefing, uh, level design, font design by Mold, public domain. Oh, here it is. Special thanks to William Thorpe. I believe that's the same person as uh, the other Jaguar yeah, game. Yeah. Uh, for the cover art illustration and additional artwork used in the manual, as well as the layout and design work for the manual and packaging. Great stuff. Look at this artwork. The game, start menu. Oh my God. <laughs> Options menu, miscellaneous menu, uh, info menu, starting the game thing we need is the controls. Mm -hmm. Enter the pin. Enter your name. Get. What are you doing? Training menu. Oh, there's a lot going on here. I'm sorry if we do not do this game justice. No, we'll have to. We'll have to do a full playthrough of this oh, game. Oh wow! Beautiful, beautiful. Look beautiful. at that renditions of what the game, what's going on in the game. Cat is like getting caught up getting in caught. cords right now. Landing pad types. Resource HUD indicator. Oh, this is a thick, thick manual. Oh, Bomb drop pads. Yeah. Enemies, water, gas clouds. Oh my god. So much stuff. There we go. Controls in flight. There's a bit. Uh, D-pad, uh, auto-rotate, main thruster, shoot, convert ammo to energy, convert em energy to ammo. Oh. Reaction thruster, reaction thruster right. Self-destruct, 2 plus 8. Hmm. Uh, pause. Uh, oh, and then the Pro Controller with the s six buttons. Rotary Controller. Ooh, that would be good for this game. I do want to get a rot Rotary Controller That isn't made. what we have? No, we have the standard controller. Oh, okay. So, like this game, it's a thrust-type game where you spin mm. around and you yep, accelerate. Yep. So a uh, Rotary would be really, really good. It's a big game. There's nearly 44 megabytes in that cart. There. Wow. Wow. Wow, 44. <laughs> like, I put in games off the Jaguar multi-cart, and they're like, four, six, eight. This one's 44. <laughs> oh, my God. And there's online scoreboards as well. So very if you get a nice. score, you can submit it to their online scoreboards, which Ooh. is very cool. And there's some achievements to get. And very nice. Mm. Gravetic Mind utilizes Raptor API version 2. Uh, we'd like to thank you for supporting the development of new software for the Atari Jaguar. Your purchase helps inspire developers to produce exciting new games for the system. Gravitic Minds was created in South Australia and Germany and manufactured in the U.S. Very nice. Oh, very cool. Now let's take a look at these overlays, which actually can go in this. Actually, this will help us. I think it will. So I think since it's a one-player game, we get one overlay. So there, take a look at that. Very nice. They're all, s oh, no, they're not just symbols. So let's put it in our Jaguar. There we go. Check that out. Really nice. Actually, it shows better up in camera than in real person, yeah, real life. Yeah, it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Very nice. Okay, so there are actually a lot more s things that you get with this. I'm gonna have to dig them out. <laughs> oh my god. Buried down there. So I didn't want to reveal them beforehand. Oh, oh my god. There we go. Oh wow. And there's one more thing. Fancy. Uh, where is it? Oh, I got it. Luckily, its texture is very easy to find. There you go. You get a hat. Oh, nice. 
nice. Looks like something you'd wear aboard the ship. <laughs> I love it. That's yep. perfect for you. Yep. Nice black hat. There we go. Very nice. Oh, it's sized perfectly. There you go. You, they knew. Al knew my head size. Yeah. <laughs> so let's open up this package of goodies here. Just so everyone knows, the extra stuff comes with the deluxe edition of the game, as well as an 18 by 24 poster that ships separately in the tube, Al says. So this is the um, the things you get with the deluxe edition. So there's the uh, normal edition mm. where you get the game. These are all the goodies that you get with the deluxe edition. So you get the soundtrack mm. composed by Roald Strauss. And what are those songs you heard in the intro of this whole event? Remember when I played the intro to the Atari Age Day where the ship's flying around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. one of the songs was. Oh, used one to, of the songs. One oh, of the okay. songs. Yeah. Nice. Um, very nice. Very nice. Get a coin. Reboot coin. Mmm. It's like a nice. rose gold color too. I like. Jaguar, that. push the button. <laughs> Reboot. Gravitic Mines. Nice. That Push is a button. nice patch. Look that at the colors nice on patch. that. The purples and the blues. It's a proper patch with with like uh, like actually um, the threads on it. Yeah. Yep. Really uh, embroidered. Nice. Yeah. And it looks like mm -hmm. an iron Did on. You? I Maybe. think most of them are. Yep. Get a keychain. Very with nice. It. Gravitic Mines. Push Very the button. Nice. You should play that intro again. We will at the end of the show. Um, anybody that missed it. And a whole package of stuff here. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, this will have to go in the fridge. Nice. More nice. magnets. Yeah, we always like magnets. Yeah. Um, scan QR code to add your score, high score online. Hopefully these aren't like, no. Limited? <laughs> no, like uh, geared towards this particular cartridge. Oh. I, I, I'm sure it's not, but... Um, oh, no, you had a, you had a um, code, I believe, yeah. right? Um, this looks like something from the game. And some more stickers. A whole bunch of stickers. Very, very nice. So you get a ton of extra add-ons. Very cool. And don't forget, a uh, poster as well comes with this. I'm going to put this in here just so they don't get too out of hand. Because it will. It's a nice keychain. Very, Very nice. nice keychain. I don't think these went in sideways. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so let's um, pop in the game. Well, I clean this up. There we go. Okay. Gravitic Mines. Luckily the Jaguar is still plugged in. Are any of those pretzels left over there? There are. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Oh. What the hell? You didn't even show the Jaguar stuff. No. Whoa. That's special. How did he bypass that? He's a wizard. Wizard. <laughs> Magic. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. So many parallaxes growing on. Ew, don't need no Atari BIOS. <laughs> That's what Serrano says. We don't need any... Well, ew works as well. Ew. Are you bending the manual? I'm just trying to open it so it... There. Did these come in this? No. I don't know. I need, I need a, a pretzel. Okay. Flip the damn cards over. What? Oh, flip these cards over. These cards? Oh. Oh! It's more stuff! <laughs> I have to take them back out again. So, oh, here we go. Uh, Gravitic Mines Pilot Identification Card. I'm just going to show that off because mm -hmm. we missed that. Because most of the stuff didn't have anything on the back, so I was like, oh, okay. There you go. Pilot name, pilot pin, registration date. Ah, so you get multiple, multiple cards. Very nice. There you go. Let's 
good. I, I missed that. Thank you for pointing that out. Mm. Loading. Start. Options. We will play this again at a later date. Mm. Um, we're just going to... Tanny's just going to go through it while I read out the Q&A from Lawrence and Ander for Gravitic Minds. Um, tell me a bit about the process of putting together the package cart, manual, etc. I really didn't have a lot to do with this other than I knew after Last Strike and Rebooted that I wanted William Thorpe. Should my pin be on the screen? Uh... Well, it's a random one, so you're just... Well, I'm creating one. Oh, okay. We will not put that on the screen, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, let's just move away from that until you're done it. Because it may save it on the cartridge. I'm not sure of the capabilities. <laughs> Is that your pin? <laughs> okay. Okay, you're done your pin. Okay, enter. Okay, good. Um, luckily he was available and agreed. After that, aside from the time spent writing the manual itself, Atari Ed says, let's see the pin. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. Does the cartridge save states and scores? Mm. Well, the scores go online, but um, maybe it saves your pin? I don't know. Um, the rest was handled by Atari Age, so all credit there goes to Albert. Uh, any challenges you had in creating physical items? Again, no idea. William designed the artwork for it. Ar Albert arranged with another forum member to have them made. I've only seen photos of them so far, but they look fantastic. They look fantastic in, in person as well. Everything is top-notch quality as per usual from Atari Age. That's for sure. Especially all the goodies and stuff as well. They all look amazing. Uh, you need the pin to unlock your profile on the website to see your achievement mm. unlocks. Okay. And that's why we won't give our pin away. I think that's fair. That is fair. Um, tell me a bit about the decision to create a deluxe edition with all the extra goodies. Poster, soundtrack, patch, key, chain, stickers, hat, coin. Andrew and myself have poured everything into this game over the last two plus years. We want it to be retail quality. A game that could have been released in the 90s for the system. And we are immensely proud of what we achieved. Did you die immediately? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, we both absolutely love cave flyers, of which this is. Oh, nice training level. Ah! Uh, oh, you bounced a little bit. No, you die if you hit the walls too many times. Oh my god, this is hard. Thrust games I find challenging. It takes a little bit of practice. I, I did get better at the game Thrust for the 2600 after a while. No, don't turn! Oh. I can't. Um, no, we both that. absolutely love Cave Flyers, and personally, I've <laughs> always wanted to make a game like Oids, which I played so much back in the day on the ST. I guess at a certain point, we wanted it to be something extra special for the players. You're making me nervous, Cat. I know, it's unfair. Life's unfair. Extra special for the players as well, and this seemed like a nice idea. Albert was all for it, so here we are. I'm really pleased with how it all worked out. Albert and William did a fantastic job of putting it together. No. Nope. Oh nope. my god. <laughs> yeah, no um, kidding failure. So here we are. I'm really pleased. Uh, do, 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 do. And a special shout out to the Atari Age user Machine for helping us, us out a lot on this. Well done, guys. Take a bow. And I know, uh, I believe Machine did a whole bunch of patches for other games as well. And he's got a bunch of uh, Jaguar patches too. Oh. oh my God, this is so uh. hard. This is so hard. Bye. Oh, you almost got it. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't because I was using the side thrusters. Uh. Really, you have to get used to the controls. Yeah. There's a very, oh, you can see it way better on the stream. Um, but there's a very subtle that we're looking at Oh, come on. Oh, goodness. So you have to land on it. Right? Oh, perfectly. Yeah. C will auto-level you. Oh, what? Oh, there you go. Oh, I see. It brings nice. you back. Thank you so much, Cyrano. 
<laughs> it is very challenging. Don't take our playing of this game. No, this is literally the first time we tried it, so. I have, to hit, I have to get used to hitting the C button. Yeah. Um, any influences for the look of the artwork by William Thorpe for the packaging and extras? William took the awesome in-game artwork from Ander and created several sketches. There was a lot of back and forth, uh, and in the end, Ander and myself couldn't decide between two of them. A cavernous image oh and one with open sky area. William took that and merged them into one, which we ended up with. It looks amazing, so vibrant, yet totally unique for a Jaguar box cover. Oh, there we go. Pro controller recommended. Then you have the shoulder buttons. I can understand that making it a lot easier because then you don't have to. Oh, I'm gonna die. And one more bounce. Is it C? Yeah. Oh, you did it! Yay! I have to get back now. With like millibar of energy. Carol, Carol. Oh my God, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh, this is a training level. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how you want to... Oh, Metal Lunar says, nice job! <laughs> RC70, wow, nice! Cyrano says, yay! <laughs> yeah, yay is correct. <laughs> Pilot training. Is it just the same one again? No, no, no. They're f no, oh. it is. Did you have... Could you advance to the next one? I don't think there is. I think this is it. Okay. Um interest and reception of the game by the public. The demo was really well, well received. People have only started getting their copies this week, but so far it's tremendously positive. Oh, you're getting better. We'd like to thank Sorry, everyone practice. for their support. What are you working on next? No rest for reboot. We're working on Jumping at Shadows, of which they've released some uh, footage of. Uh, which is a platforming game. There's a thread on Atari Age about it and a work in <laughs> progress page. Oh no! Our score! No one submit that. So you have to go. How do I go back? Training 101. How do I go back? Uh, back up and course. down to change training message missions. Cyrano says. Oh. There you go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Obtain one battery. Get the battery to lower the shield. Beware of the singularity. A teleporter will help you. Um. And a work in progress page is also up on the Reboot website, reboot-games.com and andersitch.io page. We hope to post monthly or bi-monthly update videos as we go along, and there's absolutely will be a playable demo for people to try before they buy. Also announced are the fully licensed Jaguar parts of Gods and the Chaos Engine from the legendary Bitmap Brothers. Hopefully more news on the release date soon, but Albert is currently taking a well-deserved vacation from all this madness. On top of that, there are a few other things going on. Some and some more free mini games, but nothing announced as of now. Stay tuned, it's an exciting time for Jaguar fans. Um, we would both like to extend a huge thank you to Andrew Rosa for their mission dialogue briefing text. <laughs> Whoa, what was that? Uh, the singularity. <laughs> oh. Uh, he created a really compelling story around the missions, artwork, and layout of the maps. His writing makes a, this a much richer experience. Also, a massive shout out to Ro Roald Strauss, Strauss who provided the awesome soundtrack for the game. You'll see and, and hear more from both Andrew and Roald in uh, Jumping at Shadows. For the packaging, I don't have it myself yet, so you're seeing it before me. But remember to write down your pin pilot dash, uh, slash pin on the ID cards. Oh my god. You'll need them for achievement rewards on the website. Right into the, <laughs> right into the red. Cyrano says play the pilot missions. Yeah, we will. We'll play, we'll play so one. So right after this. So that we're not I in I promise a, you we won't just be playing the training. Red Void. <laughs> I mean, they'll be crashing in the pilot missions. But, uh... That's fine. So... It's okay. Uh, how do I go back? Uh, star and, uh, pound. Not hashtag. <laughs> star and hashtag! <laughs> You skipped the training mission eight to training mission eight from training mission one. Oh, oh did? Oh, because I went backwards. That's oh, that's okay. funny. So you went up instead of down? I went down. Oh, okay. Oh, it's okay. No, don't make a new pilot. Keep doing that one. So we'll play this game properly. 
and on an upcoming stream for sure. Jump one, information gathering. We need to disassemble the planetary defense system pilot. Mm, supplies are scattered. One power core, or one medical pod to collect all along the way. Patoko says, how much of that 44 megs are decompressed at a time to play? Oh boy, dangers. Ooh, wow. Parallax scrolling going on here. <laughs> oh, right into it. Go straight up. So you got the foreground scrolling and the background scrolling very subtly, just a little bit. Oh, the guy looks like he needs help. Only two megs of RAM. Wow. Oh, 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 no! Oh, oh no! It, it's so easy to turn <laughs> just slightly too much. Oh. Ah. Well, you needed to get up there. No! Oh, it like thrusts a little too much. No, wrong one, wrong one. Down, we wanted the training missions to have a cyber slash Tron look to be distinct from the main game. It does look like the training missions do look like you're in a simulator, oh right? With the with the very simplistic lines going around, like definitely not real world. So it, I think it fits really well. That's so cool. It looks uh, it's supposed to look like you're watching on a TV. Oh yeah, that does. it too much. Me? No. <laughs> oh, all you do is... And you're both dead. <laughs> and you just spin out. Good stuff. So I think... Let's see. What time is it? Way late. We're an hour late now. Yeah. Well, that's about right. Hopefully VHZC is... Still, still awake. Still awake. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We're not doing the game justice, but we were just looking at the packaging and playing the game a little bit and doing the Q&A. So we'll play the game in full at a later date. Oh, you got the guy. I can see how the, the shoulder buttons would help a lot with the minor adjustments. Because going down to the keypad and having to take your fingers off the other buttons. No! no. Spin, spin, spin. My turn. Yep, go ahead. Watch me crash. <laughs> it's very sensitive. Not too bad, but you just have to. Oh, you probably have to go down. Oh, you, you don't have to get it again. Oh, you don't I've have already to get gone. it again. Yeah. Okay. Which is good. <laughs> oh yeah. Because it is challenging. Probably there's something up into the left there. Oh, that's no good there. Well, I don't know. Maybe you can go in there. Oh, it's coming after me. Yeah. Oh, I thought it just went in a circle. No. Okay. To oh, the left. there. Yeah. Yeah. Going to oh, there we there's go. Your, there's your health. Oh, oh, too much. Hey, nope. Where did you learn to fly? Is that what he said? <laughs> no, that's another game. Yay! Kitty, hello! Looks beautiful. It does. The backgrounds look amazing. The artwork on the rocks and stuff. So now I just go back to my... Yeah. And crash. And crash. Game Mission over. over. Well, I'm... <laughs> We will definitely have to do a full playthrough of this game. Yes. Because um, it's going to take a little bit of practice to get used to it, but I'm sure once you do, it, it it starts to move along really well. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're a bad cat. <laughs> is he a bad cat right he now? He is. I'm so thank you so much, uh, Cyrano and, uh, and uh, Ander for passing along that game and making this game. It looks, it looks absolutely amazing. stunning. It looks amazing. It looks great. Graphics look fantastic. So we're down to the last person and the last two games. Yes. Which is VH ZC yeah. with the Game of the Bear and Night Guy in low res world castle days. Um, and I've got Game of the Bear up 
first. So we're going to switch over to 2600. Okay. And um, let me pack up this stuff first. If you want to get prepared and we have two more things to give away. Yes. Which are gift certificates to the Atari age store. Two of those. So hopefully VHZC has some questions. If not, we will have to make some up. <laughs> Oh, actually, I want to put the, those into all back into one bag here. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice set. I'm I'm looking forward to a more extended play of uh, gravitic Gra minds. Gravitic minds. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot to see and play and do. And I might want to get a proper controller before that because. That looks a little challenging. The shoulder with, would definitely would help a lot. Help I think. so much. Yeah. And those are readily definitely. available. Those yeah. um, controllers. Yeah. So I'll pick one of those up. Sounds good. Before we we're, before we play it. We do a, a full playthrough. Yeah. Next. Next is Game of the Bear. Uh, we're gonna see if. Uh, see online. Here. Last I don't scene. See it, but. Uh, let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. Can I keep this on? You want to wear it? No, no, it's I'm going to okay. keep it on. Oh, it's, it's okay. It's cute. I like it. It's part of the whole thing. All right. Um, okay, let's get our earpieces back then. Oh, yeah. I took mine out, didn't I? Hopefully, VH said he hasn't given up. If not, <laughs> we will enjoy his games. Yes. That's okay. So, if you can get him on the line. Hopefully, he'll answer. We are an hour late. We are an hour late. Oh, oh he is. He's awake. Still around. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Vladimir. Can you hear me? How are you doing? Thank you for staying oh. up. Oh. Uh oh. Are we having the same problem? Oh, because these might have um, timed off? out. So just hold with us a second, Vladimir. I mean, we're going to switch, switch ear pieces. Again. Now, now we're going to. The ones that. You have yours? Yep, they're over here. Hopefully these connect automatically. And we can hear right away. So, test, test, test. Hello? Nope. Uh, okay, nope. let no. me connect these up. Uh, oh, our... Uh, this turned off. Oh, that would be why. Hopefully this, yeah, it's still flashing. So we'll get it paired up. I can hear. Oh. Oh, I think Hello? we're good. Hello? Hello? No. One is connected. And I hear fuzziness. Hi. Hi. Uh, Yes, hey! there we go, hey. Vladimir, welcome. <laughs> hey. we get, Thank we you for bearing with us yes. no pun intended um <laughs> I was uh, thinking for, we always run a little late tonight <laughs> yeah i didn't we didn't forget about you thank you <laughs> thank you for thank you for staying with us and welcome i think this is your first time on the stream yeah yeah the last the last year i was unable to make it time but i'm really happy that now i can be here uh, oh we're happy you're here too yeah and uh, we always I look forward to your games mm -hmm. and enjoy playing your games on the stream mm -hmm. as you know every time your game comes out we play it over and over again oh are we still good did yours beep so. yeah it oh, beeps. i hope so yeah. um so this we have two games of yours being yeah. released in yeah. this batch game of the bear which we're going to look at first always amazing graphics mm -hmm. uh, uh an artwork on your on your covers of your boxes and in your manuals so let's take a look at this. All right. Let me bring it up on the cat cam here. Game of the Bear, very super cute bear. And I think you said you made this one a little bit simpler for your kids. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. For... Uh, he's my my main sister. So, so. Uh... Oh. Okay. Oh, this is out of battery. What is? That's okay. Hello? One second. The earpieces? Not the earpiece. The transmitter. We may have to go manual mode, but
but we're going to try it a different way first. No? Might have to give it a second. Oh, there we go. it's going to be terrible listening for us, but it won't matter to them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We are back in business. Sorry. Continue on. <laughs> uh, my, my son is my main tester. So um, it, this game was uh, some sort of prize to him uh, for mm. endure all the other games you know, that are a lot more hard. So <laughs> that is why I, I choose to go with a low difficulty. In comparison, yeah, that, in comparison that, because it's not a so Relatively, <laughs> yes. Exactly. Because <Yeah. laughs> some of your games are very challenging and these are a little bit, they're a, a, a lot more less, open and uh, fun and light and yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So you do all, you do everything top to bottom. You do the programming, you do the graphics in the game, you do the music, you do the sound, and you also do all of the packaging, which absolutely just blows my mind that you're able <laughs> not only to do this all creatively mm -hmm. and be super um, highly skilled at all of this, but that you have the time because it seems that you churn out one game every couple months. <laughs> every time I look, it's like, oh, VHZC has a new game. Oh my God. <laughs> so how do you, how do you, are you just really, really fast or are you just, you dedicate a lot of time to making these games? Uh, no, I don't have a lot of time. I have a regular job like everybody, but I, <laughs> I think it has to do with the fact that I am a designer for my formation, I'm not a programmer by formation. I never have a formal programmation uh, uh, education. No? I, I studied design, graphic design in, in college. Mm -hmm. So my approach has to do with, I, while I programming, I also thinking the illustration. I'm thinking the scene that will be in the manual. I, I think the scene that will be in the, in the cover. So I, 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 I am making all, eh, always. Yeah, I don't have yeah. a time for programming, a time for designing, a time, no. <laughs> in my head, oh, right. this is a cool scene. It is showed in the manual. I have, I do a sketch in that moment. So, um, right. in fact, I have a here, the sketches that, I was doing will I uh, was programming oh. in Games of the Bird. Uh, this is in the manual. This is in the cover because I I made a, an asset and made a street and said, oh this should be in the manual. This should be in the in the cover. So I made right. all all the time. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh. uh, now. What with is hard for me is the the music. I have no idea uh, about music. So in yeah. in game of the you know, of the bear, I think I I made some nice tune, but uh, but I have no idea what I was doing. I just try <laughs> and I never. But uh, your music is is really well done as well. So um, I wouldn't uh, discount how good the music is and and this manual that it's super fun and playful like it looks like a kid's book almost it's just mm -hmm. it's beautiful it's simplistic it's very sparse it's not dense reading so following the tip that you're a for my kid it's the same yes. exactly yeah and and i think you executed that perfectly for the audience that you were going for yeah so we're gonna pop it in. Um, it does have the feel of a children's story, yeah, the, the the manual a little bit, which is really nice, yeah. Okay. Or a comic. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> in, in previous uh, manuals, I was with more with the comic theme in in, in the manual mm. for uh, a roach the space. In fact, it included like a coming up to that it called like uh, old comics. Yeah. Uh, 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 in this one, I I went with a, a children's book. Let's start. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. I like it, yeah. Oh my god. One second. All right. Are you okay? Yep, just turning it down. Okay. <laughs> Everything's at a different volume. That tune was uh, like yesterday, and I have no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Plugging in numbers, and uh, okay. it just worked out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's very catchy. It's really, really nice. So, if you want to grab the this joystick, okay. and we'll just... I mean, people have seen us play this, because it's such a fun game. Yeah. There we go. So, uh, where did the concept of, of the bear come from? Uh, is, is this related to, does it go back to anything? Uh, it, it's funny because uh, it was based on a beer. I was drinking something. Uh, oh, Somebody was drinking a beer. beer. Said, oh, I told me I gave you that. <laughs> And the bear is the bear is adorable in the game. His yeah. his little face. I mean, what you're you're able to get out of the simplistic uh, Atari Twenty Six Hundred graphics is is always amazes me. Um, your your innovation for level design and reusing multiple floors in levels. I, I'm always. Uh, uh, astounded by, and you've really upped your game lately with with Game of the Bear 2, with like moving blocks and moving things around on the screen to enable the character to do more things in the game. Yeah, because with, with the time I uh, I have learned uh, to to work more with the uh, Flyfield Pixel. Uh, and at the beginning, I, I only more the spread and, and such, but now I taking advantage of the PF pixel, the playfield pixel. So that was allowed me to more blocks, more uh, uh, platform and such. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Um, and and. You always see themes in your games. I mean, I talk about this on the show. You, you bring back characters and you cross over characters, the skulls, the pong, and, and stuff like that. These are just things that uh, you love in games and you, you, you like to keep them going in throughout your games. Are they all part of like one big universe, <laughs> almost? Like the VHZC universe? Uh, yeah, I, I like how other games made that. And for uh, for example, RPG like Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest. Never mind what which Dragon Quest you are playing, you will find a slime. <laughs> uh, uh, never yes. mind what, what, which <laughs> Final Fantasy you are playing, there will be a seed on a guy. <laughs> so I like that it's a completely different story, but. Uh, the, the scenario, the the ambient, the nature is the same. Yeah, yeah. I like that and, concept. And it and and it shows that okay. You, I think anybody who looks at one of your games can instantly recognize it as one of your games because of your distinct drawing style and the the things that you put in the game. So I think it's very advantageous that you know you cross over the the skulls and the pumpkins and all these fun things um and it and it gives somebody people you know they point at the screen and go oh look there's the skull or there's the new use of the pong going on and in, in in your in your new games yeah it's a lot of fun um so before we uh go to the next game um did you come up with any Difficult. Uh, some questions for the people, for the so they can win the prizes for Atari Age. No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. We will come up with the last two at the end of the show. Oh, dove off. Um. So, the next one. Night Castle. Night Guy in Low Res World Castle Days. You like the complicated uh, titles sometimes. <laughs> um, is this the? First 7800 game? I think you've put out another. You've put out other ones before. No, no. That is uh, my first one. No. Very but, first one in uh, physical format. Oh, that's excellent. Um, um, very first one 
very fit one at all. That is my first uh, 75. Oh, excellent. So we're going to take a look at that one now. So let me just adjust things here. And we'll switch over to the 7800. So you like the ninjish guy and knight guy, and uh, that's another theme in your games. Uh, you like, uh, there's characters that you like to continue with sometimes, and, and also do it on the 2600 and 7800 as well. You do one version on one and one version on the other. And um, just like Revan Tuli, it translates over so well. Like your, your games play very, very similar on both platforms. Mm -hmm. So you're able to carry them over all the, all the movements, all the dynamics, all the looks of the enemies and the players, and even the level design. Um, it's, it's astounding. So let me bring this up. There we go. Night okay. Guy in Low Res World Castle Days, a game by Vladimir Zuniga. There's the side. There's the back, a couple of screenshots. A little squid there. Some uh, skeleton dudes. Your pet has been kidnapped by an evil dragon. Are you brave enough to rescue your pet? Aww. And I love the option you gave in this game to uh, <laughs> allow people to pick a dog or a cat because there's a big divide, usually with people, <laughs> whether they're a cat person or a dog person. That's so are true. you a cat person or a dog person or I am, both? I am a cat person. Uh, that option was uh, added because a crossbow doesn't like cats. <laughs> so, ah. he doesn't want to save a cat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that makes sense. So we have crossbow, cross, uh, crossbow to blame for that, eh? Yeah, yeah. so it, it was originally maybe just saving a cat, yeah. but uh, I think that's a smart, that's de very smart decision to, to put the dog in there as well. And the dog, and the dog was based on uh, a, a Steven dog. Uh, he... he, he, he Ask for a specific kind of dog, and it's basically in that. <laughs> so, oh, so, nice! Uh, That's hilarious. I made that because uh, uh, Steve and Crossbow uh, Trevor uh, were the testers, so I, I had to go. <laughs> you have to keep <laughs> your uh, game testers happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look through the manual. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice manual. The layout is really great with. Um, just the spacing, it's not too dense. Mm -hmm. it is, it, it's very, very much like the other one. Yeah, but still has a bit of the, the feel of a comic book too, you know, yes. like with the, with the writing and everything. I very like comic booky. So yeah. you, get, you get the night guy traveling through the manual mm -hmm. with you, yeah. explaining things to you. Uh, and he ha has a little different action each page. That's great. Yeah. That's the, 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 the final uh, manual. Uh, have a lot of correction and, and work of Albert to Albert uh, uh, help to complete the, the, the work so it's, it's yeah. also part of, of from him this man I made the, the graphic I made that he uh, yeah. helped in the diagramation in the in the correct position so it's my mm. work but, but also his work. <laughs> Yeah, Albert, uh, I, I hear his name pop up over and over again, yeah. this Albert character. Uh, uh. Yeah, he uh, sounds like he has a big hand in a lot of, you know, the finalizing, the finessing mm -hmm. of things to make it really, you know, streamline and work really well. Um, oh, I love all the artwork. It's not, it's not just uh, video captures, let's say, from the game. Like mm -hmm. you actually, no, 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 no. Bad cat. Bad cat. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll rescue a dog this time, huh? No, bad cap. <laughs> um, yeah, the the manuals aren't just screen captures. They're like like you showed on the screen there. Um, artwork directly from you. Mm -hmm. And I love that the little uh, night guy is actually playing a seventy eight hundred there in the corner. That is adorable. <laughs> it's very sweet. 
There we go. Developed by Vladimir Zuniga, tested by Jesse D. Hardesty, uh, Steve Ramirez, and Trevor Box. Label and manual artwork, Vladimir Zuniga. Special thanks, James O'Brien. Albert Yeruso. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. Thank, thank you. you. And Albert Yeruso, published by Atari Age. There he is, relaxing on the back cover. Mission accomplished. Cats. He's all happy. Cats Slash and dogs. Dog has been saved. All saved. Very nice. <laughs> Let's pop this in. All right. Oh, the oh, colors are going to be bad. There's, so. here's, are, we, are we rescuing you today? I don't know. Is I a don't cat? know. I don't know or if he's a, a good cat. Bad cat. Yeah, we'll see. So, Let's uh. See. The 7800's been off for a bit, so just bear with the incorrect colors. Where's my little remote? Can you hand me that? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's get both the unboxing cameras off. Boom. <laughs> let's load this up. Vladimir Zuniga's first 7800 release. Nice. Nice. Have it on the right audio. Everything should be good. Yep. That's uh, on that one, I think. Yeah. There you go. Oh my goodness. Always the, the room's always a mess after <laughs> after the you should see what's outside the camera view. It's just stacks of stuff yeah, being unboxed. Everywhere. Everywhere. All right. Oh, who no. are we going to choose? Oh, I don't know. Oh, fine. I'll, I'll save, save the Atari. cat. Yeah. Your cat was kidnapped by an evil dragon. Good. Go and rescue him. So, uh, this was this was also on the 2600. It's so, there's you make so many games. I lose track. This was, yes. Yeah, but uh, when I completed this version, I feel the other version was Water down, so I, I am not sure how continue uh, his development to to maintain the level. That's how it's in a, right. in, in a hiatus. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So now, now that you developed for the twenty six hundred and seventy eight hundred, which is, which do you find more challenging, and which do you find more fun to develop for? Uh, 2600 is my comfort system to the, the, the develop for because it's a lot easier. Uh, mainly because uh, 2600 has hardware collision detection. It's, it's a lot right. less work <laughs> to do when you have that. In 7800, yep. I have to program every collision, every hit box, so it's a lot of work. But also right. uh, the 700, um, 7800 have this beautiful uh, graphics, so it's complicated. Yeah. But my, my comfort <laughs> system to the level 4 is the 2600. Oh yeah, it passes by, I, and sometimes to clean my head, my head I, w <laughs> I, would, uh, I write a, a 2600 game, just to... <laughs> just thing. cleanse cleanse your palate and make a couple 2600 games for a bit yeah, yeah exactly. oh my goodness yeah you have put out so many so many games um so how many how many games have you put out uh physically now i don't i think mine are blocked uh like three or four or? four four um, four yeah uh, a rotten space ninja's guy Night Guy in yep. Lord of the World and uh, Game of the Bear. Yeah. Right, yes, yes. But uh, I, also, um, and, uh, I also have helped in the design of artwork for another people. Uh, I made a. Uh, you, yes. you have to have some. Uh, and Holly. And Holly, I made the, the artwork. It's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, oh, it's beautiful, oh. beautiful cover. And oh, I'm so. Oh. Yeah. It with, looks so so good. With our holy was, so uh, I, was a little uh, harder than other because uh, Hal, Albert uh, insisted I need a blacker black was was <laughs> 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 uh, a little harder than other. I made a uh, artwork for um, uh, trip. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that's a way back and uh, I totally forgot back. about that's that. The, I didn't even know it was you. That was my first approach to the home scene. 
before oh, that's a f- uh, evil magician that's a fun uh, game evil magician uh, yes um, yeah that's uh, that's very distinctly your style the evil magician now that i uh, know that you also made that one as well and cannon head clash that's oh. right yeah gorgeous and it, it still astounds me that you have time to make all these games and do artwork for other people and and you also say oh i have no time anyway <laughs> that's a that's just amazing and i always look forward to new games by you and updates by and it's fun that you release the betas it's like oh this one has 20 levels then then you add more oh it's 40 levels now it's 60 levels and people can get good and play get good at those levels and and continue on and you expand the game um in that in that method so that people can come back to it and it's not just like oh i've changed the way you know something hits something else no it's like a whole bunch more levels to play <laughs> so it gets people people coming back playing the beta testing yeah and also i i can um, test every level and and adapt the, the previous level to the way the people played uh, by example, in, in, in Night Guy, a lot of, of previous level was uh, uh, difficulty was uh, arranged because crossbow <laughs> uh, was <laughs> too good. <laughs> too good. Yeah. Uh, I had to add what, what we, uh, we call uh, anti crossbow barrier, anti crossbow <laughs> system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good having these beta testers that are of different levels of skill. Like Esramirs is amazing and Crossbow is amazing. Um, but it's also good to have people that maybe are not so skilled at playing the game and so that you can appeal to a wide range of abilities. Yeah. And um, so that it can be fun for people who are good at the game and people that are just like beginners at playing so that it can be fun at every level. Because I know that a lot of your games have timers in it. So, like this one, so that you can, okay, you can play the game, you can finish it if you're a decent player. Um, but if you're a really good player, then you can do a speed run on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, also, uh, it uh, helps to set a standard and, and say, well, if people can beat my game uh, within the same time, the same time the uh, crossbow, then I call the, you have three stars, by example. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like a trophy, uh, el, the, the crossbow trophy. Uh, the crossbow trophy. If you can beat crossbow, you, you did a good job. But also yeah, I, he's... But also I like to man, man, maintain a certain difficulty, uh, no, not too low, I, I like to, to think my, game, my games are uh, close to NES games. NES games are hard and people yep. accept, so they can, and now, now, that will uh, play a hard game. My game, the yep. same. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't like. You don't really. You don't provide games. continues too much. I know a roach in space. You provided a couple continues, but in your newer games, it's like no, you got to start over. Sorry, and 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 I find your games a good balance. I mean, they are hard, but after you play them for a while, you get an idea. Oh, I have to jump there. I have to do this, and it's a tiny bit of memorization. So um, I think they're very fair. Your games. I, I try to make uh, make them fair to avoid uh, uh, always the the cheap the cheap death cheap uh, death. because I hate yeah. cheap death. Uh, <laughs> um, oh yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I think your games do thread that balance where it's like you want to make the player feel that they can do better. It's their fault <laughs> exactly, exactly. when they die. If you die it's it's not the game's fault. It's it's not the joystick. It's not, oh, the controls are bad in the game. It's like, no, I I messed up. I definitely can do better. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, you went Got back. Me. Oh, you still have one life. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Wait till it slams. Oh. Uh, Excellent. <laughs> well, I'm so happy to have you on the show. Mm-hmm. 
finally, it's it's great to see you in person. Um, is there anybody you'd like to thank? Obviously, the beta testers, but uh, anybody else you'd like to thank, or anything else you'd like to say before we let you go? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you everyone to stand my very bad pronunciation. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to thank thank to guys in Natalie H forum in general. Yeah, no, no, just the testers, but everyone, yeah, because uh, uh, there is support, there is feedback, there is a lot of uh, that. We, without that, I simply can uh, make make the, that game. I, I, by example, I, I have not still I have not uh, Dragonfly. Yeah. So so all the testing, all the, the it's by them. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And thank to you the all the zero page home uh, homebrew uh, crew. Uh, because oh, uh, thank I, you. They uh, told my game and that had a lot. Uh, and my son, my son is my my main tester. So <laughs> also with. <we> <laughs> uh, it's I good think, to have an in-house tester. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, but I think my my son is getting too bad uh, in my, at my game. So, <laughs> so I will need uh, a <laughs> uh, 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 tester with with the uh, no not too good to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, excellent. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Um, we're always happy to play your games on always, the show. Always, yeah. They're so much fun. Yeah. I just get really excited when I see a new game come out by Me you. Me too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so thank you for coming on, and congratulations on your first 7800 physical release. Mm -hmm. And Game of the Bear is super cute, and I can't wait to see Game of the Bear 2. Yeah. On physical release yeah. as well. I, I have a so, lot. I have a lot of game in in in, in way to ooh. to be released. So, to, to I hope to ooh. be here uh, the next year. Next year. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Excellent. We would welcome you back anytime. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Vladimir. And uh, we will talk with you soon. See yeah. you online. See you later. Bye bye. Good night. Have a good night. Ah, so good to uh, finally have him on the show. It's great. Mm -hmm. So we have two more things to give away before we wrap this up. Oh, yes. So we have to think, or or Al can post something, or uh, Nathan Strom could post something. Um, anybody can come up with a question. Yeah. Um, let's see. But we should think up another one. Uh, the one I was thinking of is kind of a, was kind of along the same lines as you did. It was okay. The, it was a date-based question. Oh, but, I see. Yeah. Um, that's not going to work because you already kind of did that. I know. We should have come up with questions. It, like, <laughs> I know. Cause... It was about ten minutes before he was about to start the stream. He's like, "We need questions," and I was <laughs> no, like, ah! "Oh my goodness, okay." Because I was concentrating on s so much other stuff. Um, mm, somebody's making something that smells good. I know we're hungry now. Someone's, yeah. someone's barbecuing on their patio. I think. Oh, it is barbecuing uh, time. It is so barbecuing time. <laughs> Got to get that going. Yep. Um, um, let me see. Al, if you have a, a good question, you can just type it in the chat. Um, who else is left? Something um, game related. Actually, Arena Foot. If you have oh. a good question, you have a lot of knowledge on stuff, uh, on homebrew games. Not too hard. Um, hmm. Let's see. Oh, I, I know one. You got one? Yeah, but I have to look it up. Actually, Arena Foot will know the answer. <laughs> Is Arena Foot uh, listening right now? <laughs> yeah, I, I see him there. I see him there. Okay, too. so I have one at least. Okay. What year was the first homebrew game released? Now this is game. Wait, what year was the first homebrew? So how do you homebrew define game. how do you define it? After the uh, oh, oh first homebrew Atari Twenty Six Hundred game. Sorry. Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Very specific. Uh, so it's after nineteen ninety two. Okay. Because that was the discontinuation. So of what it. year? RC seventy wins. I'm pretty sure it's nineteen ninety five. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Twenty six hundred. Yeah. It's twenty six hundred. I yeah. said that after. Mm. Um, <laughs> not really a question. I'm probably incapable. Come, oh, RC seventy is correct if Arena Foot Arena Foot can confirms it. It's ninety five. Yes. Yep. Nice. 
There's some bonus music as we <laughs> pass by. Yeah. So RC70, congratulations. Yay! You win a gift certificate from the Atari Age store. Yes. Good stuff. <laughs> um, so we need one more question. One more. What's oh, a good boy. question? Oh, S. Ramirez says Edris. I don't know if that's... You get a bonus point. You don't win anything. <laughs> Uh, yay, RC70, congrats. Um, uh, who won that? What's it for? <laughs> Atari it was, Age. <laughs> it was for a gift certificate for the Atari Age store. Yes. And it was RC70. RC7E. Yes. Okay. 94 was not a game. Let's, no, it was not a game. Let's find something it was, a little uh, bit harder. <laughs> um, Looking at a shelf. No, like pick a game and it's year of release. I don't know. People can oh, look that's, stuff up, though. That's, that's not good. It's hard. Um, oh, oh, oh. A sound X was the oh, first. You know, you know what we did last time? We pulled a cart and described it until someone, that, someone that was got kind the of answer. Fun. Why don't we do that again? Okay. So if you can go to Is the bin. Is this a classic cart? Or? Oh, let's do a homebrew cart. A homebrew cart. Okay. I'm going to pick one of the uh, loose ones you, I don't have a box for. Yeah. You can't see it because no, it's on the shelf. No, they can't see it. This is a good one. This is a good one. How many box games does James have on his Oh, shelf? my God. <laughs> a lot more a now. A lot. <laughs> it would take us a while to count them. Um, uh, oh, that's hard. Oh, hard is good. Yeah, it'll be the last okay. one, so... Here, put it behind the pillow. No, uh, they can't see it. Oh, well, still, put it behind the pillow. <laughs> okay. There you go. Okay, this will be good. This will be good. How many... Is that the question? How many box games? Well, that's just guessing. That's not as much fun. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, this game... All right, so... Maybe you describe it. Me? Okay. Uh, so you have to guess what this game is. So you know what system this is for, It's right? a Atari 2600. Okay. We'll narrow it down. It is a homebrew. Can I take off this label? No? Yep. This sticker? Homebrew for Atari 2600. And Tanya's going to describe the cover. Oh, my goodness. Okay. From broad to very specific. I'm going to start. It's, it looks no, like no. it's in space. Okay. Yep. Space... It's it's in space. We'll get more and more specific as it goes. There is a figure on it with a gun in each hand. That's a good one. Uh, okay. and I'll, I'll let you know if you get and, it right. And, uh, space Rocks is not right. Final Frontier. I don't know that one. Um, There's a planet. It? There is a, a it's planet. It's kind of orangey reddish. Yeah, orangey reddish planet. Um good. We'll give them some time. Yeah, we'll give them give, some time. Like 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 we'll we'll give a bit of a space. Invader X? No. No. Give it cuz cuz there is a bit of a delay too, so we don't want to Yeah, there's about 10 to 20 seconds delay. Yeah. So we'll wait a, a, a couple of beats. Space Canyon get is few, incorrect. Get Saboteur a few up there. Is not a homebrew, I don't <laughs> think. That's an original unreleased game. Yeah. Space Canyon. Space Cactus, no. Thrust, no. Mm -mm. Okay, we'll Another, get some more hints. There are two eyeballs. That'll really narrow it down, Will if it? you know the cover. Okay, so we'll wait. Yep, so there's two green eyeballs. Two green eyeballs. Whooshing around. Don't, don't give anything <laughs> more, just give it some time. Yep. People need to think. They're easy. pulling out their collection. They're staring <laughs> like, at all their uh, carts. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, it's a red planet. I don't know a if this... A figure with two... With, with, with a gun in each hand. I don't know if this game ever came... Oh, Armscar Coder! Got it! Armscar Coder, Good always strong. Good job! So let's go to the cat cam to show you what we were describing. Excellent. Good job, Armscar Coder. Let's pop this out so you can see it in full. There we go. There we go. Oystron. So, there it is. There's a guy shooting with two guns in his hand, the green eyeballs, the and orange red, planet, orange red, red orange planet. planet. Good job. Beautiful, so, beautiful Arm card, Star by the Coder <laughs> wins a $50 gift certificate to the Atari Age store. Yay! Congratulations. Oh, RC70 has never seen that one. Yeah. That would make it more difficult. Yes. <laughs> yes, classic homebrew. So that is all the prizes and that is all the show.
thank you so much wow. for hanging in there for seven hours. Seven, almost seven and a half. Well, we started. We did a start late. a little about late, so about late. seven hours. Wow. If you're going to shoot right. eyeballs, well, there are two eyeballs, yeah. so you do need two guns. That's right. Yeah, arms guard. <laughs> I thought we were going to have to describe it even further. But. No, no, I just you just got to give people some time to think about that's it, true. right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that, oh, let's go to the full screen. Yeah. So that's all, folks. So thank you for uh, sticking with us through the whole show. There are a lot of people in the chat. I think you've been here from beginning to end. I'm really impressed. Them, yeah. It's a long day. It is, um, especially for us. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Did you enjoy playing all really the games great. again? Oh, yeah. I think you hadn't played like a couple of them. The Jaguar games. I hadn't played the, the Jaguar. the 5200 game. Uh, Were there any other like 2600 and 7800 games that you hadn't did, played I don't before? think I played, played Game of the Bear either. I think you, you played that to, with Darcy. Yeah, because some of those things you you would know how to do yeah. if you had played it before. Yeah. Um, a lot of the others I had played. Yes. Yeah. And thank you to Atari Age for supplying all the games that oh we showed goodness. off today. Thank yeah. you to all the developers. Oh, yeah. Who toiled over all these games. Uh, all the amazing uh, people who worked on the artwork, the packaging, the manuals. It's fun to the open text. them all and it see is. the carts like and Christmas. see all the... I, I know, I know. It is like Christmas. <laughs> Christmas it's in it's May. Christmas in May. I love yeah, it. It's Just imagine all the work that went into these 17 <sighs> games. Every, it's unbelievable. All the developers, all the design. Take this out of my ear. All oh. of Al's work to, to oh my just God. put all of that together, like just manufacturing it, it yeah. and packaging it, Reviewing and the support it. he gives to people. And Did you notice uh, Tanya was wearing an yeah, Atari Age shirt? Atari Age shirt on today. I love the back of it. I wish it was on the front of yeah. it. I mean, it's good in a convention, but I wear these on the show and you yeah. would never... There. I've never worn this because you, you can't see the back of it on the show. There you go. What does it say? Uh, good games only need one red button. Yeah. That's right. It is a great shirt. It's so good. Yeah. Um, good and interesting interviews. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed them. Um, and it helps having these uh, amazing developers on and, that and have so much to And them being willing to, to jump in in the middle of their Saturday and ask, answer some questions, I think, is great, yeah. too. So I yeah. think I bought this shirt the first time we went to PRG. I think you... Or the first or the second. First or second. Something like that. Yeah, I think yeah. that was like 2000. 15? Don't know. I think was, was the first PRG. It was a while ago now. Yep. I like this hat. Got my Gravitic. Gravitic. Gravitic Mines. Gravitic Mines. Shirt. Uh, We're going to have to earn on. that hat, though. We will. <laughs> Do a better job. Right now, I'm Play the janitor the aboard that uh, ship that keeps <laughs> crashing, true. who keeps knocking the control stick, uh. <laughs> crashing into the side of the mountain. Um, uh. Is this still for sale? I don't, I don't know. know. Al, Al would have to answer. Oh, Atari H doesn't have it in large in either color. So, yes, it does sound like they have uh, still stock of it. Mm. Um, what else? Oh, yes. Give a sneak preview for uh, next Friday. Oh, next Friday, people. Next Friday. This is what we will be uh, unveiling and playing. I'll hold oh, that. sure. Yeah, yeah. This is a big unveil, by the way. Well, sort of. Kind of. Kind of. Look at this! ZPH. Ha 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 ha. Zero Page Homebrew the Game. El Camera made this game for us. Amazing. And we'll be giving away at least four. Uh, I'm yes. Out. Either four or five. Yeah. Of these games signed. And we're going to be playing it. Darcy's going to be here. Yep. And maybe a special guest. Yeah. <laughs> Atari's going to be here. Tanya's going to be here. That's It'll right. be lots of fun. And Pixel will be here in spirit. So, That's right. He'll yeah. be here in the game. Yeah. Um, so we'll be playing that little yeah. black and white cat. Yeah. We won't say who that well, special person is. We kind of know. <laughs> um, so stay tuned next Friday. I'll let you guys know. And we'll be signing the cartridges mm -hmm. and uh, giving them away. We'll have to come up with more questions. <laughs> but now I have a week to think of those. You can do more and of I, these. And I have more, to create the manual the yeah. as well in a week. Oh, do you? But it's already been done. I have to finesse it. And, oh, I see. Yeah, okay. it won't be too bad. Good, good. <laughs> and now I know how to do InDesign. Oh, cats, cats, yeah. cats. <laughs> so come back next Friday for that. Yep. Um, that's it, I, I think. I think that's it. We'll be, on, we'll be here on Tuesday. As well, playing some oh, games. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. So Tuesday and Friday, back to the regular schedule. 
Excellent. for that. Yeah. Uh, oops. Black. There we go. There we go. That's better. <laughs> oh, sorry. So much to do. Oh, and uh, we should uh, let this guy want some say good night. Yeah. Does he want some treats? No. No. We've, we've delayed he's enough. enough. He's had enough. Oh. Oh. Can let me go back. Oh. Not yet. Oh, you can. Let's go with the cat cam. Oh, no. You don't have to do it. Oh, there. There. Thank you for sticking around, Atari. I know you're here just for the treats, not much for the games. You do like some of the games, but mostly it's for the treats. Aww. Ding, ding, ding. We'll bring the back. We'll bring. You perked up for a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll bring back the ding, ding, ding next uh, next show, so he'll get fed properly. Stay on ten more minutes to get eight hours. Yeah. No, we're at seven and a half. No, because it's from the beginning of the stream. <laughs> What's well, noon? We started. Noon something. Does something magical happen when you hit eight hours? I don't know. <laughs> He's here for the amplifier, the warm, oh, warm amplifier. Is. Oh, here he comes. He's saying bye bye. Oh. oh, oh, so cute. Oh, so cute. There we go. He says thank you for joining. Thank and, you for and joining us. Yes. So if you like any of these games, they're all available in the Atari Age store. <laughs> yes. Uh, they won't be shipped for a little bit because Al's going on a well-deserved break. But if you did pre-order them, they will be in your mailbox very soon. Oh, that's so cute. <gasps> That is a huge cat face right there. <laughs> that oh, is so yeah, cute. yeah, yeah. Oh. He says, "Have a good night, everyone." Have a good night. All right. Um. We so, gonna... uh, play the uh, intro again for those of you who missed it. All right. And uh, so, are we are we heading out then? We're 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 done. We're finished. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to say anything else? No, I I, oh, okay. I don't know if yeah. Yeah, we're done. Okay. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. We'll yeah. be back on Tuesday for regularly scheduled programming. That's thank right. you to absolutely everyone who thank participated you for joining us. or amazing. watched, and thank you Al for everything. Yeah. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Have a good evening.